the art school live streams. What are these about? So if you're in here, obviously, you know all this, but you know, I post these videos always a little bit later on YouTube, later as in like a, a couple months later. Um, but yeah, if you want to know, you know, how, how do you get in here? How do you get your art review like this? Um, well, you have to be one of my students, of course. And uh, you'll find a link to the art program in question down in the description below. But essentially, as soon as, uh, or as long as you're a student, you get access to uh, to the streams. You can come every single weekend. Uh, we we usually stream on Saturdays, pretty much all day. Uh, and uh, and yeah, you can get your art reviewed. You can submit your your um, your personal art. You can submit your assignments from the classes. You can submit your your questions if you don't have any of the first two. And uh, and then yeah, you get feedback for a whole year or more. And um, and 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 uh, that's that. So we uh, the I said you know that we stream all day because um because yeah we're probably going to be <clears throat> probably gonna be here for at least six and a half hours seven hours usually that's uh, that's kind of that's been the uh, the recent average and so yeah one hundred and fifty also that's a big number <laughs> Jesus. Yep, so um let's get ready for another another 150. <laughs> here we go. So starting here with uh with Indra. Alright, so what's up, Indra? Uh so I changed the hind legs and have uh, and gave him claws instead of hooves. I made all of his limbs longer and I tilted his antlers upwards as you su as you suggested. I hope um I think I have to make his hind leg a little this right hand like a little longer because the tibia looks a bit too short in comparison clear history save here we go okay <clears throat> so right hind leg oh oh yes 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 yes, yes. oh wait, wait. that's way cooler with like the similar like similar paws fingers oh And the skeleton also just makes a lot more sense. Like, yeah, that, that could totally be a real skeleton. Nothing unusual happening on the feet. You know, feet and the, the, the hands all the same. Same, same structure, same logic. That works a lot better. Um, it looks cooler in my opinion. But that might be just because it was my recommendation. So I don't have a choice but to like it. Uh, <laughs> but I do like it. But, um, but yeah, it's weird. Like it's one of those things I would have to see it animated. Maybe it works. It's just, just looking at it this way, you know, it's the same as a, as somebody, uh, it's the same as a drawing of, you know, like a super skinny person. Beautiful. And with skinny arms and then lifting like a huge, uh, huge dumbbells, you know, that makes no sense at all. This drawing, but uh, lifting a huge box that weights a million pounds it's just you look at this and you're like mm, how would that work seems hard to believe and that's what i'm getting here with the just the amount of muscle here feels too small so maybe uh, let's try to look at maybe like a... like cheetahs have really like thick legs you know like see how thick this is in comparison to the rest huge back legs because that's what they use to yeah to spring forward so it's not so much like the the uh, uh, uh the size itself it's more the the relative size to the rest of the animal so like there's just a lot of mass here this is a thick animal just look at all this meat that's a lot of that's a lot of bear meat um and like to push all of this forward like you would need to have trunks of legs to make that possible although you know it is a drawing you don't need to you don't need to follow physics um so if it's going to be animated and if it's gonna it just depends you know how much you want to push it as an illustration like this it looks super cool so <laughs> that's it it's just like the just that that believable believability part that's but other than that looks sick yeah looks really good 
um i like i like this better too definitely maybe still a little too small uh too too close to the heads i don't know maybe not you know if they're wide enough that if he lifts uh or if he yeah, lifts his head maybe it can go like to the side of the shoulders just like uh, again still a little bit of a clearance issue here maybe maybe not if they're wide enough like if they go straight to the side then no problem it's just like from this angle um seems like he would still bump the, the antlers on on his back um but yeah that's it you know just uh it's more like mechanical issues in a sense but artistically speaking this looks really really nice love all the work here with the uh the anatomy hell yeah um yeah shading wise maybe i would just kind of flatten this area here so that there's not as much of a dip like a like a huge crevice <laughs> like you can almost like did you lose something in there uh, and maybe tone down the contrast between values so this goes really dark this goes really bright uh bright uh, dark to the point where we lose the lines a bit so that's the only that's the only part um you know if you're gonna show the lines still I would go just light enough that you can still clearly see all the, the line art. Um, otherwise, it tends to look a little bit unfinished because it looks like the bottom here has been just purely painted. And up here, you still have kind of the lines showing it, like you're not done painting it. That's not the case, but it, that's kind of what it, it looks like. Uh, so yeah, anyways. Lighten this up maybe a little bit, just a little more. So we can see the outlines better. The contrast between the shadows and the highlights or the, the bright colors. The darker color is not too intense. Um, and then, yeah, kind of just rounding out the uh, the rib cage here. It is, after all, like just a big egg shape. Even if you have the, the shoulders on top, they're not gonna... Like the shoulder muscles and like all these muscles here for quadrupeds, especially it's pretty flat, it's pretty, uh, pretty compact. So the the main volume will be the rib cage. So like this, this rounded shape. Um, yeah, and then back here, we just want to make that very visible too so like the roundness or of the rib cage is the defining feature in most uh, most quadrupeds like we can see it very clearly where it starts um i mean the bottom here like it defines their silhouette and you'll see it ending here also so let's say that's the end of it right there and then the rest like the back muscles will kind of pick up from there but you would have kind of this this spherical shape, this elliptical volume that just kind of ends, and then the rest of the body kind of picks up. So I think it's just important to have that transition from the rib cage to the abdomen. Um, yeah, hope oh, that helps. Uh, Angel, <laughs> it's really cool. Um, Laura. You're welcome. Um, 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 um. So I added more depth to the folds and removed the glow from the clothes. Old version on top. Yes. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Yeah, way better. Ah. Hell yeah. Um, also drew a new one for practice. I'm not sure if the shirt of the one on the bottom is correct. Value adjustment here makes such a huge difference. Like this, this I mean, it looks great, right? So the like, uh, like I said last time, I didn't have to to do much about the folds. The folds look great. It was more like a value value tweak <coughs> and kind of getting getting rid of the like the patterns here where you have like three three uh, like three folds together a lot. Um, but th that seems gone for the most part, so I'm happy to see that. And yeah, like the values here, way better. Like this just looks a little bit unfinished, you know, like you started to do the uh, the, the flats maybe, but the, the shading wasn't quite quite done. And just because the values just didn't really match the, 
the, uh, the reference image, but now it certainly does. I mean, maybe you could go even darker, you know, like this shadow here goes quite dark. So I would almost just color pick from the photo, like the darkest spot on the photo. That's how, that's how dark you can go. Um, so the hair maybe even, I can play the black. Yeah. So you could, you could even go a little, a little, a little deeper. And that's only to match the reference photos. So just that the two, uh, so that it's just a little harder to distinguish between the two it makes it look more real. Um, yeah. So, um, the, the older ones here, looks really good. And one thing I would maybe recommend when it comes to um, kind of like the quality of your shading, it's very nicely shaded, it's kind of this, this soft, excuse me, the soft shading everywhere. It looks nice, very like you don't see any, any brush strokes, stray brush strokes or anything like that. So it looks good. It looks very good. Um, but it would fold kind of just like uh, with skin fold, you know, like here you get something that's very sharp, even though skin is kind of like this soft surface, you know, like a uh, light fabric, but you still get sometimes these really deep sharp folds um and that's kind of that's kind of what's one thing that's uh, missing here so like you would definitely be able to um when when the fold is concave uh usually that's when it's gonna happen a little bit more so like in here right underneath like you could go a little a little deeper um with your brush strokes so that instead of being soft here you actually have kind of like a, a, a harsh um, a hard transition between the shadow and the light. I mean, that doesn't look too good right now. But... Um, and then same thing here, you know, like in, in the deepest folds where the light, where the where the two folds kind of go like this and they meet, and then they meet at like this really, really sharp angle. Um, that would be a good spot to, to have harsher lights, uh, harsher shading. So uh, let's see. Let me try to do it. Um... With my cheating brush so yeah like usually you'll have like nice soft folds here but then sometimes you know you'll want when those when the folds are really deep uh when there's a lot of tension like when they're really stretched out uh and you want to really emphasize like punch out one of the uh, one of the folds more uh you would just want to go a little a little deeper for that one a little sharper and i think that 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 mix between the two between the the the, the softer kind of bumps the convex bumps and then the harsher con, uh, concave folds <laughs> i need better vocabulary vocabulary but um hopefully you understand um i think that combination looks quite nice and uh it's closer to reality too so when it goes deep go harsh on the shading um, so that's not all soft that's all uh, the, the pens look really good here very very nice uh, and I love that you really look at the shading of the uh, of the the body underneath and can just go from there that makes such a huge difference but yeah that, that looks great really really nice um, Yeah, and here, just like with the muscles, like you would probably have maybe a few more that, oops, a few more folds that start from like the back, like the the center of the the the, the center of the pants, you know, like, kind of like the seam that goes right in the middle of the uh, of the the butt crack. Uh, but yeah, that there would be like some tension here, so maybe more in kind of like that angle instead of going like this. Maybe a little more like that. Slight change of angle I feel like that would be more natural kind of like this one here um, and then maybe here uh, yeah it's not a whole lot yeah she's really not bending her leg that much more. so yeah that's it I guess uh, for the shirt the shirt shirt the shirt Yeah, the shirt is going to be more of a more like a perspective adjustment. So we have um, the, 
that one's yeah that one's okay. that one's all right it's just like this one this one arm here is slightly coming towards us right so that would be also the the curve that you want for the the sleeve so just slightly angle this way instead if you could probably see a little bit of the the inside of the sleeve as a result um i would treat it kind of like a uh like a cone that kind of opens up so that's the neck and as the shirt goes towards the the rest uh, like the bottom of the torso kind of open up opens up this way um and then from there you can start to think of the where the uh what other forces are in there so maybe yeah the breast might be pushing against that uh, probably not it would probably be just hanging in the air and so we might have some folds here so let's try I think it would just be more, uh, a little bit more feature less. Than that. So fewer less, <laughs> fewer folds than what you have here. Uh, caused by gravity, at least. So I mean, let me try to do it. <laughs> no better reference than, than yourself. Mm -hmm. Also, my oversized shirt doesn't really Yeah, so it kind of just like, it just looks, looks like I'm fat. So less of um, less of these folds going like that. Essentially, that's that's basic what I'm trying to say. Um, so we're gonna get fold when the sleeves interact with the main the main the main cylinder shape of the the torso part of the shirt. But that's that's about it. And then yes, like you did here, a couple of folds back there, sure. That'd be pretty much it. What's up, Gailey? I hope you had a great week. So this week I focused most on drawing the full face in the right proportions eyes, um, and spending some extra time on drawing eyes. I also challenged myself to draw some stylized eyes as I'm mostly used to draw more realistic. And please let me know what you think of this week's work. Yes, ma'am. Don't, don't you worry. I'm not gonna stop streaming. <laughs> um, Dennis, no, I don't. I count on you to. Uh, I mean, if I'm like, I'll check if it seems like, oh, like if it starts to feel like you've been coming for like way too long, then I'll look. But usually, you know, I trust your honesty. Uh, just start counting down the time. Um, from the from the time that you post the first time or if you've waited for longer than six months and just keep that in mind you can defer up to six months after that you know it starts so let's say you you, you join like eight months after you bought the thing uh, then you kind of lost two months so just keep that in mind <laughs> I'm drinking whiskey what I hate whiskey. It tastes like shit. Um, but you know, I plan to I plan to keep doing these streams for as long as I as long as I can. I I don't see why I would stop. If anything, like I. I enjoy these quite a lot, and it's 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 forcing me in a sense to uh, to just keep on top of my stuff. <laughs> um, it it practices my observation all the time, so and that's the most important art skill. So I sure don't mind. <laughs> that's not true. I drink, I do drink whiskey, but only when it's mixed with something like. Jack and Coke. I'll do that. Makers and Coke. Sure. Anything, anything mixed, I'll, I'll drink. It's just not straight alcohol. The bottle. Oh, the bottle. <laughs> oh, that's what you mean. I'm like, what are you talking about? Am I acting drunk or something? Oh, this. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a Jack bottle of Jack Daniels. Yeah, boy. Wee. 
All right. Sorry, Gailey. I'm back. Um... Right on. So we have stylized eyes here on the right. Get some practice. Ooh. All right. So um, from the front, very nice. Very, 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 very nice. From an angle, it's pretty good. I think um, the main thing is just going to be the uh, kind of the the top of the nose here, like just pushing that in, and and kind of taking that whole eye socket part and doing the same thing with it, like just pushing it back into the uh, into the skull. So maybe look something like might have to move that one here as well so that the eyes don't get too close but just that little push now feels like the structure works a little bit better um and so cheek here again You know, that, that bump here, it's a little lower, right? It's a little lower, like the peak of the cheek is about where the tip of the nose lands on, on this particular angle. Yeah, right around right there. Uh, and then now you have kind of this, this better slope. Um, so that the nose doesn't feel as blocky, it feels a little bit longer this way. Um, yeah, and then other than that, Maybe just reducing the, the length just a little bit of the of the jaw. So like having it start to curve maybe there instead. It's a little sooner. And you can still have it kind of join up with the ears in the same way. Also maybe, yeah, maybe the ears a little, a little too far back too. Not too much, so it's just a little bit. But you can start to like uh, to find patterns like um, you know how the jaw kind of continues here and kind of curves in and then goes towards the eyes maybe, the corner of the eyes outside, or maybe goes back up here and joins with the the eyebrows. And so let's try here. Yeah, so like if the line looks similar, eh, you're probably probably close. But if the slope here is too intense, then maybe the jaw is a little long. Um, yeah, like just trying to find like patterns like this, reference points. But yeah, that's it. Other than that, this one looks quite good. Um, and here, 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 here. I think it's similar, similar-ish problem. Um, <clears throat> one thing uh, with the mouth. Yeah, I think we can point out right away. Um, is that you know, like we're, we're looking at this this sphere here from a little bit, a little bit from uh, from above. So yeah, maybe it's like the the guidelines here that are not quite right. But instead of going like this, it would probably go more like that instead, like this way. Like we were able to see the top of the head a little bit more, and not as much the bottom of the chin. The, uh, like the underside of the chin so we have like a higher point of view so everything that we see here all those lines are gonna go downwards like point down and curve downwards so that that applies to the mouth as well so that line here instead of going up will go downwards just like this one does the eyes kind of follow the same curve here the eyebrows follow the same curve that's really kind of this type of cylinder that we're dealing with um, and so, yeah, to, to follow kind of that, that logic here, undo, undo, undo. <clears throat> this eye here probably curve, uh, should probably be a little higher if this line kind of has to curve back in to go around the sphere. Uh, the line, like the nostril as well, like this nostril here. Is the, oh, that's the, 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 okay, no, that's fine. Nothing to change here. Never mind. Um, so, yeah, same thing with the mouth, though. 
curving the same direction, I is curving the same direction. So if we move this up just a bit, make it seem like it's curving up. here as well. And then the nose slope, making sure that curves enough before it goes towards the tip. Slight curve in the mouth as well. So just switching all those curves to be like this instead of like that. And uh, same thing with the jaw, a little bit. Uh, so instead of going straight down here, like tilt it towards the front just a bit, uh, that's gonna be a little more accurate. So, you know, after we after you uh, kind of have a good control of the, the basic construction, you can start to make slight adjustments just to bring it a little closer to reality uh, when your drawing gets this good. So yeah, at, the, at, your, at your level, you know, like you definitely can start to tweak a little bit the, uh, the head structure to, uh, to get closer results right off the bat, so. His jaw, so yeah, his jaw like goes really, really high here. It's quite low, and then high, and but much narrower than uh, than than what you had. So aligned slightly, angled, and the ear attached a little, a little towards the front, a little more towards the front. <clears throat> That looks really good. Um, maybe not enough shadow on the, the eyeball itself though. You can see right under the uh, the eyelashes, there's a little bit of like fuzziness here. That's just shadow. Maybe I would add just a bit more so that, if, so that it looks like the eyelid itself is casting a little bit of shadow on the eyeball. I'm gonna make it feel like it's part of the same thing. And then uh, here it's quite bright for comparison. Eyeball. Bring that up. See if it's shining. That didn't do much, but a little brighter than that. Yeah, and same thing here. The corner of the eye, subtle stuff, right? But like these few pixels here that get quite dark compared to the eyeball. So it's just it's like this ambient occlusion that we to make sure that we keep whenever two volumes are in close proximity or that they touch whenever there's an intersection between two different uh, two different faces um, the corners is just gonna trap a bunch of light and so whenever you have two whenever you have corners like this this area here is always going to be a little darker when you shade it like the corner is always going to be a little darker and that applies to rooms applies to small scale subjects just like an eyeball too should have been doing this on a separate layer oh wells yeah so with ambient occlusion for the eyes without you know it just looks a lot more 3d feels like it's you know, right there in its socket. Otherwise, it looks a little too flat, maybe. Not as spherical as it should. And uh, the stylized eyes, they're very nice. Too close together. So, um, you know, even though it's stylized, you still want to maintain that one eye distance in between the two eyes. So, even if you know, if you stylize them, make the eyes bigger, you have to keep that in mind. So, if you make the eyes bigger, uh, you want to take to, to pull them apart as well. Otherwise, it's gonna your character is gonna look a little funny. Like this, maybe you don't notice as much, but uh, for this to work better, you want to split them up a bit more. Same thing here, a little more than that, just to maintain that distance in the center. Other than that, it looked great. That helps, Gailey. 
Oops. Gale again. Alright, Sammy. Just Gally. Of uh, sweet dreams. <laughs> uh, Sammy. I uh, hope you are doing great. I sure am. So this was a birthday present for my best friend. I created a map painting background went and then went about with grayscale to grade maps with the characters. Um, there were many, many mistakes <laughs> made during this art filled adventure and I got a lot of advice from the Discord gang. So. I'd say this was a good learning experience. Now I'd like to see what you think and what I can improve on my um, for my next artworks. I'm not used to coloring characters in daylight, hence why I chose to uh, I choose to draw more uh, darker artworks. All right. Uh, well, the uh, there there should really not be much of a difference, you know, between daytime or nighttime. It's just just the light source, and so the light source is going to be more intense or less intense. Uh... <laughs> really? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so, so the same logic would still apply, right? So you would have, let's say, uh, a sphere that you want to light up. different layer that has the light on it so that would be like the lights the lights layer and so if it's daytime then maybe maybe that's maybe that actually let me try a ball that's something more neutral than that go. so if it's nighttime maybe that light intensity is gonna be a lot less and you'll get a little bit of a blue tint because the 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 moonlight is a lot cooler than the sunlight. So maybe something more like that. Uh, but if it's sunlight instead, then just have the same thing, except the light's gonna be like that. Maybe more intense even, probably more intense, but that's the same logic. So, you know, in terms of layers, maybe you would have like to duplicate the layer or, or maybe you start with something that's just bright and then you tone down the opacity for like a night scene as you change as you change your colors to something a little cooler but uh, but all this to say i think you did a great job it looks like a nice warm uh environment feels like you know maybe like early early in the uh um uh, or late in the morning like uh, you know like 11 something like that nice nice uh cozy lighting it was very nice. Yeah. Um. So it is an illustration. So illustration, you know, the first thing that will uh, that will usually be noticeable is gonna be anything about the composition, at least to me. Uh, because good composition is it's just like good formatting in a book. It's just, it makes everything read better. And so that's kind of the, the first thing that you want to nail. Um, and in your case, I think you did a really good job. Maybe like I would like crop this, oops, crop a bit of this so that the characters are more centered because there's no, it's no real good reason why they wouldn't be centered in the frame um you know just to maintain the balance so usually you'll go by uh, visual weights so what's heavier what's not as heavy and how it is how is it placed in the frame and try to balance that out so that it's not too heavy on one side that kind of stuff so right now you know you have a lot of visual weight here represented by like this 
this heat map. So the main two characters. Um, but there's really not much else going on here. So you have a little bit of background, so maybe a little bit of a little bit of visual weight here, but you know it's background stuff, so uh, it's nature, you have the same amount of nature on, on the other side too. So right now you have the two subjects right down the middle. Um, it works quite well, that, but that's with the, uh, the thing cropped here. Because if you don't crop it, then you have just a little bit more space on the left of the, uh, the two characters than you have on the right. And mm, there'd be no good reason why. The only reason why you would want to do that is if you had something here that weight like that visually weighted a little more like um like a pet maybe you know they they're in love and they have they have this little this little dog together and like the dog is wee, running running back in the field then that would have a little bit of weight and then with that added to the main two characters then that would balance it out you know you would kind of center it in that way uh but yeah, other than that if you don't have anything uh then no reason to extend it that much you can just crop it out a bit um, or just expand the other side too. You just want to make sure that they're in the middle. Um, so that's that. And uh... oh yeah, you can totally do that. Then uh, you know if you don't if you want to maintain that uh, that ratio, uh, you can just hopefully the characters are on their own layers, and you can just kind of oops, slide them to the right, to the left. To the left, to the left, like this. Boom. Now, problem solved. Um, yeah, I love their pose. That, like, you really feel how close they are. Uh, feels like a really intimate moment. I love the I love the colors that you use on this uh, on this dude's um, this dude's face. Like the coolness of the skylight and like the warmth of the sunlight. Mm. Oh yes, that extra saturation in the transition. <laughs> Very nice. I but just do the same with uh, with her, you know. So you have a lot of a lot of blue, a lot of coolness in his hair, in his face, on his shirt, but not so much on her. So maybe a little bit here. You do, you know. It's you kind of get this this coolness to the to the green but i would definitely propagate that more um especially in her hair you know people's hair usually is uh, unless her hair is all all dirty and, <laughs> and all broken usually hair is quite shiny you know it'll reflect a lot of the light so if this if the light is the skylight it's like this blue ambient light then you're gonna get a lot of those reflections in her hair um, so i would add that to make her feel more integrated with the rest of the scene just like he is, you know, he's full of blue. So clearly he's under like a, a blue skylight. It works really well on him, but she's kind of missing that. So on the shirt here, the back of the arms, that probably would be illuminated by, by the skylight. Uh, maybe his hand here a little bit. The skylight is everywhere, right? The, the sky is it's huge lights that covers everything. Whereas the, light, the main light source, the sun is just this one spot, so you'll almost always see the blue in any angle that you look. Um, yeah, so that like initial impressions, you know, like colors, uh, composition, those are really important. And like just the storytelling, what, what you get from the image. And so in that sense, uh, very successful. So not too much to change here. Uh, and then if we look at just the, the more technical sides of um, of this drawing, of this painting, maybe maybe you could push the fold here uh, in the arms, like in, in the uh, at, uh, at the, the the elbows uh, around the armpits, maybe you know probably some some if you look at my shirt again, you know like you have when you're like this, no folds really, it's like nice and nice and, and slack. Then the second that you start to compress those folds, like all this bunch together in the armpit, and you see like all these lines kind of converging towards the armpit. So same idea here. Um, maybe in the back here too. But yeah, at least at least around the arm, I think that'd be that'd be nice to see. You have the sun kind of sculpt 
or the, the, the light of the sun can sculpt those spots for you a bit. Um, 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 um. Yeah. Like those would be kind of like the, the things that stand out to me the most. Um, but yeah, but definitely that, that blue light, you know, from the sky, like apply that heavily on her because she's quite dark in here. And like all of that would be much brighter because of the light sky, uh, the, the light sky, the, the skylight. But, uh, but it's really nice. Very, very nice. It doesn't matter if blue works well or not. The sky is blue. And so that's the lights. That's the color of the lights. You don't have a choice, but it does work quite nice. Blue and orange. It's a nice combination. Yeah, man. That looks really good. Damn. You sure did a good job. Yeah, a lot of uh, like really advanced skills here at play that you you handled really well. So I'm impressed. Moving on to press, and actually I need to go blow my nose. <laughs> so give me like two minutes. I'll be right back. So hard. To <laughs> so hard to find tissues in here. Moko eats them also. Like the same with the toilet paper, so it's all hidden. She can't she can't get to it. I couldn't get to it either. No, I just didn't have any tissue around here, so that's why I need to go get some. Um Right, so let's resume here with Preston. <laughs> Don't you hate this as like a dude? When you blow your nose, like it bits get stuck in your <laughs> in your mustache. Am I good? <laughs> Alright. So I hope you had a good week. I mean, is that just me? Um this week I corrected. I hope the anatomy of my Zeus character as well. As made design changes, as you advise, how does it look now? In addition to that, I started working on the back view of the character. I think it looks generally fine, but I struggle with making the feet match with the front view. Any tips on how to pose them correctly and with the correct size? <laughs> One, that's my dog. My pupper. Golden pupper. But she's a crazy, she's a crazy bee. We have to, we have to hide stuff. Otherwise she just devours everything and leaves a complete mess. There's bits, bits of paper, paper towel, bits of tissue everywhere. Um, yeah, so. Anatomy wise, that looks a lot better, man. Look at that arm. Hell yeah. Mmm. Way better. Um, uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Just uh, a slight adjustment here, like this bump. It's a little too low. So if that's the tricep, you know, like you'd want to have that. The triceps always. The bump of the tricep, if you look at an arm, it's always going to be higher than the bicep. So let's say you have that bicep here, brachialis, the triceps is always going to be a little, a little higher here, bicep ends a little lower, starts a little lower too, tricep here reaches a little further high, further high, <laughs> higher up, whatever, so that bump here just slightly, slightly higher than the peak of the bicep, and so, That and then it gets it gets pretty flat until the uh pretty straight until the elbow. There you go, that looks better. Maybe the elbow could be a little lower too. If I look at this guy's uh his right arm, that elbow's probably like right there. So uh, yeah. maybe a little lower. Alright, so that the two sides are kind of the same. Maybe maybe this low. But it looks much, much, much better. Um, 
And yes, yes. Love the design changes here. Yeah, dude, that looks really nice. Um, the back view. Make the feet match with the front. So the back view, yeah, the back view looks quite good. Uh, the feet, you're right. The feet just a little small, mostly. Uh, so, you know, a leg, you know, it's like this, this big trunk here. That's going to be the top of the leg. And then the back of the leg, it's like almost like a little offset, you know. So it's like this break here. And the back of the leg is this way. The front of the leg is that way. Um, so it's not just like, it's not like two, right? A continuous two. Is like broken at the center and you offset them and so here in the back that would translate to yeah, maybe like a bigger curve here and the calves but you get that uh, that break here a little bit more obvious like this is way too extreme but that's it's more like that direction that, that I would recommend you go so curving these things a bit more uh, in relationship to the uh, in relation to the upper legs and then the feet um just the size of the feet i think they're a little a little too small here so mm -hmm. like the what well, the ankle starts starts here so you want to have at least this this much length for it so that's going to be your heel right there front of the boot Maybe even bigger than that, but but you know, that's a little closer, I think. Uh, and then here in the top, I feel like the arms length are not the same. Well, you guys talking about little dogs, but you know, Milo. Used to the, the my my good old dog, um, he was the complete opposite. So <laughs> it's a Chihuahua Rat Terrier mix, a rat chuck, uh, but he was su super chill. Just didn't care, you know. Didn't didn't steal anything. Didn't eat anything bad. And then you have Moco, this big big golden retriever, just complete opposite. I don't think your theory works. Um, but yeah, so like I'm saying, uh, this arm, I, the, the left arm, I think feels pretty good here. So I think it's just this one here that feels just a little too long in comparison, um, in comparison to the whole body actually. So maybe we can just as a whole kind of scale it down. See how that works. There we go. One. Yeah, I think overall overall scale tweak would do it something like that and you know what you should try to imagine is if he had both arms kind of just laying to the side of his uh his body where would things land so elbows shoulders like you want all of that to be like pretty much the same level so if you unfold that So yeah, maybe pushing the elbow up just a bit for this one here, for the right arm, um, and just shrinking it down overall, just a tad.
and then can be golden. But uh, the rest was good. Very good. Yay. Whoosh. Um, so do, do you think this peak, uh, <laughs> do you think this piece works as a portfolio piece? If I had an ample number of pieces at this quality, you think I'd be in a good spot. Lastly, I was thinking of doing a sheet of character poses and maybe um, expressions of this character as another piece. Would that work as another piece? Or should I move on to the next character design? A sap. Mm. I mean, yeah, that that totally works as a as a portfolio piece for sure. Looks nice. You have one version that's, that's nicely rendered. Just the back view with flat colors. You don't really need more than that. Uh, I mean, you know, the more you can the more you can polish this, the better. It's not, like you're not working in a studio yet. So like this would be great for studio um, studio design sheet. Maybe overkill a little bit even. Um, but for a portfolio design sheet where you're trying to catch people's attention, where you're trying to, to lure um, more eyeballs into your art, then you, you'll usually go a little further than you would at work, which is strange to think about. But uh, yeah, like professional work will, will usually not be that polished. Um, but if it's not professional work, if you're trying to become professional, just polish the crap out of it as much as you can. Uh, if you have time to polish the back view, do that. Uh, if you have time to even add like a small background, why not do that? You know, whatever you can think that would uh, would make this stand out in a in a sea of other concepts. Um, I would definitely adjust the background though, make this uh, this gray. Maybe I said that last time too. I, I, I'm forgetting, but uh, what? but this gray kind of gradient. Oh, so boring. So spice it up a bit. Maybe, maybe we can uh, do something kind of like the opposite here. So maybe there's a ground, and like gray. Yeah, gray works, I guess. It's just like I would always go, always avoid the mid gray. Like, don't stay anywhere in this area here uh, for background background grays. That looks like poo poo. But uh, but anything lighter, like light gray background or or dark gray, yeah, that that should work. But as long as you make it like a cool gray, so maybe it gets a little lighter here at the bottom because because uh, it's the ground back there in the studio that he's in. Uh, maybe it's not much back there, so it gets darker. And it gets lighter again at the top. Uh, or, or when in doubt for characters, it always works better when the darker part of the gradients on top and the lighters at the bottom. Because then you have more of a, a contrast between the uh, the values of the character and the background. It makes the top pop more, you know, like before, after. Whoa, now the silhouette stands out a lot more. So if anything, at the minimum, do that. So invert the gradient so that it's lighter, lighter down here, darker up there. Um, yeah, but beyond that, you know, if you can, if you can spice up the background. That's always extra points. It's a portfolio piece after all. You wanna, you want this to be, to be wowing people, people that might be kind of a little blasé when when looking at at designs like ah, not the design, boring, and then yours. Has like all this, all this cool rendering, all this this nice, this nice polish. Like, whoa, that's not as that's not as boring as the stuff that I'm used to see. And then, um, and then if that's the recruiter that's browsing, then uh, then maybe you got a job lined up. So always spice it up a little more if you can. But yes, that's uh. Nice portfolio piece. Very nice. So you're kind of right in between, you know, like a professional piece and a portfolio piece. Professional piece will be a lot rougher, a lot less polished. Um, on average, I say not all, not all the time, but on average, it's less than that. 
um, but maybe not as much as you could go for a portfolio piece. So just something to keep in mind. Um, Yeah, if you add like a bunch of these, damn right, that'd be, that'd be really cool to see. And it'll be very clear what your portfolio is about. Character designs, there you go. You know what you're getting into. I was thinking of doing a Shino character post in the expression of piece. Yeah, I mean, that would be good for good for you as a practice in a portfolio. Like, don't it's silly, you know, but uh, the way that at least I perceived it when I was doing interviews is that if you have <clears throat> like a small portfolio, excuse me, <clears throat> like a smaller portfolio and you have two pieces in that portfolio that that feature the same thing, it's like, oh, like you were you were running out of pieces to show. And then you're just trying to milk, you know, kind of the stuff that you already have. Obviously, it's not the case, uh, but maybe it is. But uh, that's kind of what it comes off as. And so if you can, I would just cram it all on this on this one page so that you just get a ton of stuff on here. And uh, and the next piece is going to be something else completely different. So an entirely new character. So if you have like facial expressions, like I would just add them here around there. If you have like some poses that um, that are just iconic for this guy, just do them here. Maybe one there, another one here, uh, maybe another one there. You know, yeah, you have a bunch of space in here, so I would do that instead. Hope that answers. Oh, hope that helps. Moving on to Cosmo. So, uh, I did have a nice week. I hope you did as well, Cosmo. So, uh, you're welcome for last week. So I was brooding over this piece a lot and I don't really like it at all. There, uh, there's a few things wrong with it. The, the chest seems off, but I don't know how to fix it. And I had issues choosing a color for her black dress without silhouette getting lost. That being said, I'd like to just receive general feedback and criticism of what can be improved. Right on. Yeah, uh, definitely contrast, like it's just value levels and here's a little, a little off, uh, but you spotted why. So yeah, in this case, you know, if the background has to be this dark, it's space after all, so it's going to be darker, uh, then your character can't just share the same, I mean, you can, but if you do, it kind of gets lost, uh, in the background, just like yours does right now so um even if she's wearing like dark clothes i don't know that you can really see it that well here but you know like this little outline yeah it's too small probably but like that little outline around my shirt um uh, it looks really really dark in the shadows but in the under the sunlight here like that's about as gray as the tip of my pants like light gray so uh all this to say that if there's enough lights even a dark fabric will seem pretty bright so you can definitely play with that um, and it seems like it's quite bright. You know, her skin is almost pure white. That suggests it's... There's a lot of lights in the scene. Um, because if you didn't, then all of that would be much, much darker. But that's not the case. So she's lit, you know, from a, like a light that's coming right at her. I'm in the front of her. A little, a little from the top. So, I think you can brighten all of that up quite a bit. And still have it read as, as just a dark color, like a dark black shirt. Yeah, 
Yeah, because right now, like, the arm itself is really hard to see. Uh, <laughs> make it brighter. Same thing with the cape here, the blue. Even darkest of blues gets it will get quite bright under enough light. Right, all of that stuff. And the little blue is quite nice actually, you know, contrast over the, the vivid red in the background. Yeah, and same deal with uh with her crown here. Kinda kinda lose it. So that also can have a, a lighter base color and have it still come across as something that's quite dark. Um, and then the contrast is still pretty intense. So I think we can kind of just tone down the light here. And kind of keep the brightest shade of skin for her face. Something like that. So, value adjustment, mostly. And then you're saying, uh... Shoot the breasts. Mm. Uh... Looks be much better than last time. Um, I think it's maybe more like the just the shading. Um, so the shading on the arm, the shading on the uh, on her right breast. Like, uh, uh, can I do it on here? Let's try. So like, what I would try to do is bring the bring that arm here forward a bit so that it's at almost like the same level as the breast. Because right now the the arm is way further, uh, it's way back, and then. And then, like, that wouldn't really compress them enough. Uh, I don't know how to explain this, but let's, uh, let's try it. So let's say she's got no sleeve here. Bring that, that arm to the front. against it. Squeeze it. Squeeze. Get out of the way. Same deal with this here. Have that arm kind of come towards us more. Because um, it's laying on top of the ribcage, so it doesn't have a choice but to be forward. You know, it can't, it can't really be back. So that arm is like a cylinder that's going towards us. Not going away, not the opposite way. Yeah, I'll probably do something similar here on that side too. Just bringing bringing the uh, the upper arms forward a bit more, mm. and then the shadow between the two here. This looks more like one is on top of the other, like two, like one plate on top of the other plate. Um, and especially her torso is kind of oriented that way. So she's not facing us straight ahead. She's a little bit more tilted to the right. And so that curve here should also be tilted to the right, if anything, not to the left. Okay, just that here. Just to match the perspective of her torso a little better. And um, yeah, like when you shade these, it can be a little confusing initially, but the logic is quite simple. You just have a bigger ellipse. Let's do it on a separate. You 
have that. Let's shade it like, like a 3D volume. And then if you have more of these, duplicate, make it smaller. There you go. That's it looks like <laughs> it doesn't look like like much right now, but but that's still the logic. So that's the logic of the shading. So, you know, then uh, if we bring this a little closer. So these are going to be treated like spheres. The torso also is going to be treated like a sphere. So what happens here in the in the middle? Well, it gets darker as it goes towards the rib cage, and then it's flat. It's the flat surface of the rib cage, so that's gonna be a little darker, and a little brighter as a result. Maybe she's casting shadow on onto uh, like her chest, so maybe that's that's why it's darker here. But let's say there was no shadow. What the hell? Come on, Come on bro. Get a little darker here, and a little lighter back there. Just like it's lighter here. Now it's just dark everywhere. Not the cleanest, not the cleanest feedback, but uh, but hope that helps. At least, hope the logic helps. Yeah, it looks really nice. So, um, other than what I mentioned, um, thumbs up. Yeah, just needs to be a little brighter. Overall, so that we can we can appreciate more the details, like see the folds better, because the folds are there. It's just that it's so dark that we can't see anything. It just looks like a black silhouette. So brighten up everything, add a bit more light in the scene. Um, bring the arms forward, and uh, and that should help hopefully. And like with the hair, just one last thing I guess. Um, the hair too. You could go a little darker as well. Like you go real dark here. You could definitely go as Quite dark in between the uh, the hair, the hair uh, locks so or the hair. What's the word? You know, if they overlap here, with, like this one little little clump. Not clump. Uh, damn it! I forgot the the right word. Is for quantifying hair, but. Uh, but like that piece here on top of the other one you could have a little bit more shadow in between so to make the hair feel a little bit more volumetric give them a little bit more that that 3d sense like the stuff here is in the back it's not getting much light and the stuff here in the front is getting a little bit more light because um, everything is shaded so so 3d like that the hair being shaded differently it looks a little bit out of place but so uh, yeah hopefully that helps moving on to the next one the pace a bit uh what's up so before starting on a project i decided to make my rendering process a bit faster and i was able to do the portrait on the right for about uh, in about 12 to 15 hours what do you think of the quality once again the time that it takes you is irrelevant so you could have said 20 hours 30 hours i wouldn't say anything different uh So, you know, depending if it's your, if everything is super comfortable in this, if there's no, not much challenge, then it can go much faster. But if you're trying something that's a little bit more outside of your comfort zone, that, that can double the time it takes you, triple it. It's, it can make a big difference. The subject that you're, that you're trying to paint. So don't get too stuck on the time. Not super relevant. Um, so I was thinking of making a pretty buff, dark skin archer as my character because I want to change that stigma that archers are weak. <laughs> but in actual truth, large bows need a lot of strength to use, so I decided to make a character that uses a very large bow. Large bow. In the night. 
and because she's dark skinned, it's hard to spot her in the night. What do you think about this concept? Are the muscles, are the muscle proportions good enough to sell the concept or not? Let's take a look at this one first. That's good. That's quite good. Nice lighting. Uh, yeah, I would still try to guide the eyes a little bit better, so it's more like a compositional eyes. Um, two things I would do with the composition. Two tweaks. Uh, one would be to help focus the eyes around the focal point a bit more right now like it's, there's a lot of bright spot everywhere and so it's a little hard to know exactly where to look um so we could help with a little bit of gradients okay, so maybe the skin down there is a little darker I think that helps a little bit to to reduce the the importance of like the bottom of the piece uh, so you keep it more like as just just as your peripheral vision um and then and then like the color here being the same with the glove and the uh, the sandal mm, i'll probably change that because it looks like exactly the same color So what if it were a different, maybe complementary color, maybe like light blue or I think any any other color to be honest would work. <laughs> maybe just a different shade of what the of what you had before. So maybe like a little a little cooler, a little warmer. But since that's close to her face, that's gonna bring even more attention to her face now that it's like a, a more unusual color within this whole this whole painting. Because you don't really see blue anywhere else. And so yeah, something like that. To help focus the eyes towards the top of the character. Tiny changes, but I think it's gonna that would help. And up here, like this, this highlight here does not make a whole lot of sense uh, for the same reason. You know, if looking at this here, uh, even if, even if it, even as it goes up, like towards the towards the chest here, um, the slope is going to be more like that. It's going to be like a concave slope instead of coming out, unless she's got you know a lot of plastic in there. Um, but even then, it would it wouldn't it wouldn't be this high, so I'd probably get rid of the highlight there and have that highlight a little bit lower. Here instead, and have that a more like have this this transition here be a little bit more of a just a gentler gentler transition, gentler gradient. 
Mm. It looks super cool otherwise. And the muscle lady. Like a dark elf, white hair, dark skin. That's cool, man. Um, yeah, good proportions. Proportions look, look look badass. You know, she looks like she would break me and snap me and <laughs> fold me in half, like no problem. If anything, her bow looks like super weak. Uh, <laughs> I would give her like one of those, those like crazy, like thick bow. Cause you know, the idea is the stiffer the bow, if you can crank it up, uh, then it goes faster and it goes further. And it's a stronger, stronger, um, stronger impact. And so what if this bow is like super thick? So it looks hard to pull. Maybe you're not done also with the, the bow, but uh, I feel like if that's gonna be her defining feature, like she's she's strong because her bow is hard to hard to shoot, then uh, to make that bow hard to shoot. <laughs> Something that looks like it would it would need a lot of strength to uh, to shoot it, but I really like the concept. Otherwise, super cool so far. Yeah, abs. <laughs> she uh, she swole. Um, but just for presentation's sake, you know, it's a little dark, you can't see much, um, so <laughs> let's just adjust that a little bit. And again, you know, anything that's, well, <clears throat> anything that is uh, at night or during the day or whatever, it doesn't matter, the amount of light you control always. So just like if, <laughs> I feel like I said this every stream, but, um, you know, imagine you're a photographer taking a shot at night, obviously you're going to adjust stuff on your camera so that the shot's not all black, right? Uh, or like underexposed, so you, you'll you'll let more light come in. You'll open the uh, the aperture more, uh, go for longer exposition, uh, longer. Um, what's the word? Exposition? No. Longer ex <laughs> explosivity. You know, whatever. Um, you, you can adjust the amount of light that comes in to make a better shot, to make a, to make a better photo. So the same applies here. Even if it's dark, even if it's like complete, complete darkness, you can always cheat, always manipulate the light so that you get something that reads well. First, that's the most important. And then if she's gonna be, you know, if she's gonna be in a in a night shot. Then yes, overall the illustration could be a little darker, but for a concept, you know. Exposure? Is that what I was saying? Expo no, I was saying exposition. Exposure, there we go, thank you. <laughs> du, 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 du. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Hope that helps. Moving on to Louisa. Exposure, yes. That is the right, the right word. I must say that this chapter, Perspective 2, gave me headaches. <laughs> In image 1, the gate is wrong, but I do not know how to fix it. The wall on the right seems also wrong, but the perspective is correct. The wall on the right seems also wrong. The wall on the right here is correct. Nothing wrong here at all. Uh, the gate is wrong. Uh, 
barely. What's wrong though is what's happening here. That's curious, but we'll get to that later. Um, here, here, that's that's all good. You know, you're following the same, the same vanishing lines here as as everything else. Uh, maybe like your curve here. You know, you would want that to follow follow the same also. So it might just be a little higher here, but that's not a big deal. That's mostly correct. Um, so position of the the doorknobs too. You know, I just want to make sure that lines up perfectly with that that vanishing line as well. Uh, that all these 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 wood planks should be pointing towards the same vanishing point up here. Seems like they do for the most part. Just uh, yeah, just want to make sure that. They don't point completely off, uh, off target. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, the front facade here was great. Nothing, uh, nothing to change. You did a good job. Maybe, maybe like this, these windows as they get closer to the, uh, to the horizon, would not get wider. So if anything, they would get smaller and like narrower and narrower uh, just like everything that goes towards the horizon everything that goes towards vanishing point gets smaller and smaller and so if you start with something big here and then you get closer to that to that black hole then uh that thing will get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller infinitely small until it becomes just a single dot and vanishes beyond the horizon Yeah, and like to measure the distance to make it to make it right, you just need to start with one here. Let's say that's the first one. Let's erase these. Be gone, big windows. Trace an X, and and then and then go halfway here. You trace a a line connecting our line. Draw a clean one. Too, too fat. Here, a line going through the center of that shape here, going towards the horizon. And then you just have to go like, trace a line here from that corner, touch that middle edge or that middle point and keep going straight, straight, straight until you hit the bottom. And that's gonna be the corner of your new window. And just go up like that, you know, close it up. And then you can do the same process again. So we start with that corner, go through that corner, or that, that intersection, land on the bottom of that line, and then that's your other window. Do that again, and then you can see it gets smaller and smaller the more you do this. Um, and then yeah, so that would be kind of like the right way to calculate the width of your windows. Uh, and then on this side, the top is correct. So those windows, yes, no problem here. That line, let's erase it for now. I'm not sure what that is, but. That curve. Once again, you know, just keeping that in mind, the fact that everything that gets closer to the vanishing points uh, gets smaller. And so that's the thickness of everything. That's the, the size of everything. Everything gets smaller. And so if this is this wide, and you want on the other side here to have the same width, you know, if you're like walking by and you're like, you're measuring it, oh yeah, that's the same width. Um, then whatever you have here would be the thickest and whatever you have down here or back there, much closer to the horizon will be a lot, a lot narrower. Just like those windows here, they get smaller and smaller. And so for this to look better, I think, I think, yeah, maybe doing something like this, making that, that part of the wall that side of the building a little more narrow. Help us understand what's going on. And then that curve here. You can look at all the all the reference lines that you have. The peak of that curve, if this is in fact the center. Uh, we can measure where, where the center is going to be so we can know exactly where that would be. Uh, that's the bottom of the building. Right. So 
let's get rid of this. For now, at least. Um, so that's the entire facade. So we can find the center by connecting the corners. That's the middle of the building. So if you trace that line here, again, that line going to the vanishing point. Right here should be the middle of that wall. So again, you know, we see that that effect in play here where it's, this is half the facade, but it looks, it occupies a much smaller space on the canvas than the right side does. But in reality, it's the same size. Um, and so now that you have all that, then you can trace maybe the base of that arch, you know, for, for that thing here. Maybe the base of it will be on that vanishing line. The center, like the peak of that curve is going to be up there. And so now you just have to kind of follow that and see like how far it is to the corner, pretty close to the corner. So you want that curve also to follow and get pretty close to the corner, but also making sure that it's a nice continuous curve. Something more like that. Why is this green? I don't know. Right? So, and then the same idea with that one as well. Uh, and then here on the inside, like, I'm not sure what you were going for there. But let's say you want to have like little stairs that go up the side of the wall and the side of the house you can totally have that. So let's go with what you got here. So that stair touches the wall. That's going to be the thickness or the, the height of that stair. Of course, that line here is not going in any direction. It's pointing up again to the vanishing point. Always keeping that in mind. Um, so yeah, maybe that's the first step right here. And so you can erase the bottom of the house. That's that's now behind that first step. So if that first step is the only step, then you can just keep going here and then the floor will just be higher from now on. And then you can erase the base of the house. Now you're gonna have like a little pathway on the side there, right? Uh, or you could keep going up more stairs, do the same same thing here. And now that will be the floor now, it'll be a little higher. Another step. And then if you want to dig a hole into this thing here, if you want to be able to kind of go in, yeah, you can extend that. So maybe that's like a, Maybe all of that thing here is like an opening. Let's treat it like one. Let's see, it's like a door that's open now. You can see on the inside. Uh, then yeah, if you want to extend those uh, those stairs inside, it would look kind of strange, but but you could you know, just make them go in now. Doors open. Come right in. And then that floor here would also expand on the inside. Maybe that's like a little door that you can close, like a barn door, a little bit of thickness, and then you could walk from here to here. Hey, what's up? That's, like, that's the bottom of the And then maybe it's this, this stuff inside or whatever, but uh, yeah, that's the logic. Hope that makes sense. Overall, you had the, the right idea. You know, most of it I was correct. It's just uh, some bits a little confused, but you try to do stuff that's that's pretty advanced, like um, like arches and perspective. Not the easiest. It's just you need to count to, to measure a lot more stuff. So. That was good. Nothing to change here. So for the second one, you know, like you could use three point perspective. If you want something that's super dynamic, but, uh, but to be honest, if it's just like one side of the street like that, that you're going to, that you're going to shut, 
shoot. <laughs> nice shot. Uh, I would just use maybe two point perspective. So that everything that's every vertical line would just be perfectly straight. You know, no angle to them whatsoever. Um, so like just like that one right here it goes up straight up. Like all of these details here would just go straight up instead. Uh, like these little these little sticks is straight up. Everything straight up. The doors straight up. And that's probably going to be a lot easier to to draw. Because uh, right now, yeah, it looks like you're using maybe three point perspective, but not well. <laughs> like if you take that line here. And you start to extend it. Oops. So if you extend that line here to try and go and find the, the vanishing point. Mm -hmm. And then you take maybe that line here. Try to go find the vanishing point. Hmm, they're diverging. That's... That's... Okay, that could work. Maybe they're converging at the bottom here. So maybe somewhere down here. And then all those details will need to match that... That line. So maybe that's what you did. Because I see some of these lines kind of lining up with that. But not all of them. Like these you know like that would need to follow the same line on the side of the house here same idea like all those windows everything would need to follow these the lines and so that door would look a lot more tilted as a result be more like that to be correct those windows more like that these arches more like that the side of the wall would be kind of here we wouldn't have any of this and so yeah I don't know what's easier uh, but it's the the main perspective that's a little bit a little bit off actually that's not true the main perspective is, is kind of okay it's the details that don't follow it and then this building here not quite as well as the other one does So start this way, you know, like start super simple, just a big bunch of blocks. If this is going to be three point perspective, all right, that's your main box. That's the angle of it right on. And so where are the other vanishing points? Somewhere around here. One there, one here. And then, uh, yeah, I'm going to do the same thing with that other building here. Vanishing points. Going towards that, so that's your depth and the height here going towards that vanishing point down there, so a little up here. So you have approximately, you know, those two big volumes to play around with if you're using three point perspective. And then after that, you just want to, uh, yeah, you can just trace a bunch more vanishing lines to help yourself, like one for each of the doors, maybe each of the windows, lit that up. And then draw your details in here, matching those lines. But yeah, yeah, like uh, like Zainab was saying, you know, perspective, very scary at the beginning because it's just, it seems super technical. You know, it's like opening a uh, like a new software and you have a bunch of buttons, a bunch of functions, a bunch of a bunch of tools that are like, uh, what's all this? But the second that you figure it out, that you kind of go through it, there's really not much more to learn. It's just that that's it. You once you once you get it, you're set. You you're, you know it all. Sure, you can draw stuff that's a little bit more complex, but the same rules still apply. And so, you'll see. Not long from now, you'll be like, oh, that's a lot easier than I thought. All right, moving on to Tomas. Um, this week, I wanted to shade the face constructions, but it's still quite hard to draw them. So in the end, I practice more of that. Please point out any mistake I made and uh, what parts to focus on the most. Did I forget anything? No. All right. 
it's hmm. look at this dude man that looks good really good yeah all right so kind of what i was mentioning to who was it i forget goldfish memory um but when it comes to the jaw the jawline you know as you um as you start to have more control over your constructions uh, you can start to, to tweak them a bit more to make them s more and more and more accurate so that uh you don't have to do much more beyond just the construction you know uh, in terms of the final details it'll be almost almost all there and one thing one uh, one of those things that you can that you can start to tweak will be the line here of the jaw so instead of following that uh you know that basic guideline that's great to memorize it uh that one line going straight down and then kind of lining up the ears to that and lining up the jaw and all that stuff um now what you can start to do is try to tilt it towards the front by like five degrees that's that's about it and that's going to give you a much more realistic look so it's easier to remember that's just straight down but once you get good enough you know uh like like you are you can start to to make those smaller adjustments and so it'll it'll always look nice without further need to refine the silhouette when you when you go into your details that's a nice looking head very nice with a shorter jaw there you go boom good looking maybe the left eye you could push back in the socket a bit more like you have a good amount of space there like this this is a decent distance between this bone right there right under the eyebrows and then the actual eyeball it's, it's especially for like a white face uh that it's gonna be quite deep in the socket Maybe he's, yeah, he looks like a white face. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. Um, so a lot of depth here, and you'll just want to maintain that that, that logic here as well. Uh, I don't know if you can see mine in comparison, but like that angle, pretty close actually, but that angle is pretty steep. position is fine I don't think I'm gonna change anything here but I think it's more like the slope here the curve that you can adjust so like looking at the distance here between the eyebrow and the corner on the uh, the eyelids a little longer than what you had here so if you uh, don't change the eyebrows then we can at least change the eye shape to get that back slightly more distance there and then the iris here now it's a little cross side but not having that iris kind of reach the edge of the eyeball i think would help too Although it looks great, it looked great already. So it's just uh, just small tweaks. And like with the eyebrows, you could you could push that out, push that out just a bit more. Like make these these silhouette changes here a little bit more intense. But uh, that's quite flat, quite a flat cheek. A little bit more bump, gives it more character. Feel the feel the cheekbone underneath. Looks really good though. I'm nitpicking here because it's so good. So, yeah. Yeah, that one, uh, those two are gonna have the same issues. Um, so yeah, it's just a matter of, from now on, just adjusting your construction a bit to tilt that forward a bit more. And then you gotta have the right length, the right height, and you just make sure that you, that you, uh, Rotate the ear to, you know, to line up with that that new line now, and that's gonna go from 95% correct 
to 100% boom. Very nice. And then same thing with the uh, the eyes here. Maybe like pushing that back into its socket a bit more. So that you get more of that, that slope here. They're not eyelashes, they're just volume lines. The cheeks here continues all the way on the outside, going, and then this part, the eyebrow, not the eyebrow, the top of the eye socket goes in front here, right? So that line kind of goes in the volume. This line right here, in, out. Well, oh, there you go. Just two, two tiny edits. And look at this now. Look at this head now. Nice. Oh, that helps. Moving on to... <laughs> Look at that. Uh... All right. One, what's up? <laughs> Ready for Eurovision? Hell yeah. Bring it. I've seen a bunch of entries already. So this week I finally faced my deepest fear. Hands. Really? Is it pretty good for something you were afraid of? Um, so after stu after studying for a bit, I did a bunch of quick two three minutes uh, minute sketches. Uh, they're far from perfect, but at least most look okay from a distance. What do you think about them overall? Any tips? How much time does it take you to draw hands? Alright. Yeah, two minutes for these is really good. Very good. The most important with a hand is just making it look like a hand that's well constructed. You know what? And hands are tricky too because everybody's almost everybody's a good judge of what a good hand looks like. Because we see hands all the time. It's in our field of view at all times of the day. Uh, it's something that we have just a really, really good visual library for. And not just us artists, but anybody else. Just because, just like us, they see hands in their face all the time. And so, the second that's a little bit off, most people will be able to pick up on it. Uh, whereas, you know, if your shading is a little bit off, maybe like a normal person, a non-artist wouldn't when, not a normal person, but a non-artist, <laughs> we're normal, right? Um, wouldn't necessarily be able to pick up on it, but uh, but hands they can. So the gesture, not the gesture, but the uh, the structure of it is super important. So like, that's hot, really nice, really nice. This one feels a bit more like like sausages, but again, I think it's just like the, just the thickness of your fingers. If that was a little. A little narrow towards the tip, you'd, you'd be pretty good because that's it's nice, nice gesture, flows nicely. Uh, yeah, most of them are really, really good. Really good. Now that none feel like too deformed, that's nice too. Yeah. Uh, this took, took like the three minute ones, like the earlier ones. Yeah, like this one feels a little bit more deformed, right? Like the structure is a little bit, a lot weaker than the other ones. That one too. Uh, that, that one too. Oh boy. Got into an accident. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's nice. Nice, nice, nice. Fist's pretty good too. Yeah, like that's not a bad, a bad structure, but it still feels pretty stiff. Like, you know, not quite right. Uh, but then, but then you start to go into these. Yeah, I'm like, ooh. Ooh. Yeah, most of these are really good. Pretty good. I am. I'm impressed. And um, you did them quite quite fast. So you know when I did like the the, the twelve hours of hands of drawing hands, I on average about it was about like five minutes per hand. 
So I don't know. I, I wouldn't compare. I don't think that matters. Uh, and it's weird here because I think these hands look better and it took you less time. <laughs> so again, time really doesn't doesn't really matter too much when you're learning. The only time time matters is when you're getting paid. That's it. Other than that, you know, work on the skill instead, instead of worrying about the time. <laughs> yeah, a lot of these are really, really solid. Uh... And what's important in the hand, what I would say is that, yeah, if it, if, if you can get like a solid hand within a couple minutes, like if you get, if you can get something like, uh, 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 I'm trying to find like one of the best ones, like this one, good gesture, but like the thumb is really, really big and the pinky is a little too small in comparison to the other fingers. Uh, like that's a nice one, you know, that's a really good hand. If you draw this on a character, unless it's a character where like the hands are super important, but if it's just like a, a random character in the scene and that's his hand, like nobody would question. It's like, oh yeah, nice hand, bro. So you have everything here. As long as the proportions are correct, as long as the structure is correct, that's it. You don't really need any details. Like that would be a successful study, a successful study. You know, like you definitely don't need to spend more time. You got the essence of it. Great study. Move on to the next. Yeah, and then a lot of these, you know, like your hands that are really good are those that are open like this, right? Like that, those here, really solid. They're harder to, uh, they're they're easier to, so that makes sense. Uh, the tricky, the tricky angles will be like stuff like this, or like whenever you have hands like that, where the fingers kind of overlap, uh, like hands from the side, those are, those are those are a bitch. Um, or anything foreshortened like that. Uh, when the fingers are not are not touching, like when the fingers are all going in a different direction, that's also tricky. But once again, you know, uh, practice what you're gonna use. If you're, uh, if most of your characters are gonna be relaxed, and, and uh, if they don't need to to do any like crazy hand movements, then you don't need to you don't need to necessarily study those those harder poses, you know, practice the stuff that you're going to use more often so that when it comes to time to draw that, you're really solid. So like fists, you know, if you're drawing characters, fists are usually pretty useful. So I would do a bunch of those, you get good at drawing fists and a bunch of angles um, or things that are holding, you know, like holding things, hands that are holding things. And relax hands like to the side of the body if the hand's not doing anything in particular. detached from a doll. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, but overall, there's nothing for you to be scared about. Uh, you have good control over these. Yeah, especially with the time that it takes you to, uh, to get there. Impressive. Good stuff, man. Well, that helps. Um, moving on to Elijah. 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 More hands. Woo. Oh, those are those are good studies, but that's a good example of like a hand that you're you're probably not gonna draw a whole lot. Uh, maybe, maybe some characters, like some witch characters. Yeah. But once again, yeah, same same uh, same thing as I was mentioning to Juan. Elijah just. Make sure that you use references that you see yourself using in the future. You know, like fill your fill your head with visual visual elements that you'll want to eventually go 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 use in the future. Unless, yeah. Uh, otherwise, you just fill up your library with a bunch of books that you'll never read. So, just end up full of cow webs, cobwebs. Cub what's the word? Spider webs. Whatever. 
Let's read what we have here. I had a good week. I hope you did too. I finished the upper body class and practiced some hands. Please point out anything any, anywhere where they look off or out of proportions in any way. Also look at your... I also took your advice on how to connect the delts properly in the back and the armpit section. I did more of those studies but I forgot to save them before closing my Oh man. Ah. Doesn't that suck? What sucks the most is when you're... When you, by mistake, like... Like hit control Q or something. And then, and then the window pops up, and then you're trying to, you were trying to do something else. Like the the window popped up a little too late, and then you clicked on like enter or something else, and then it confirms that you're closing the software without saving, or or when the, the window pops up and you're you just you just hit no because you didn't want to close it, but that's not what the window was asking. It was asking if you wanted to save it. That happened to me so many times. Uh, and then you just click no, and then you're like, oh, what have I done? I just lost all my progress. Good times. Mm-hmm. Yep. Those dabs look a lot better. A lot better. Uh, one thing I'll say, Joel, uh, though, for the, like, the back here, the back view, is that there's always going to be an overlap here. Uh, always. Especially more if you're bulky. So, like the lats here, that, that goes, like that line right here, attaches onto the, the humerus, the actual bone of the upper arm here. So it needs to extend, you know, wide enough to be able to attach there. So that's number one. And um, and the triceps usually just going to be in front of that, just because it's, it's just, yeah, that's just how it is. Uh, so you're going to get this, that slides underneath. And then the tricep that's in front of that. So usually, almost always, you're never gonna get a gap like that. That does not happen. So it'll be tricep front lats right underneath. But uh, yeah, this looks great. Uh, the only thing here is that uh, the lats here attach in front of the triceps. So lats here going into the armpit and the triceps behind that. That's all. Coraco brachialis right here. Yeah, and then you can have like that chest muscle. It's uh, angled upwards a bit more. All those fibers and then leading into the delt. Transitioning into the deltoid. And the bicep here. I want to make sure that slides underneath the shoulder. So maybe the shoulder muscle you can push back a bit more. Bicep and then shoulder above it. The bicep always slides under the shoulder. It's like a, you have chest and shoulder and then the bicep kind of just stuck underneath that. So I I don't see the the structure here. So what I would always recommend when you when you draw when you draw hands is to start with well actually you did here. So maybe you did with that one. But uh, but yeah make sure that you do that. Right, so that you construct it first. So make sure that you have the body that you can measure like overall. If you squint, like small size, that should read pretty well already. So start with like just the basic body of the hand, palm, touch the thumb, the knuckle, the rest of the joint here, and then the, the knuckles for all of these the joints for all of these fingers. Um, always make sure that you start with that. Maybe you did. I'm just saying. Because you did here, so that's good. Very good. Here as well, you know, construct it. I'm gonna get the hand volume here. The knuckle for the thumb. And then all those joints.
And then that finger here might be a little more in front. A little shorter also in comparison. I think that's a nice continuous curve here. Knuckles. And all the joints here. Just want to make sure that you're able to trace the same kind of continuous line as well. Uh, and if one of these one of these joints kind of stick out too much, then that's that's your cue that it's uh, too long. Uh, but yeah, overall, it looks very good. So it's just, it's just small, small tweaks, but make sure you construct it. Okay, good. So yeah, it's just erased then. Good to know. Yeah, overall these are really good. Really good. <laughs> I don't know how often you'll have to, to draw something like this, but, uh, but these other ones, like this, holding something, yeah, that's good. That could be holding any item, sure. Uh, this this hand position, that's one of the that's one of the books you know that you put, that you would put in your visual library where you probably never never open it again. Um, so maybe not as useful as the other ones, but uh, but yeah, I think the only the only issue is that that curve here is a little lower. So you just curve it down here, extend the knuckle of the. And the thumb here. Let's get a bit more accurate. So he's got enough, enough, uh, enough body to his hand, to her, her hands. Good. Really good this one. Really good. Bridging that, or uh, filling up that hole here a bit more. But that looks really nice. Yeah, so just small stuff, mostly. Oh, that helps, really good. Got a mud goblin. <laughs> What's up, Shimang? So I worked on the ZBrush courses. Um, it was really fun. Awesome. So I think one thing that I probably have to work on is too much reliance on some of the default alphas for textures. Uh, it is making it. Is it making it look? Is it making it look too obvious? Please let me know if anything else. Uh, let me know if have anything else. Anything else? Let's see. All right. The default brushes. Uh, our default alpha. Not really, not particularly. No, I think it's fine. Um, it just looks maybe that uh, like what looks fake is that like a kind of like a slash in the wood but then it kind of just stops and then you have like a little bit of highlight there so it looks more like a uh, yeah that looks more like a like a brush did it rather than being an actual just cat feature of the, the the plank so maybe it's just like the pressure sensitivity that's that's the issue or maybe it was the brush that you're using i don't know but uh but if that just like faded a bit more you know like if kind of softly faded into into nothing I think that would look a lot more natural. So I think it's just like, just easing on that pressure at the end of the, the stroke and the beginning of it. Yeah, other than that, like I would also flatten the top of these uh these planks here. That looks maybe a little a little too balloon balloony. So flattening all of that, you can grab a uh, the best one would probably be like H polish that brush, uh, and then just softly massage the top of these planks here to make them flatter. 
uh, because yeah, if these if these planks were cut, you know, the the edge here is going to be quite sharp, unless it got sanded down to be to be rounded, but but probably not. I've never seen a barrel like that. Yeah, just a, a harsher corner here. Same thing on the inside. The corner is just narrower. I like this. Looks pretty damn good otherwise, man. Did a good job with this. Yeah, like these things here, like maybe avoid anything that has like a, a clear pattern that repeats. You know, like boing, 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 boing. That's unusual in wood. But uh, other than that, like a little bit of noise, like noise texture. That's, that's nice, along with the, the bigger bigger cracks here in the wood. And uh, when doing those those cracks, I forget if I mentioned this in the class, but you know the the the, the, the layout of the folds, just using the the rule of thirds as usual. So maybe like focusing most of the those those little details on the side of the plank. Maybe you have some in the center, but but uh, spreading your details this way, and so not evenly, but more. 15% on the side, 50% on the side, and then on the inside here, like the other 70% is mostly void of the uh, void of details. Maybe just one or two. It's not a hard rule, but that that spread of detail looks looks pretty good usually. Versus having it be kind of just the same everywhere. Uh, yeah, so nice barrel, bro. Um, now, the Mod Goblin. For presentation's sake, I would just make it a little brighter. So, like, take a, a lighter, lighter material. But no problem. I can do that in Photoshop. There we go. I'm gonna turn him into a Golden Goblin. Quite the level up. Nice, dude. Really, they good here. Um... Yeah. So, like, I would, I would clean up, you know, that kind of stuff. Those, uh, those repeated patterns, because that looks quite unusual, um, unnatural, fake, fake skin. Uh... But you can definitely start with that. You know, you like, you start with texture, and after that, you can kind of just erase it, like, soften it with, uh, with the, the, the softening brush. A smooth brush. Not evenly everywhere, but like some spots. So just so to get rid of that patterns. Like this here. Get rid of that. These patterns are not natural. I'm gonna get rid of those. And uh, for some parts of the skin, you know, like the uh, on top of the nostril here, that's like a really harsh, like sharp edge. I would soften that too. Softer transition, but uh, but yeah, if you've never used your brush before and you can do that, that's nice, man. Did a really good job. Goblin has good proportion too, statistically speaking. Good to see that you're using reference too, even if it's a goblin. Still inspired in reality. Um, but with ZBrush, you know, it's easier. Uh, it's easy to get kind of lost in the, just the details. So always, always, always tackle it the same way that you would an illustration. So start with just the base details, not no details essentially, just like the base shapes, like the the base structure of the head. Uh, it's rough cheekbones, rough you know forehead, jaw. Uh, Plop the nose in, but like nothing too complicated. And and then after that, detail. Detail always second. Because it's, it's pretty easy to get, yeah, to get lost in a sea of, of details in ZBrush. 
and end up with something that you're like, oh god, it's so muddy. What do I erase? What do I keep? But, uh, but really good. So, moving on to the next one. What the hell should I... Anas. 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 Which one is it? Tell me! Anas or... Anas. One day, I'll find out. Hope you are having a good day. You too! Any advice on anything that looks wrong? Alright. Got a badass Viking lady. So that's tough, you know, it's a really hard reference to um, to study from, especially the pelt, because it's really chaotic you know it's not like it's not predictable like uh like fold would be uh and it has its its own shape too it's not like a fabric it's just like a sheet you know it's just, just flat and it deforms based on just on gravity or the, the 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 forces that are applied to it and it starts with no shape but this already starts with a shape so the shape of an animal. So a lot trickier, trickier of a, of a reference. Yeah, the reference is super dark too, so it's hard to see. Let's try to brighten this up. Ah, there we go. Reveal yourself, lady. So it's gonna be mostly, mostly the values. I really like what you did with the face. Um, yeah, it's values, but mostly the fur. So. Yeah. <laughs> like the stylized, the stylized face here. Now oh, that works quite well. Uh, nice shading. But the pelt here, I think that's where this is the most issues. And the, like I said, just value. So how, you know, see how dark you get there. Uh, and how the top of the fur here is lit up, but this side, not so much. And so in your case, it just feels like there's just too much light in the scene, in the front here. So I would keep, I would keep the brightness up there. But everything else you can kind of darken from the shadows. Uh, and then in between the pelt and the, the little, robe that she's wearing it goes quite dark in between a lot of the light kind of gets lost there uh, the bottom here as well in between the folds here like on the inside of the collar it goes quite dark too the lights a lot of the light gets lost there So I'd say it's mostly the values, you know. Uh, crap, I've done this on the second layer. I think just a slight value adjustment is gonna make a decent difference. Yeah, I think that helps, and also, like it. It, it focuses the lighting up here so that it's over here yeah like this area of our of our um where silhouette is the the brightest now before you know that brightness kind of carried all the way down to the to the end here of the the pelts but when it's all darker now the top here is clearly the brighter the the, the brightest spot and so yeah it reads more as like as a highlight it makes it makes what you already had shine a bit, a bit better i think So that's mostly mostly values, making sure that uh, yeah, when when it goes dark here, that you go that you go 
uh, dark as well, relative to what's what's around it. So here maybe like this could be a little brighter to match to match the pelt color, brighter because the difference here, the contrast between that and here, it's it's pretty intense on the reference. Yeah, that's mostly it. Then that's uh, maybe her. Maybe you could push the the foreshortening on the head by moving the nose up and the mouth up. Because um, when the head is tilted up this way, like suddenly, you know, everything that's on top of the head here goes is a little closer to the vanishing to the vanishing point, um, and so as a result, everything is going to appear a little smaller. So the distance between the eyebrows and the top of the head might look this this much right now, but if I tilt my head back, oh, suddenly it's a lot smaller, and so you have to adjust that. And then same thing here, the chin might be this much, but if you tilt back. I might start to take more space or at least in relation to the forehead it's gonna take less less space so, so I'm gonna shift everything up the more you shift it up the more it looks like she's looking down on you that's mostly it other than that I think uh, so far so good. That's really nice. yeah. Love the love the fur texture here. That looks good. That looks that looks furry. Very nice. Moving on to Dennis. What up, Dennis? It's your turn, bruh. It's been a minute. Since I sent in something, could you point out some things I should fix for portraits on the left? Also, how are my, how are my gesture drawings? Let's take a look. Oh, that's an interesting, that's an interesting face. Kind of mixes. Is... Interesting features. Uh, hmm. I don't know that I have much to say other than uh, looks good. Nice stylized way to kind of kind of capture your reference here. Uh, for female characters, usually. You know, just most people do that. It kind of works, uh, making the eyes a little bigger, and also like the reference already slightly bigger. So bigger eyes, you know, tends to be to be associated with things that are cuter. That's why all the all the cute characters, or not that one, but uh, all the cute characters always have like these super big eyes, like kind of like a kitten. And smaller eyes tend to be associated with more masculine traits. Not so much that because the eyes are smaller, but it'll be smaller in proportions to the rest of the head. And so, um, female characters usually their face in relation to the head size is going to be bigger, and for male characters, the face itself in relation to the head is going to be smaller, so it just looks thicker. But yeah, I mean, I don't know why I'm changing this, but uh, it looks really good. Maybe you could lift the head and uh, the, the mouth a bit more. But it's closer to, a little closer to the nose, a little uh, like that triangle here between the eyes and uh, the mouth. The more, the longer it is, the more masculine usually the features, uh, or the more masculine the face will be, and then the more 
the, the shorter it is, the, the more feminine, the cuter. So, so yeah, for the, the structure of the face, I really don't have much. It, it looks really good. Um, I would maybe make the neck a little thinner. So that uh, doesn't look like she drives like uh, Formula One cars. Just thick neck <laughs> to support all the Gs. Longer, narrower, uh, longer, thinner necks always look more elegant. That's why so many, so many cultures focus on that. Or maybe we think it's more elegant because they focus on that. We'll never know. Yeah, beyond that, you know, maybe I'll add a little bit of shadow, like um, like uh, what are you guys uh, mentioning here? Because yeah, you're in a good spot for shadows. Like you, you already started. Maybe a little timid on it. <laughs> you could, you probably crank that up a bit more. So hopefully it's on a on a separate layer. Your shadows, that is. But uh, yeah, you could definitely. Make those a bit more intense as well. Have the structure for it it's like it's begging for shadows um really good uh, really good structure so far so yeah i would push the shadows definitely you know you have you have a nice canvas already laid out for you now it's just waiting to get to get shaded a bit more uh, it's, it's really good really good so far so i would i would push it i naturally want to push it but no i must not out I need to move on. Oh, uh, hold on. That's not true. Not yet. We have some gestures to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, man, Dennis, I need to. Uh, you, you'll need to do a uh, like before and after soon. I feel like you've come such a long way, man. These are really good. <laughs> really good. enough anatomy that it reads as a body uh, I like that you're spending time on the feet enough but they, they look planted because they add a lot to the to the silhouette yeah they're really solid two minutes yeah Super good. Really good. So good. Yeah. Mm. Moving on to Aurora. And after that, let's, stay, let's take a quick break. I went a little long here. Uh, later, Coco. Have a good rest of your weekends. Your turn is coming a little later, unfortunately. All right. No worries, Aurora. Uh, but good to see some stuff from you. So anyway, I don't currently have any practice piece um, pieces that would like to um, that would like feedback on. So I decided to just take it. Just take what I've learned and apply them to my works for review. Right on. So our work 
in the anime art style while keeping my fundamentals on the, uh, on the best I can. I was hoping to get your critique on some of my works that I've made, especially on composition, post card theory, and anatomy. You don't need to look at each individual piece, but an overall critique will help. Uh, right. I still feel like I still feel I struggle to be fluid with my poses. I also struggle to get my poses right and apply anatomy to them as well. Often, I'd have a 3D model with me to get the pose I want. Plus, I feel like my works lack a professional polish on them. Uh, like something feels lacking. Mm -hmm. Right on. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Look, look, look. But um, but yeah, when it comes to like the poses, you know, and, and the anatomy. It's, uh, it's doing stuff like that. It's doing, like, keeping on, keeping up with your gesture drawings. That's, uh, that's like workout, you know, it's like, a that should be part of your, your workout regimen. If you stop working out, your muscles atrophy. So you gotta keep it up. Um, and they'll keep growing. And just, uh, just like your skills. So gesture drawing super super important for for just poses in general. It gives you a lot of it fills your your visual library with a bunch of cool poses because because that's what gesture drawing is just drawing poses back to back, um, with not much focus on anything else proportions a bit but but mostly poses. And so it's great to to just generate ideas. The more you do that, the more ideas you'll have. Like you won't need a three D model next to you to draw to draw anything. You just you'll have a bunch of ideas already. So just sit down and say, right, which one am I going to select? Ah, uh, that one. And then you go. And when it comes to the anatomy, same idea. You know, it's just uh, practicing on practicing your construction, making sure that you're that you're constructing your characters well. So that it's not just uh, don't you don't you don't go like all right, the neck and the head and then the shoulder and then the arm and right. We don't want to do that. Start constructing, building the face neck and then the body attached to the rib cage and going to the shoulders and then building that up like this with simple volumes first and and after that then you can add more details depending on how much details you want you know if you're going for something that's more stylized then those anatomy details would be usually at like a minimum not gonna get much just the important parts like the armpits here maybe the clavicles that's kind of that's kind of important uh but they don't need to go to go too far, but that's still, you know, when you, when you're able to build to construct a body this way, uh, depending on your style, you can almost be done. You know, you just need to, sure, initially it might look like that, like that's your shoulder, that's the, the cylinder for your your upper arm, that's your that's the ball for your your joint at the at the elbow, and then maybe that's your cylinder for the forearm, and then you have your hand here. Uh, sure, that doesn't look like much, but if you just connect all of that stuff, whoop, 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 whoop. shoulder and the side of the arm, and then you erase kind of those construction lines. Hey, that's an arm. There you go. You have an arm. And if you want to add more to that to make your characters look more realistic, then you can. You know, like you can you can add more muscles in here. You can have more definition of the shoulder muscle or not. And so it's up to you at that point. But the construction should be always part of the process. Always. Not saying that you didn't. But I don't see it here. That's it. Yeah, a lot of um, like what doesn't look professional, like uh, it has to do with um, overall values. So it's just really, really high contrast. Uh, and high con high contrast just really tends to, to make things harder to read. That's that's really what it does. And so reducing the contrast often the secret because in here like maybe the hand uh, the, maybe the legs are in like a particular pose i really can't read them that well 
it, like it could, if you look at this quick, you know, that could be like the hips, that's the crotch and that's the waist. Obviously that's not the case, but if you look at it quickly, that's what I thought initially that was. And then I looked at, I looked a little closely and then, oh no, okay, all right. Actually, he's or she's actually sitting down. I see, that makes more sense. So would we have, would I have, a, would I, would I have seen this properly if it were lighter? Sure would have helped. Yeah, and it can totally still be a moody piece, even though it's a little dark, a little lighter. But still, you know, if you have a um, if you have a shirt or if the skin is white, you know, when is the skin white ever? Look at my face right now. Is my skin white? No. Oh, but it is. But just here, just just on the bald spot when it's reflecting the light. Other than that, like this color right here, that's that's the closer to mid gray. And so when you have something like this where it's all white, that suggests that it's this but everywhere. It's like just crazy highlights everywhere because there's just so much light. Uh, and if that's the case, if there's so much light that everything is white, then you can bet that your pants gonna be much brighter than that. Even if they're dark pants, uh, if you have that much light, your pants will look more like light gray under that much light. And so it's always that relationship that you need to, to consider. Like the brightest spots, the darker spots, the contrast between the two. Um, and if you have if you have areas that are really, really bright, then that suggests that it's, it's there's, the, there's a strong light source in the scene and that strong light source, all those particles will bounce around the scene and, uh, and light up everything. Because if you wanted the pants to be this dark, then all of that would need to be super dark as well, because it would, would mean that there's really not much light in the scene. There would be no reason for this to go pure black, uh, to pure white. The skin color would be quite dark person. And then you would make it then you can make a case that oh yeah it's just it's really bright up here but but it's quite dark otherwise so yeah it's a contrast you need to adjust the contrast a little bit a little bit better have more of a gradient between your highlights and your shadows because right now it goes from like highlight 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 to shadow shadow shadows have more of a transition period in between so that you have more of these this meet these mid tones um it looks nicer, looks more professional. Harder to do, yes, because you have to, to shade more, because uh, you can't hide as much in the you know in the dark the dark shadows. But mm. not working on a separate layer once again. You know, before, after, not a big change, but just changing the, the values a bit suddenly makes this piece read at any scale. Like it reads a lot better from a distance now. Before it's like, oh, what a, what is this? Like it's kind of a shirt, but it's hard to tell what's what's out there. I just, oh, okay, like you get it. You can already get a better preview of what the image is gonna be. And so do that more, you know, like uh, look at it in thumbnail, thumbnail size, just to see that everything still reads well. Like if you look at this one here, at that size, not a whole lot reads. It's really hard to see. Like you see the the glow at the bottom, but that's about it. And so there's no contrast between. In this case, it would be the opposite. So there's too little contrast here. So the characters shares like these kind of colors: so black, dark blue, dark pink, um, and then the background shares the exact same colors. Uh, so you always want to have a difference there. Otherwise, it feels like they're all in the same plane, like just a poster. If the back is further, further back in the scene, if the background is further back in the scene, like I'm guessing it is, otherwise that'd be weird. Uh, then the background wouldn't uh, would have different range of values, something more restricted probably. Maybe more like that.
before, after, before, after. Now she is the only one that has pure black. The background doesn't anymore. And now she stands out a little bit more. And uh, yeah, and then you could probably increase the contour, like the the rim light around her, a bit more, so that she uh, she's split from the background even even better. There's no doubt. Um, yeah, so it's gonna be the same kind of thing on on most of these images. The contrast always always way too high, like here as well. Contrast between the skin and the pants. Pants pure black. Skin is all white. So you want to do the same thing as I did with this one here. So introduce more mid tones. Save the white colors for just the pure, like the really really bright highlights. Save the blacks for the the really really deep crevices, the really deep cracks in between the folds, that kind of stuff. Uh, but other than that, keep it more into the grays in terms of values, like not colors, not all gray, obviously. But uh, but that's a big one. So that's gonna make your your pieces look a lot more professional already if you if you use those those mid tones more. And in terms of your anatomy, like your characters really look really good overall. So it's just gonna be like small stuff, but that's definitely not like a big uh, a big issue, I think. Uh, yeah, if you want to get better at, uh, at drawing poses without using references all the time, and if you want to get better at anatomy, like being being able to create characters without having without having to look at three models or anything like that. <clears throat> um, practice gesture. So have like a, a ten minute gesture drawing session. Maybe not every day, but. Uh, Every uh, every couple of days, or um, a few in a week. Always, like never stop. Make it like you know, like brushing your teeth. It's as it's as important for you as an artist who focuses on characters. Um, and then the same thing with construction. Make sure that you always, always, even if you're using reference, always construct your characters. And uh, construction first, anatomy later. Anatomy after. What the hell's? Moving on. Actually, no, not moving on. Santiago, you will be after this commercial break, where we're not gonna be seeing any commercial. So I'll be back in like 15, something like that. I'm gonna go grab a bite to eat, and I shall be back, and uh, we'll resume with you, Santiago. So. Be right back. All right. Audio on. <clears throat> Stuffed my face as fast as I could. <clears throat> I got a meal, a full meal in. You're ready to keep going. Got the calories, carry me through the rest. <laughs> Thanks, Ryan. All right. <clears throat> well, let's resume with Santiago here. Ooh, 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 what a nice, nice man. man. Did you take like a photo for the back, the back of the room here? That looks so good. Really well integrated. Yeah, that's probably a photo, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. <laughs> My apologies, Kevin. I won't do it again. Uh, probably will. So let me just read the rules so that people know what this is all about. But um, <clears throat> the rule of the Eurovision 2021, and by the way, students, organized. I don't take credit for any of this. I am just a beneficiary. I just, I just, I just take, I just look. <clears throat> I put no effort. So, um, yeah, so good job you guys for organizing this once again, really, really cool to see these challenges. <clears throat> um, so let me read it. Your artwork may be a character, a costume, prop, environments, creature, mascot, abstract artwork, or themed illustration inspired by any of the acts, songs, countries, performers, or videos in this year's contest. 
Mark Burnett will reshare all challenge entries on social media. Mm -hmm. I've heard that too. If you include a reference image, the right credit to the artist. There we go. So we got something that's pretty moody, dark, uh, <coughs> like something stuck in my throat. <laughs> I'm not dying, I promise. Uh, so here we have something that's quite dark. A little bit of a, a little bit of a, this, this blue, cooler light coming from the opposite side. And this right here, we have a stronger light source. So yeah, so clearly it looks like it's outside. I don't know what this video is about, but I would guess just from the lighting that it's an outside shot. It's a shot uh, uh, somewhere outside, maybe like a back of a back of a house in a, in a yard. And so you have like these lights, the artificial lights that are warming up parts of the character. So this one here, that one, that that one lights probably too too dim to to really impact much of the the colors here on this character. But so mostly a dark, cool scene with some spots of warmth. Giving good credits for, you know, for using it. Right on. So, I mean, <clears throat> in your case, the scene is a little bit different. It's definitely more warm than it is cool. So maybe that's it. But but you're inside, you know, so it's, it's clearly a different type of scene. So... I mean, it, really, it looks super good, Santiago, so it's a really, really pretty image. Um, I think just like thinking about the <clears throat> logic of it all, like the logic of the, the light setup in here. Nothing to say about the back here, like the overall lighting. <clears throat> Very solid. It's just going to be the bounce, not the bounce, like the, uh, the ambient light. That's a little more curious, you know, like how she gets this kind of blue light everywhere here. And pretty strong, pretty strong light too. Yet. Oh. Oh, I just saw this. Oh, no, that's the... That's deep, bro. Very nice. <clears throat> it's like a grain of rice got stuck in my throat or something. Why? Ugh. <clears throat> uh, but as I was saying, so the yeah, so the, the the secondary light in this case, the ambient light, maybe too strong in in here. It's more like you see, and you got like a shadow as well. Oh, so it's like the lights coming from the frame. Oh, that's probably it, right? This here is almost a light source. Yeah, because you see the you see the blue light on the inside here. All right, so this whole thing almost acts as a as a light source itself. Ah, ah, I see, I see. If that's the case, <laughs> maybe I'm like, yeah, I get it, and then you're like, no, that's not at all. Well, well, <clears throat> those are the two options. So either the scene is lit slightly wrong, where you have kind of like this, this blue light, this, this cooler light source in here that um, is lighting her up. And I would also explain why you have kind of this harsh uh, shadow. <clears throat> the light source is this close and this intense. Uh, but, 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 uh, but then if that's the case, if that is in fact, uh, if that is in fact the light source, then then you would probably have some light here on the, like on top of that, that little <clears throat> cabinet thing maybe it would have no light like below a certain point here where the the cabinet itself is blocking the lights onto onto her pants uh and then yeah like you would probably have more of a directional feel to the light where it's it's really coming from the right from this 
device. <coughs> Pardon my coughs. So that's one of the options. The other one is the scene itself. Like the, the mirror is not emitting any any sort of light. Uh, it's just she's just kind of in a room, and um, and while I mean, if that's the only light source, right? She would just be in in the darkness here. So there would be really no reason to have any other any, any other lights. But maybe the windows open, you know, like maybe uh, like on this side of the room, like that wall right there, the wall that's in, in front of her the wall that we're looking through right now maybe there's a window there and uh it's letting some of the light of the moon come right in and in that case yeah and i guess that would make more sense so the light on her forehead here like the, the the coolness of all the colors but then you would probably want that to be carried on on everything else as well <clears throat> so maybe not stuff in the background there uh, that's too far but but everything in the foreground here like the, that side of the frame Probably get some of that that light as well. The, the, yeah, that frame already has a little bit of that corner of that frame here. If the light's coming from like behind us, right? As we look at this, all those details here would probably receive some of that that bluish light as well. Uh, all these bottles would too. Probably the top of that the top of that uh, that cabinet. Is that a cabinet? What do you call that? Like a side table? A coffee table? A table, just go with table. Uh, if it's the light from outside, then that should definitely be a little brighter as well. Like you might get some of that. Um... I didn't, huh? Might get some a little bit of a glare this way. <clears throat> And then that would make a little bit more sense, right? So now there's a clear secondary light in there, and that's why you get that blue tint. And it looks quite nice, you know, kind of like dark purples with oranges. Mm -mm, nice mix. <clears throat> but uh, but either way, like one way or the other, I think the the secondary light needs to be uh, tied into this whole illustration a little bit better. So either the light's coming from here. And if it's not coming from the inside of the frame, then that probably wouldn't be this, this right here. Maybe you could tone that down a bit. But if it is coming from inside, then anyway, that's good. Anyways, I'll stop here. Oh, the hell, Santiago. <clears throat> really cool piece. Really, really cool. Love the, the subtle, subtle blur in the back too. Kind of just a, feels almost just dusty. You know, it's not so much like a depth of field, but more like a dusty room. Uh, yeah, love the. Uh... <laughs> Damn. Yeah, that that's really nice. Love storytelling in here. Playing with powerful emotions. Really cool stuff, man. Good proportions to character. Maybe she could have a slightly longer neck. Feels a little. A little necklace mm, lacking in the neck apartment but really good proportions other than that uh, yeah, man. that's good wait is this <clears throat> do are these the entries like the final entries am i supposed to judge this today Is it over? I'm a little out of the loop. Um, let me know, guys, <clears throat> if you're still here. If there's somebody here. Um, maybe not. <clears throat> so I'm working on improving my color light knowledge. So I pulled out my sketch from Three Point Perspective and decided to finally give it some colors. I am planning to add more details on the bridge, but first I need to know if it looks decent enough. Please let me know how it looks. What can be done different, uh, differently and better? <clears throat> right on. Well, I will say you are most definitely getting better at this. Uh, that was pretty good. So 
the hardest, you know, is to to do this. After that, like just balancing stuff, like balancing balancing the values, which is what I'm, I'll, I'll be pointing out here. Um, next week, got it. <clears throat> also, these are the final entries. Ah, I got you. What? Oh, okay. So the the real Eurovision thing is next week. Gotcha, but they're done right now. Thanks to the video. Um, yeah, so the hardest is to construct this and um, to lay out the colors, to choose the colors, to choose uh, to choose the values, where the where the shadow is going to be, to calculate shadows. All of that's the hardest. What's left right now, <clears throat> and what needs to be to be worked on, is just the smaller details. Uh, but you've done most of the work already, so. And to be honest, like it's just mm, like overall, maybe a little too too high contrast, kind of similar to a lot of other people that I've uh, reviewed today. And so yeah, this is the contrast between the highlights and the shadows. I just wanna. Uh, 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 like soften the contrast by adding more ambient lights. So in here, <clears throat> in here is like a sunset. Later in the day, they have this warm glow from the sky, and then the more purple sky, less blue, less teal, more um, more purple. And so, I mean, you could just grab this color here, light it up a bit, lighten it up, and then uh, and then apply that on the opposite side of the bridge, the side that doesn't get much of the lights only gets the ambient lights um, so maybe not the underside of the bridge you know the, the light of the sky probably doesn't go this way but but everything that's that can be reached directly from the sky was is gonna get some of that light maybe it's gonna be this here Because, um, because yeah, it's you know it's still pretty bright outside, and the sky is a significant source of light, so it would brighten a lot of that up. Then as a result, your values higher. Um, other than that, maybe. I think maybe like the perspective is a, a little strange. So let's uh, have this go all the way to the horizon line. Horizon. And then let's see, these are so uh, probably somewhere here. Maybe a little further, a little closer. Yeah. So let's see. That's the vanishing line. So this is gonna be the horizon. Um, because we're looking, we're looking uh, up, you know, to that bridge. Um, and so what we're gonna see most of the, for the most part is gonna be just the sky because the horizon is not even in your frame right now. So it's gonna be down there. Uh, so that's gonna be where the trees are for the most part. So maybe you'll see like the, the tip of the trees if they're really tall, or maybe it's like a hill or like a mountain in the, in the background. But uh, but that line, you know, the, the sky will begin down there. So if you have sky, if you have clouds that are low on the horizon, then they'll be they'll be a lot lower than than these. Um, but yeah, that can that could totally work. You know, if it's a bunch of a bunch of little mountains back there and it's not flat on the horizon, it kind of sticks out from it. The colors look good. Uh, maybe your sky saturation could be adjusted a bit like this. It's pretty saturated. Can tone that down a bit. And like the, maybe that's more of like a personal thing, but. Uh, 
I prefer like clouds that are more uh, 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 have more mass, you know, like they seem more significant. Like this one here, like that cloud sticks out, right? So you have the dark sky and then you have the just super bright, bright shape in the sky. In your case, you know, we don't get that as much. So it's a little bit more, uh, uh, a little bit more blended with the color of the sky. So maybe that's something that I would, uh, that would try to push. Cause that would, that would look pretty epic here. Like if you had like a mostly dark sky, let's try it. Or maybe it won't. Maybe it'll look like, maybe it won't look good at all. Who knows? to redo your clouds and mostly dark in the sky so I like this and you know, that's pretty dark all over so let's go with that dark 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 and dark sky will make your bridge pop even more towards towards the horizon here we're gonna go a little lighter Mountains and trees back there. Those can be darker as well. Uh, vegetation at night, it looks almost black. Not at night, but like uh, when it's against the lights. It doesn't reflect a whole lot. So you might get a slight blue tint from the, from the sky again, but you know, it'll stay mostly, mostly dark. Unless it's lit directly by the sun, but, but the sun is eh, maybe, maybe like the top of it here. It'll be a little lighter. But it's mostly against the sun, so. Uh, and then, and then, and then, and then. Clouds, 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 clouds. So we have this warm light for the sun, so we're gonna go with a warmer color for the sky as well. Not the sky, the clouds. There we go. Doink, doink. Older. Is that oh so I just noticed so this is if this is water then that's not possible because the horizon is down here. So the water will it will be mostly you know lined up with the, the horizon. Um from this this for it to for us to be able to see the top of the water from this angle, uh, it's as if the water is kind of coming towards us. It's like flowing towards us. It would have to be at an angle. So if it's a lake, then the lake would be down here. We wouldn't be able to see it. We only see the like the tip of the tree is kind of sticking out. So um, anyways. The most important, I think, is just the secondary light source, so the, the ambient light source. And then uh, adjusting the, the, the perspective a bit for the background, making sure that uh, there's no water here visible because the water would only be visible down here below the horizon, right? So the horizon was what? It was down there, something like that, the water. Why is it so loud? My window's closed. Uh, and so if you have water, the water will be below the horizon. So it would be down there instead, not up there. Unless this is the sky, so I don't know. Maybe I'm reading this wrong. Maybe it's the sky now that I look at it. Sun ray, if the bridge is that bright. Sun ray. Oh, you mean like a little bit of, I don't know if that's what you mean, but uh, but yeah, you could totally add a little bit of glare though. Like uh, some light bleeding into the lens, the imaginary lens that we're looking through. some of that. But um, if you're talking about like a, like a god ray, you know, like, a, the, like these kinds of stuff, these kinds of things, that only depends on the, uh, 
the, the particles in the air. So if it's super humid, um, if there's a lot of a lot of moisture in the air, so or just a lot of particles to to to, to reflect the light, then you're gonna see that more often. If the air is super dry, you know, if it's uh, there's no humidity in the air, then you're not gonna see any of that. Um, so it just depends on the, the the quantity of particles, but but sometimes it can just look look badass too. So maybe you could. Yeah, move on. <laughs> Let's move on. Hope that helps. Uh, Valeria. I need to, I need to speed this up. I'm talking. Oh boy. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, so Valeria. I was working on this painting last week and now I need feedback. I wanted to just create a cinematic feeling. What can I do better next time? Is there something I need um, to work more on? Cinematic beat. Oh, that's the beat. Oh, shit. Excuse my, excuse my French. Oh, that was good. What's up, Valeria? I'm like, what am I looking at? Is this, is this your submission? And then I'm like, nope, this is it. I think you succeeded in that sense, you know, it could totally be a, a like a shot from a movie. The lighting is, is really nice, really spot on. Uh, maybe contra I mean, overall values maybe a little a little low. Like this it's pretty dark, you know, this image is quite dark, but um, but you have a lot of a lot of areas here that light up the, the image. Like from a distance you get um, Get a, a hit of light here. Oops. Hit of light here, in the middle, on there. So you kind of have like this division sign uh, in the composition. In your case, like the stick doesn't have any any visual weight to it. So it's really just from a distance. You read this and you read the hand a little bit, and that's that's that. That's all. Uh, So, um, to get something similar, something that's more balanced, I think I would just light her up a bit more. So, yeah, obviously it's not the same lighting setup that you have, but maybe a little bit more bounce light underneath her chin here. Maybe that'll help. Obviously too much. Mm. Yeah, like this works really well, right? Because the background's all black, and even though her skin is not the brightest, it's still quite dark. Uh, but the, there's a lot of contrast between the two, so you can s clearly read that outline here. Even at, even as the hair, even if you uh, as you transition transition into the hair, like the little blue here against the really really dark background helps it stand out. So that helps that you have something in her hair up there. But the rest, like the contrast is a little too low here. I think that's that's mainly it. So with the background, just like in your reference, if the background is darker, the contour of her face would be a lot more visible. Uh, either that or just make it brighter. That's another another option. help also reveal the silhouette maybe it's like raining or something and that's just some light from the window caught in the uh well it is raining actually. <laughs> so maybe it's just yeah just the light uh, the 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 raindrops kind of reflecting the the lights from a, a nearby light source but let's try to just brighten this up a little bit so we can see more of the details not much because i want to keep it i want it to stay moody. It looks really, really good the way it is. Uh, 
a little brighter. It will allow us to see more of the details, appreciate the scene better. Now it reads at any scale, any size. Uh, yeah, so it's mostly mostly values. Composition's awesome. Uh, your lighting's uh, lighting's awesome, awesome too. Hands great, nice face. Um, maybe here you could go a little darker. You know, it looks uh, it looks a little too warm for uh, for that to make any sense. If you look at her, her dark darker areas of the skin inside the palm here goes goes to almost black so no need for warmth on that side that. yeah that's pretty much it Valeria did a really good job with this Maybe his face is a little too like porcelain perfect. You know, like even Cloud here has got like a different, you know, this significant difference in the values here between the tip of the nose, like the top of the nose here, and the side of the nose. In your case, the light's coming from the side, so you would probably have a little bit more highlight there, a little bit less coming from, from that side. So maybe like the top here could be a little darker cheek also a little darker and then the side of the nose would, would catch more of that light so like stronger features maybe but either way it looks it looks quite nice moving on to the next one ryan is this the traveling ryan oh no that's uh that's more recent ryan and we have so many ryan Hard to keep track. This is this is latest Ryan, I think. All right, what's up, Ryan? So I went through the animal and creature drawing course and wanted to get some feedback on these. I feel like I'm having issues with their with line weight, though I tried to correct this as best as I could during the process of making these. Other uh, other than that, I don't have any specific questions this time around. So a general critique of anything and everything that comes to your mind. <clears throat> right on, dude. Ryan H. Let's go. <laughs> These look good. Oh, hell yeah. That came out awesome. So that's um, what's that in uh, in English? Essentially, Pumba, Pumba face, the Lion King. Mixed with some weird. Yeah, these <laughs> frog, frog hammer shark, hammerhead shark. Perfect. These, <laughs> this is a really good mixes. Uh, and so you mentioned line weights. Mm. Pretty, pretty damn good. Yeah, I don't know if that would change much to be honest here. Uh, <laughs> line weights is really good. Maybe like um, think of like the the shadows, maybe a little bit more, and try to 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 let the shadows influence the thickness of your line a bit a bit uh, more than you do. But I mean, this already looks awesome, you know. Honestly, if it, unless if if you didn't ask, I would have never pointed any of that out. Uh, I don't think it's worth mentioning. But uh, yeah, maybe here on the inside, where it gets a little bit, where you get a little bit less light. Where more of these lines are kind of coming together, you can you can thicken the line, the lines a bit more. Maybe the line on the on the other side here of the body could be a little a little thicker, because it's defining the volume of the abdomen against the volume of the leg back here. Uh, like the, the 
the silhouette lines of, of different volumes importance, not the silhouette of the entire drawing, but the silhouette of the, the, the limbs, anything that's overlapping. So here, like the torso, you might want to, to thicken that line here, uh, just because it's against another, another volume, the, the, the contour of the body, the, the, the torso volume. Up top here, you know, you can imagine maybe it's going to be a little, a bit of light coming from above, so maybe that line is affected by some of that light. You don't need to do anything further to it. Uh, yeah, all these lines here are kind of converging. Maybe you can make that a little thicker. Uh, really outside, outside, outline. Punch these out a bit more. Anything on the inside of the shape, don't don't touch. The lighter, the better. Here, this is a silhouette defining line so you could you could make that a little bolder so the head looks like it's actually you know floating on top of the neck because it is in space at least um so it's like that kind of stuff but to be honest like this way maybe the, the face looks like it's you know sticking out a bit more uh so quad yeah your lines are really good so Um, love the colors in here. Love the really, really solid shading. Uh, super cool animals. Like these work quite well. Um, so yeah, most of what I'm gonna say is maybe more about to do the uh, about to um, about the anatomy. Uh, for the most part, it feels it feels pretty good. The neck, the head, everything in perspective. That's nice. Uh, this one here probably not a whole lot to say. Because frogs don't have a whole lot of visible anatomy, it's just like a big puddle of flesh. Um, that one looks pretty good too. Smaller, so we don't see as much of the details. But this one here, just like the the anatomy around the shoulder and around the uh, the the front legs, maybe the back leg too a little bit. Um, like this from the side. Uh, like a cutout version of that, like the back leg here for, for quadrupeds, it's you know, like for, for humans, it's not quite a circle, but kind of like that. And that being the back, you're gonna, you're gonna get like your, your glutes here on top of that. Uh, and that's gonna be the front, you might have your hips and then belly button and whatever. Seen from the top, right? So if you chop that, you're gonna get your, your femur right there in the middle. Uh, in the back, you'll have your hamstrings, your, your quads in the front. For a quadricep, for a <laughs> quadruped, not quadricep. For a quadruped, the the legs gonna be more like that, so a lot more flat this way. So it'll be it'll be wider that in uh, in that perspective, but much thinner this way. So you know you could adjust the shading in consequence here. I mean the front, almost like treat it more like a box, right? So. Like the corner of that box in the front here gets a little bit more light. Top of that box a little bit less. The corners always catch more light, so a little brighter here at the corner of the box. And then as the uh, as the quad kind of transitions to the side of the leg, it gets mostly flat. And then in the back here you'll get uh, maybe like a peek at the, 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 the uh, biceps and morse. Glutes, hamstrings, and then thigh muscle. But yeah, mostly just the shading, so just to flatten the leg so it doesn't feel as, as round as a uh, biped leg, as a, as a human leg. And uh, But the muscles look quite good from this, this point of view. Uh, in the front here, um, let's break this down a bit more. We're gonna get a Capula, something like this. So that's going to be your shoulder joint here. Do this on a separate layer. Uh, so yeah, let's just start from scratch. Reconstruct this shoulder. So I'm going to get here. 
brachioradialis group here going into merging with the tricep in the front probably won't see much of it but in the front you would have the bicep and then you're gonna get your scapula somewhere up here so let's say this is the spine of the scapula somewhere somewhere around there on top of that you're gonna get your trapezius kind of attaching to the spine and onto the top of that scapula spine different color scapula spine in white so that's the top of the trapezius the bottom of the trapezius also attaching in the same spot ish uh, but on the other side on the the lower part and then and then uh, here you're gonna get one head of the delt the other head of the delt in the front a lot flatter than for humans it's only two heads and then the rest of the arm is going to be mostly just tr uh, triceps so uh, one head of the tricep another head of the tricep another head back there Excuse me, as I clean this up a bit, so that we can read this properly. Um, and then yeah, so in the front here, you might also get like a uh, the big band of muscle that kind of covers here most of the the shoulder muscle and goes into and attach in the back of the neck on its way, partially covering some of the delts, making this look more like a like a, a triceps here, so like this triangle shape. Maybe you want to flatten that out here. Because the tricep, you know, really needs to look kind of like a triangle, um, more or less. I'm just trying to adjust the heads here to fit in that that space. Um, and what else we got in here? Um, and so yeah, break your radialis group here, and then all your extensor muscles, and then whatever whatever else fingers you got in there. So the the brachiocephalicus and then sternal sternocephalicus. And for us, it's sternomastoids, for animals, ster sternocephalicus, very similar, but essentially the same. Uh, that one attached in the front here is like, just like ours, you know, like we have a sternomastoids attached in the front here at the, uh, uh, on the, on the, 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 the median side of the, uh, the clavicles and a little bit of the sternum. Um, but quadrupeds don't have clavicles, so it's just going to be like a floating thing here in the middle, but it's still attached to the same spot. Say in purple here. It's gonna go around the neck and attach back here at the the back of the skull and merge and kind of as a neighbor to the brachial cephalicus. But the brachial cephalicus attaches on the arm, so slightly different. <clears throat> got it <clears throat> and then in between here you're gonna get a bunch of just neck deep deep neck muscles uh, and then the rib cage ribs 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 so you're gonna get your chest here so there you go hopefully that hopefully that clarifies it a bit <clears throat> thanks Joe for um for pointing that out uh, allowed me to to double check and um, refresh my memory so there we go really cool animals Ryan um, very believable, <laughs> even though they look they look pretty alien. Like the the way that you merge them, the way that you mix them together, and how the the different characteristics are kind of kind of shared. Uh, very believable. Like nothing stands out as oh this is the this is the shark part and this is the frog part. It's all like kind of everywhere at the same time. So nice. I wonder what that tastes. I wonder what that tastes like grilled on the barbecue. Yum, yum, yum. Moving on to Jason. What's up, Jason? So I'm currently working on this piece. Do you see anything wrong with the anatomy or the foreshortening of the left arm? Plus, how can I make the focal point more like... Boom! That's where my eyes need to go. Nice and writing too. Not consistent, but but nice. Aesthetic. Aesthetic aesthetic letters. 
uh, like a true artist. Anatomy of foreshortening of the left arm. Yes, a little bit. Yeah, the I mean the pose is super cool. It's just it's it's hard to pull off, and also maybe a little bit unnatural. Mm. Very not like I think we need to make some adjustment to the pose for it to to work. Properly. Uh, because it would be really hard to place your legs in that in that kind of position. Let's try it again on the side here. Uh, 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 um, and when you have yeah, when you have any limb that's foreshortened, always best to have like part of the limb that's not foreshortened it just looks better it's more aesthetic you know it's like this the difference between having an arm like this and having an arm like that like oh that there's more to this like it affects the silhouette it just looks nicer and so you have the right idea here and having this bend in the in the arm it's just maybe the the bend where the shoulder is lower and twist it just feels a little uncomfortable so maybe lift the shoulder instead and like go like that you know so this the 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 hand that's coming towards us is gonna be a little higher a little higher man i'm starting to lose my words and the shoulder is gonna be a little higher as well and so kind of like the opposite of what you got going on here for the torso because otherwise it feels like she's trying to dodge something like whoa maybe she is but feels uncomfortable so let's try to push that up. But that that hands more like a, in our face. Shoulder here. hands uh it's a little bit more relaxed maybe you know it's not like the shoulder doesn't need to drop so much it's just like casual kind of peace peace out um for that one here she's holding something when you hold something like you want to lock your shoulder in place and usually it's not gonna be this high because then that's it's you need more strength to to raise your shoulder if it's heavy so it would make sense, you know, to kind of just offset the shoulders in the complete opposite direction that you had them. So this one, this one here, a little lower. Um, and then for the legs. The legs. I think it's gonna be mostly because like your your knees are No, I'm gonna stop myself here, that's not true at all. Um Yeah, like the angle feels a little a little intense here. Like you wouldn't spread your legs this much to just take kind of like a a jump or like a big step like it looks like what she's doing like that knee looks a little bit out of place like she could have her legs in that kind of position but i think the knee would be more on the inside of the leg that one too here a little bit more on the inside uh so knee here inside of the leg and then cap maybe like on the, on the outside this way but uh but making sure that, let's say you have like a cylinder this way. Right now your knee was kind of like on the outside here. We want to bring it more on the inside. The structure is gonna be here. Um, yeah, but I think that's about it. Maybe 
Maybe this one could be a little longer too, to match, to match that one here. This one is foreshortened and it's, it's quite long already. That one's not foreshortened, so... If it's pointing backwards, then have it do that. But uh, the way it is right now, it's coming towards us, so... If that's the case, make it longer. So, slightly longer. Uh, then part of the glutes here. Pressed. Being compressed. That kind of holds up ish. Uh, yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's a slight pose adjustment, but uh, but everything else about this character is awesome. I love the I love the composition of the piece here. It's super cool. Um, a really really good line quality. I mean, you could you could beefing up the like the outlines a bit more so that's clearer to see but if you're gonna you know color everything not really needed but uh, like the contour like I was saying like I was telling Ryan uh, the uh, yeah the contour of the silhouette here just so that the character really stands out against the background it's clear where it starts clear where it ends if nothing else at least this would, would help a bit the read Just this little much, this this little bit of, uh, of added thickness now makes her pop a bit more. Um, yeah, cool, cool, cool design otherwise. Oh, there she is. Yeah, man, nothing else to say other than that, so adjustment to the pose, but super cool otherwise. Moving on to Warren. Zainab, your. Uh oh. Nah, go to bed, man. <laughs> It'll be a while. <clears throat> Have a good night. <clears throat> mm. Why is my face so orange, man? Elgato, Elgato. Ah. Have a good night, Zanep. Sweet dreams. Uh, Warren. Been drawing a bunch of buckets. Alright. Uh, I have been a great hope you as well. I've been going through Proko's anatomy course since I really want to improve my anatomy. <gasps> what? And figure drawing more than anything. I do practice other stuff, but my main love is drawing characters. So other than these individual anatomy pieces, what would you say is the best way to practice drawing the full figure? Uh, time, gesture, drawing, construction, anatomy studies. And also, where did you get the music that you use in your videos and your video lessons? Trainer. Should I, should I even answer? <laughs> um, woo -woo 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 -woo. So, the music that I use in my video, uh, it's a, it's 
stuck YouTube <laughs> song and music. So, um, what is it? I think it's called like the the Lands End. Is that, is that it? Lands End. Showing. What's going on? I'm not there. One day, Underbelly will be famous. It's only thanks to me. All right. It's so bright, this thing. Um, other than these individual anatomy pieces, well, <sighs> so like he's got he's got clearly a different approach to to mine, you know, to uh, to learning that kind of stuff. I. Not necessarily a fan of of simple of like simplifying the the volumes down to something that's so complex. Anyways, I might as well just draw the damn you know the actual bone. <laughs> uh, so like that's good to maybe help you observe better. But as a like as a construction method, I don't think it has much worth. Uh, I don't know that that's what he intends with this. Anyways, but. Uh, but yeah, like I see, I see the the benefit in helping you understand the mechanics of the of the body part. You know, it forces you to observe certain things that you might not observe necessarily. Um, so in that sense, sure, you know, I think that would make sense. But um, but even better than that, what I recommend is <laughs> better. Objectively, of course, in my opinion, better. But uh, what I would recommend instead, you know, instead of something like this, is uh, is something that I've uh, mentioned in a recent YouTube video. But uh, but it's the one about uh, foreshortening. So the logic still applies here. Um, you know, to get good at drawing characters like you know the complex characters that have a lot of a lot of anatomy features that are that are accurate and that are foreshortened properly uh, just a good you know well-built character um, I always start on top of something that's super simple so that's that rule I'll never change uh, I've applied it my entire life and it just works too well to change it and it is to just start with just simple shapes start with something super basic that's way too complex um, to draw from imagination so instead I would draw uh, yeah like something just like torso neck shoulders rest of the rest of the the, the, the abdomen hips crutch all that stuff cylinders cylinders for the arms making sure that you measure proportions with these simple volumes you know simple volumes easier to easier to gauge how long it is way easier than a, a, an arm with a bunch of muscles on it um, and then from there you kind of just close all of that all of that up and then uh, you add details based on what you observe from from uh, from your anatomy studies so if you want to add your chest muscle there you go you have the base for it uh, if you want to go in deep with the, the shoulder muscles all right the, the, uh, the, the anterior head the middle head and then all of that underneath slides the bicep and then you have your brachialis your, your tricep 
then you can just build on you know build on top of that super simple uh body structure like simple simple mannequin you can first um just close it close the line so that it looks more like like a cartoon character like something that's mostly featureless but but still looks like a, you know looks like something um more than just a bunch of cylinders like thrown together um and then from there you just uh learn groups of muscles that you don't need to look into the individual muscles just yet you know that's that's too much detail to look into the groups of muscles the stuff that really impacts the silhouette like delts chest back muscles like all those bigger more significant muscles and after that if you get really good at that uh and like placing them on that simple mannequin after that you can look into the, the individual muscles if you want to push your studies this far um, but that would be kind of like the steps uh, nothing else makes more sense to me and uh into practice and like the, the act of practicing that's great to highlight kind of what you're what you're lacking where um you know as you're drawing this like there's gonna be one place at some point you're like mm, where's that line should, is that line should, should that bump be here should that uh that that, 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 that rib cage line be there and then you look it up you know you look up the reference and then you learn this way like you solve that one problem and then keep going And so observation paired with the actual drawing, you draw to highlight yourself, your shortcomings, and then you look them up to fill the, uh, the void of information with the right information. And then you just repeat that process over and over and over again with more and more and more complex parts of the anatomy. Like I said, starting super simple and then groups of muscle and then the individual muscles. So what to practice? Yeah, like gesture drawing is really, really good just for poses, just to have bodies that feel like they, they're not too stiff. You know, they're not constructed by somebody that has no idea what they're doing. They're constructed by an artist that has seen a lot of bodies that knows what kind of curves a body can take, how, how much flex certain limbs can, you know, can experience uh, the different poses are possible at all with the body. So a lot of gesture drawing all the time. That should be like your... Yeah, like I was saying earlier, like just part of your diet. You do that all the time. That's just the thing you do. Just like taking a shower, brushing your teeth, eating. You practice gesture drawing. That's one of those things. Um, and then always have some just anatomy material close by that you can always refer to. Like 3D models, like as close to reality as possible. Um, and then of course, looking at the stuff in the, um, in the anatomy class. To, to see yeah, how to simplify the groups of muscles into things that, uh, that are easier to remember initially before going into the individual muscles. Yeah, and uh, yeah, like for the, uh, the shapes that you use for the body, <laughs> like my preference has changed a lot throughout the years. So I don't think there's the right way for that. Uh, as long as it's simple, <laughs> the simpler, the better. That's not simple, too complicated. So for the torso, it could be a box, like it is, like I show in the uh, in the uh, the anatomy class, right? The box works well because it's easier, at least when you're starting as an artist, when you don't have a lot of experience yet, it's easier to to look at that and to to imagine it in perspective. Like most people can draw a box, uh, but it is harder to draw a, a shape like this and to position that that cross section right down the middle. Uh, that's a little bit harder, so that's why I don't use that initially. But that's what I use now. You know, when I do constructions, that's I'll use that instead, just because it, it looks closer to the reality, to the the final product. That's just easier to to approach uh, initially. And for limbs, always cylinders. That just that's that works perfect. For complex pose or action pose with gesture, be the best way to draw. I mean, yeah, the construction is still the same thing. You know, regardless of what you're what you're tackling, sure, it's easier to draw to draw that than it is to draw a crazy pose. But uh, but you would 
you would still have to foreshorten different things to place stuff in perspective. And there's nothing easier to place in perspective than just a simple volume. Way easier than drawing like a complicated, complicated arm with not just an arm with a lot of complicated muscles and like overlapping each other. And like oh, this one connects here, that one's connects there. Like, that's a lot of stuff. So just build it up with simpler, simpler shapes first. And after that, you attach the stuff. It's like a like you're building a Christmas tree. You don't you don't start to to lay out. I don't know. <laughs> Does that work as a comparison? Yeah, you need to have your tree first, and then you put the decoration on it. It's kind of the same thing. But um, but yeah, the gesture drawing knowledge will help you pose that those simpler volumes in perspective in a nice way and like a nice dynamic way if you don't practice if you don't practice if you don't practice gesture drawing then your arm is going to be just like that's an arm reaching for for something not the, the most dynamic but maybe if you practice gesture then you're gonna get all right so got first part of the limb is like this and the joint and going towards what's us, you have the wrist, and the hand maybe goes into a different pose here. It just it, it allows you to to give a little bit more life to those simpler volumes. But gesture drawing, super super important. Construction, extremely important. And then knowledge of anatomy on top of that, just to to make your constructions look nicer. Anatomy studies. Yes, but that's not like a, I wouldn't study that. I've, I've rarely studied muscles like that. I study it when I need it. Uh, like whenever I have a question, you know, if I'm wondering, if I, if I look at my own arm one day, because I do a lot of that, like I love just random observation throughout the day and just looking at myself in the mirror, <laughs> not myself, like looking at different parts and I go like this, move my shoulder around, rotate. Ah, huh, interesting. I try to remember all of that, see what the muscle is doing. Looks crazy, but you learn a lot this way. Um, so those are my studies. And then, uh, yeah, and then sometimes I'll look at like 3D models for certain like angles that are a little, a little harder. Or, like if I want to see what's under that muscle, how does that work, that kind of stuff. But it's just observation. My, my studies are mostly just observation. So. Hope that answers it. Moving on. Man, I am never gonna be done with this. <laughs> if I spend three hours on each person. <laughs> Uh... <laughs> Don't worry, Kevin, you'll get there. <laughs> uh, no, Ryan. That's too, uh, that, again, that's it's one of those things that seems good. You know, it seems like, oh, that's that's something as like an art student, I should know, but I never once used it. Let's look at a real face instead. Constructed with like super, sim like the sorrow head is just too, too much stuff. You know, you can simplify a head way more than that to a point where you can draw it in any angle from imagination without using a reference. I mean, you could that, you could do that with your sorrow head too, but you know, if you're pushing the details that much, just draw the just draw the nose like it is instead of trying to simpl simplify a nose to the point where it just looks like a real nose anyways. Anyways, that's just my opinion. Maybe other methods work better for other people. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to take anything away from the other guys that, that teach that stuff. I don't know. Honestly, I've just never gone through their material, so I don't know. Maybe it's great. Maybe it's not great. Um, I just know that there's no way it can be better than this. <laughs> All right, Joe, you up? Simple submission this week. Bigger drawings for turn five. Could you provide some feedback on making these better? And next steps, I'd like to hang out in this term for a bit because I've always liked animal drawings. Like drawing animals as a child. 
Yeah, that was not, I mean, I was gonna say this one was probably one of the most fun class to do because, uh, I don't know, animals are so, so cool. <laughs> There's so much variety, but at the same time, there's so much similarities across, you know, the entire spectrum of species in terms of their anatomy. And so it's really fun, like when you when you peel off the the skin, <laughs> what you see underneath is like, oh, they're all the same. Huh. Very interesting. Anyways, fascinating to me at least. Um Yeah, yeah, dude, these are really good. Really good. Um, like uh, with the dolphin too, you know, draw the construction. There's not a whole lot of construction here, but you're gonna get the head. And then you're gonna get like the little, the little arm things in here and like the, the all, all the stuff on these, like the ribs, the, the spine, everything here. I like, constructed real quick, real rough, you know, kind of just like these here. But, uh, but there is a structure underneath here. And so like if, if you want to animate it, if you want to not animate, but if you want to, to draw it in like in motion, where it's like curving like this or whatever, you'll know how far you can push it based on what's inside. You know, like there's gonna be a limit to what you can do. Like this guy here can can do his neck. And you can, uh, can rotate his neck like this way. I'm just mouth there. Maybe you could actually. <laughs> but there's certain things that you can do, right? Construction helps with that. If anything, it gives you also just easier uh, reference points for like the length and different for proportions, really. Man, yeah, I'll, this one looks awesome. Probably the best out of the bunch. It's real spot on. Simple shapes here, the, that, everything works here. Really, really nice. Uh, with the zebra, very good too. I think maybe his. Huh. Zebras have really short necks, huh? I was gonna say neck is too short, but nah, it's kind of like the reference. Maybe his head here is a little too long, like like in relation to the rest of the uh, the animal. Ah no, no no no, it's fine. It's the uh, it's this thing here. I was like, it's some, there's missing, there's some mass missing in here. This one feels skinnier for some reason, and it's just, yeah, it's the slope of the, the rib cage here. That's a little different. This one kind of almost looks like he's pregnant. The, the belly is like all the way down there. And so, yeah, I think that's the main difference between the two. And turning that slope and having the peak of the slope kind of down here, much closer to the back. Yeah, other than that, it looks great. Really, really nice. And so he, that's gonna be the, the rib cage too. Like all of that, I would think it goes all the way down here. It's like a really compact animal. Uh, zebra, skelly. Not really giving you. Oh no, so it just has a lot of. Uh, Big ab muscles? Hold on. Huh. Huh. So the underbelly is just really massive. Interesting. That's funny. Why? The horse, you know, sure, you need a little bit of spite, a little bit of space for the for the abs. But a zebra, that's like a lot of space. All right, well, never mind. You had it right. Nothing to change here. So that that's yeah, that's the rib cage. It's just it's a big underbelly.
Um, yeah, it's it, <laughs> it's impressive, you know, how close the proportions are between between these. I mean, dolphins too. Dolphins right on right on point as well. Uh, Rizal lost spotted. That's it. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but that's um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe ab muscles for something. I don't know what. Maybe it's just fatter. That's it. Yeah, maybe they just have like a longer stomach. I don't know. I'm curious now. I need to Google this. Why is that so different than, than a horse? Because uh, yeah, you'll see like for like smaller quadrupeds, like a dog, you know, it's just you have the rib cage and then that's it. it goes, you have the spine here, you have your hips and then here at the abdomen, I mean, it just follows the rib cage and then there's nothing it goes into the abs here. The tiny layer of abs and then that that's it. There's really nothing there. So I'm curious what's what's all this space for. What, how much guts do you need, bro? Anyways, um, you're crushing it, Joe. <laughs> uh, moving on to Robin. So I hope you are well. Police on it. Police on its way. No, don't worry about it. I mean, you should always be caring about line quality. That's not true, but, uh, but the line quality is good enough here. So I don't think like nothing's a problem. Everything's clear. I see. I see clearly everything that you drew, as long as you do as well. <laughs> That's good. Yeah, the exercise here is not to, to get a better line, it's to, to analyze, to observe the construction of the animal, what, what it actually looks like in the photo, and to kind of like a tally up those two. Problem here. You got it, Ryan. Uh, that's, all, that's really good to hear, man. Um, yeah, have a good, uh, have a good rest of your weekend, dude. Sleep tight. I don't know why I need to, to mention this, but something super cool about, it's not even a lion, but it reminded me of a, not a, not a lion, not even a tiger, but it reminded me of that. Just fun fact, maybe you know this already, but the reason why tigers have such weird colors and like black and, and orange, uh, it's just that most animals, most quadrupeds can't see orange. They just see brown. So it looks just like brown and brown and black stripes so it's very hard for them to, to spot them in like tall grass for us it's so obvious like dude he's bright orange why can't you see it but for them they don't have the they don't have the the the, the rods is that the rods or the the cones I forget rods rods probably rods they don't have the rods for it maybe it's the other way i don't know whatever uh they can't see that color so since um Since the zebra, the zebra gods knew that, they're like, haha, we can give them whatever color. We'll give them a color that animals can see. I don't know why it was just, it wasn't just like a zebra though. Just like light, light gray, light gray fur and black fur. I don't know. Maybe the design's actually stupid. Who knows? Anyways, moving on. <clears throat> Robin. I made good progress on my animal project last week. Your feedback has helped quite a lot this time. Also, thanks to Greg and Juan for the additional feedback in the comments. Awesome, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's super weird. Like you see all those colors, you know, all those colorful animals and you're like, oh, why are you, why? Why do you look like that? You're trying to lure other animals to you. I know it's that other animals can't even see you. They're completely blind. Silly nature. Um, 
so this week I created a 3D model for Mia and I finalized one of her drawn poses. I also started with a cleanup and 3D model for Lawrence, but I didn't manage to finish him. It feels really good to work on uh, a stylized game right now. The process is way faster than with my fantasy RPG and I could probably finish a character every two days if I didn't have to work all the time. It's really good. Wait, that's not the... Is that a... That's not a 3D model, right? That's just a drawing. Right? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> Mmm. Bruh. That looks cool, man. Uh... So I want to have about 40 characters in the final game, but I need to cut some corners if I want to pull this off and still keep watch. <laughs> what do you think about Mark so far? Right on. Alright, so... Confused right now. What's a 3D model? What's not? And this is one. Yes. That's obvious. Nice one, by the way. The only thing that I would change with uh, with this model here is the the eyes. Like everything else looks quite nice, just like your reference. But the eyes look dead. How to change that? Like, what's very specific about eyes is that they are not just, um, just a sphere. It's uh, actually, it's like a hollow, like partially hollow sphere, right? So let's say you have an eye, and you know this already, I'm sure, but just to highlight what I'm about to mention, you have an eyeball, and then the iris is not gonna be, it's not gonna be, uh, more like the iris is gonna be here, and then the, what's the, Pupil is going to be like this, and the iris is not going to be on the surface of it. Like, that's a toy eyeball. The iris would be back there. Inside, it's like this is a concave, it's like a little ball shape, right? And so that that's what makes an eye feel real. That this is not following the surface, like the simple surface of the sphere. It's actually somewhere else. It's recessed inside of the shape. And... Um, so with, with eyes like this, a little trick here to pull off, because, you know, you don't have that. I mean, you could, you could, like, uh, hollow out, not hollow out, but, like, uh, push those faces in, but... Uh, uh, probably not. So then it's just a matter of how do you deal with having an eye that looks like that, that would be textured like this, but make that feel not fake, like, not as a toy, something that's more lifelike. Um... So I would probably recommend that you have like some some gradient in here, like just something that suggests maybe the 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 iris. Very subtly, but let's try something. So maybe having a little bit of like like faking the fact that it's that it's hollow even though it isn't. Like adding a little bit of light, like a little bit of shadow up here. You know, it's it's fake, obviously, but it suggests maybe that the eye kind of caves in a bit as a result. You get a little bit of shadow here that you would get, you know, seen from the side, the eyeball. It sits like this and then it goes in. You know, this, the top here, let's see the light's coming from above. The top of the eyeball here, all of that's gonna get some lights. All of that's gonna get some lights, but then this part here, which is on the inside there, that's not gonna that's not gonna get as much light because it's you know it's not facing the light as directly. And so your the bottom of the, the bottom of the pupil is gonna get most of the light because it's facing the light as directly as the eyeball. The top, not so much. So you could do something like that. Kind of kind of fool people to think that it's actually a hollow eye, but it's not not hollow, yeah. So maybe something like that. And then um, either you draw 
draw it on top, but having like a little bit of a sparkle in the eye to yeah to show that it's a reflective surface. It's all wet, and I think that that'd be important. So that could be either like a separate like a duplicate of the the mesh that you kind of just scale up just a bit so that it's kind of floating above the eye, and then you can have that just be just transparent but super reflective, like super glossy, uh, or or drawn directly, like it's just like a white spot that you draw so that it's always the same. Like you can always control it, place it wherever you want. Uh, I think those two things would be important to get, give your, your characters a bit more life. Maybe even... Uh, I suggest the iris maybe a bit more. Yeah, I don't know how much you wanna you wanna add, but feel like something like this would makes her feel more alive you know like this one is kind of just dead and then you turn the switch on <gasps> back to life dun, dun, dun. that's the only thing that was kind of sticking out uh yeah because this one here has got a little there you go you have a little shadow up there you have a little bit of highlight in the eye so getting back some of that i think would be super cool maybe all of this is like the of course I was gonna do that, so I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's the case. Uh, yeah, man, this is super cool. Damn. Yeah, that character looks awesome now with the, the hat. Who gave that idea, the big hat? Genius idea. I just repeated it, that was not my idea at all. Was that Billy? I don't know, I, don't know. I forget who it was. A great idea. Now she totally looks like a tourist. The the, <laughs> the, 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 the the camera too. Perfect. Yes. It's like, I love the lighting. It's such a char charming place. Is that Greg maybe? Oh, yeah, I forget who he was, but anyways. Character now looks awesome. Great model of it too. Really follows the yeah follows the design quite well. Mm. She is she's quite small on the screen though. So maybe maybe like for the three D model version you could yeah like I think that was a good call to make the hands bigger. You know like they were a little smaller in your your design here. So yeah, bigger hands like just chunkier so that we can see them. Maybe the feet too, just like a little bit, because right now it's what, like a few pixels at most. So that would be, that's going to be a good test, like to balance things out, you know, like how, how thin you can get things, or maybe everything is too thin and you need to like just bulk up everything. Kind of the same, the same problems that um, like Blizzard would have, you know, working on something like StarCraft. Where it's just, it's a bunch of buildings, like tall, small buildings with a lot of details, but at the same time you want everything to be be clear like what what your what it is is that a wheel is that a, just a dot and so to chunk everything up uh give it a little bit more a little bit more chunkiness so that it reads at the distance that we're gonna be seeing these characters you know like the belt probably should be bigger like the belt buckle is just invisible from from this at this size the feet is super small too like it's it's not clear that she's wearing sandals since it's so small you can kind of guess but yeah, maybe I think there's, there's gonna be a balance there, um, but uh, but so far so good, man. That's very cool. Moving on to live you. Yeah, exactly. It has this uh, this, uh, this uh, this Nintendo vibe, you know, like nice and just cozy and warm, a little bit of a. Uh, Animal Crossing, a little bit of uh, a little bit of Zelda. 
love the colors so far. So don't change that. Color is awesome. Here we go. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, that's that's a lot of progress. All right. So what's up, Livio? So sharing my challenge entry in some life drawing this week. Uh, drawings. I tried to paint instead of my usual more precise and cartoony. And slow approach. I use more natural brushes as well in both cases to add life to my lines and be more bold. I feel like the experiment failed. <laughs> what? Uh-oh. Failed, he says. We'll see. How much I have? Three hours. Doable. He's a pretty good dude. Uh, I mean, I love the lines, you know. On this guy, like, that's super cool. Like these, these, which is the, like how you suggest the lines. Uh, on him, it's super successful. thickness i mean it's just a nice stuff i think it works really well for him um this one here maybe a little too much like too much thickness in areas that maybe don't need it like if it's the contour of the body that looks, that looks good on the inside though like this is nice because there's not not a whole lot of uh not a whole lot of like thick lines in there hmm Well, the gesture, the gesture is really good. So it's more just like a style thing. But I don't know, was it faster this way? Because if it were, uh, if it was, that's nice shading, really nice. Well, I mean, a lot of this stuff here, you're right, you know, and how, and reading in the comments, how, all right, so if it's faster, so that's good. Um, it's just like the process matters so much with these, these more stylized methods, like, uh, like traditional art, you know, like you need a particular method to get a decent result, otherwise it just looks like crap. Uh, and then you have to follow certain steps, like certain things that you can do, certain things that you can't do. And so like as as long as you get just past that the, the technical side of it, because it really just is a technical technical hurdle. Um, But after that, I mean, I don't know. You should be. This one looks really good. Like the, the way that you shaded the, the torso here. That's really nice. And a lot of it is. Uh, it's technical. It, <laughs> how can I phrase this properly? Um, it's kind of like my process for like coloring coloring illustrations you know like you start with the line arts and then you go into the flat colors and then you do and then you do the shading and then you do like all these different steps but without with the with the the faith that at the end if you do all of this right that at the end 
when you when you combine all that stuff it'll look good um now i think you just have the phase where you're not sure yet if it'll look good and then maybe you're rushing some of the phases because you're, you're kind of curious you want to know is, is it is it gonna be all right is it gonna be fine and then when you when you're i mean that's completely normal also but when when you don't follow each step 100 percent like when you try to just cut a little bit of corners then by the end they those start to add up add up add up and then the end result is not as polished as as it could have been but uh, but if you see like a very experienced uh uh, a gesture drawing artists that where they all they only do that right um you'll see the way that they approach their lines very carefully like the line like this line here that you took like half a second to draw probably less uh like they'll they'll have very few lines in the end result but each line is carefully sculpted it'd be like uh, <laughs> and when you take your time this way, like you make fewer mistakes, and then the end result will look nice. And but they know it'll look like they, they know for sure it will look nice because they've done it many times. So they know I can take my I can time I, I, can, <laughs> I can't speak man. The words coming out too fast. I can take my time at this step, and I know I know it'll look good. It's just something you haven't experienced as enough. polishing that goes nowhere like this is a really good example of the the 80 20 rule you know like that's that's 80 percent and then if you want that's 80 percent that took 20 percent to, to make it uh 20 percent of your time but if you want to get the last 20 percent of polish that's going to take you 80 percent of your time approximately and so but that's definitely the case with arts and polish and that kind of stuff so it's just like that 80 percent of your time that you're gonna that you're gonna spend if you don't know for sure that it will contribute, you know, 20% at the end, maybe, maybe you don't, maybe you, you mess it up and it only contributes like 5%. Then that's, that's always a little bit more. That's why you want to rush to get to the, to get to the end and see, oh, is that, did that turn out right or not? But all of this to say that, uh, These look pretty good. They just look like uh, some parts were a little bit more rushed, you know, not as carefully, carefully, uh, like the lines, the brush strokes are not as carefully laid down as some others might have. You know, like, uh, like this line here on his glutes. It would be cool to probably have one here, like in the armpit where it's a little darker. Maybe under the, uh, under the chest muscle where it's, uh, suggest a little bit of a shadow super super subtle don't need to add much more than that and since you have a dark outline here just use the same logic on that side as well under the arm as well and it's just like the more that you do the technical part of this drawing which is the line quality the brush the brush quality that's all technical stuff um the more that you repeat that, the, the cleaner it'll get. But that's not really super important, you know? No, like what I look at here is really more the proportions, how you how you treated the muscles, how you simplify the muscles, um, shading to see a little bit how you how you can visualize those different volumes. So like all the all the style aspect of it is almost irrelevant in comparison, but These studies are really good. Yeah, this one is particularly good. I keep looking at it. Uh... Anyways, let's move on to this.
Uh, da, 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 that looks good. Two things I will point out. Number one, um, kind of like the level, the finish everywhere. Pretty much the same everywhere. So I would recommend it to spend maybe more time on this guy. Less time on that stuff here. Like all these books, you know, they could have been instead of, uh, instead of being so detailed, they could have been just that, that, that. And when you look at the illustration anyways, you wouldn't know this any difference because, you know, you look at this anyways, the books are very secondary, the secondary reads, not nearly as important. All of that stuff here could be a lot simpler, almost abstracted in a sense. Uh, same thing here with the shading on these, <laughs> they're too well shaded. Flat color for this would be enough. Flat color. Bam. Good enough. Moving on. And and save the details for this guy here. So that you know you have this this contrast and frequency of details and, and the quality of the rendering. But it's more rendered around around him. Um just to save you time. And also it will improve the just the composition a little bit. It'll improve the reads. Cause, uh, Cause yeah, I, I noticed myself looking at this a little too much uh, compared to him. Like, whoa, this, there's a lot of stuff in here. It's a glass surface, so you have reflections. You have a lot of contrast between light and dark colors. You have a lot of a lot of patterns here, a lot of repeated patterns, uh, a lot of different colors, a lot of, a lot of details. And so like toning that down is gonna bring more attention to him. And then, um, when it comes to him, yeah, I think a little bit more, a little bit more details, like, uh, like fingers that are more, more drawn, you know, like longer fingers and maybe thicker, uh, thinner outlines um, for some of these details. But, but as a, as a, just like a style choice, that looks, that was kind of cool. Um, what I was going to point out is more of the, um, the lights, the light issues in here. So probably on the ground in between his leg here, some of that light will kind of kind of go through. Kind of reach the other leg, maybe just so to make that that uh, left leg here feel a bit more grounded because right now it feels like it's kind of floating. So maybe a little bit more light on the carpet, more uh, clear shadows coming from his foot here. Uh, you probably have some shadows from the like the leg here, kind of blocking the light onto the pants. Maybe something like that. Wait. Oh, there we go. So they have it a little further back. something to ground this leg because otherwise it felt kind of was uh, kind of floating in the air but but now that the ground is illuminated just like the leg is makes more sense that's really good maybe I toned down the contrast too between the highlights and the shadows Is there a reason why the, the hand is highlighted this much? No, right, it's just random. All right, well, I'm gonna move on to the next one, but I uh, hope that helps, leave you. I think you're being way too hard on yourself.
there's a lot of super advanced stuff in here. I think you're just getting getting hung up on like uh, just technical technical parts that uh, everybody that tries a new medium, new technique, new style will have to go through that anyway. So I don't know. help with which part meanwhile technical stuff uh, oh, you mean like the, like the lights, uh, like the the like the painting? What I was talking about um, regarding the painting, or the gesture drawing? Probably the painting, right? Um, well, that's gonna be part of the, uh, yeah, like the illustration class covers that. Also, the probably some of the environment classes too. But that's that's it's process again. You know, it's like the different steps that you need to follow to get to a result, like a, a result that is often very similar. It's uh, it can be kind of expected, predictable. But to build it up like that, you know, like it seems like you. I think that's what you said too. That you went into a like more painterly. Uh, Paint instead of armor, yeah. So, painting, you know, from painting everything at once. I don't know if that's what you did exactly, but like painting the painting, painting the final result right from the sketch, pretty much. You know, where you have the, the highlights, you have the different subtleties and colors, you have the different subtleties and values and contrast and and everything. Um, that's pretty tricky to do all at once, and so that's why you know, in the uh, in the in term ten, in the last the last class. It's all about breaking up that process, so you you, you kind of lay it out in layers, uh, lines, flats, shadows, lights, yeah. piling it on. And uh, yeah, and if, if all of this is done properly, when you add it up, it looks nice, always. <laughs> It's like when you don't have it separate, when it, when you tackle it just like as a, as a painterly way, essentially combining all those layers in your head and kind of just going at it, aiming to get the final results right off the bat. It's uh, it's a little bit more trial and error. Uh, it's a little harder also to to identify like which step was the was problematic for you. Was it the lighting? Was it the, the shading part? And when it's all split like this in different steps, you can just look at all the diff all the individual steps. Be like, oh, that's that's where you you hung up a little too much, um, or if you polish that particular step, the overall result will look much better. Or but for learning, you know, like to to troubleshoot yourself, to troubleshoot the issues. When you get more experience, you know, and, and you've done that many many times, you kind of you, you expect stuff to work out uh, a certain way. So you. You take more liber liber liberties, so that's why you know a lot of more more uh, experienced artists will go right into colors, and it'll, they'll they'll make it look nice, because they've gone through the process many times and they know they can kind of project ahead of time what it's gonna look like and, and get there all the time because they've done it so many times. But if you haven't and if you're not sure where your weaknesses are, where your strengths are, like 100%, unless you you know yourself really really well. Um, breaking down the steps this way allows you to troubleshoot it allows you to find out where the issue is and i think that's the best way to when you're learning to to tackle the process i mean i i, I do that too so not only when you're learning obviously but but when you're learning breaking up the process i think is essential uh,
perfect. <laughs> oh, I love it. The whole time, you're know, like, she's kind of stoked about it. I'm gonna put up my show, and then she starts to listen to this. And like, what? Huh? What'd you say? I'm gonna have to do what? I think here, I mean, it's it's dope. You know, I, I don't think I would. It's super clear. I got it the first time. I think that's what you meant, right? And she's starting to kind of freak out about, wait a minute. It's not. Is that what I'm signing up for? But uh, yeah, I like the dead eyes. I think I would just make them more dead. How could you do that? What do they do when the eyes are dead in anime? I like they get rid of the iris, right? Of pale looking, like soul has left. <laughs> nah, maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it was better before. But I feel like she could be a little bit more like, you know, like she tapped out. You know, like she's she's gone somewhere else. New pu no pupils here. Yeah. Uh, Because that's kind of what it's building towards, you know, like, oh, uh, she's not sure about that. And like, what's, what's going to be her final expression? And then, oh, she's dead. She's dead inside now. <laughs> what animes I watch? The ones that have a lot of blood. Where characters die a lot. read here first um so rushing the submission today because i've got somewhere to go in a minute but here's my very unfinished second page of the comic how do you like it unfinished oh because of the background here mm. i love it uh <laughs> yeah i don't know much that i would change like, it didn't even bother me that this was white. I mean, maybe not white, you know, but it could be just kind of just a blur. You know, you could take almost like this here, just blur it and just slap it in the background. So you don't have to, to draw. Yeah, like something like that. Ah, oh, but what's there? Ooh. Maybe too much for her. I don't know, like how serious it's meant to be, but uh, it looks sick. It looks really, really good. Damn! Why you show me that? Now I, I'm gonna be craving the rest. I want more. I want more now. More like it looks like he's looking at his own his own hand.
this comic. So far, so good. Alexandra. So I've colored these images, uh, these manga pages. Something itchy. Um, I've colored these manga pages and panels for the color and the light theory assignments. And all of them, my main focus was the color palette, but I've played with value contrast and self versus heart lighting in some of them too. That's very usual. No, 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 no roasting here. Only feedback. Mm. Those are nice drawings. Wait, did you draw this? Or is it just like a, or is it more a coloring assignment? I'm confused. Because those lines look, uh, those lines look, look quite pro. So I don't know, I am going to, I, I really don't know. Okay, she colored them, so yeah, okay. So mud. I'm not crazy though. Got it. And you can tell, you know, it's all, it's, it's subtle, but it's one of these things like, uh, like that line here, that line there, the way that this is simplified, but to create like a knuckle, yeah, the way the folds are kind of laid out. So I'm like, when did you get so experienced? Right on. So. Play it with value contrast and self versus hard lighting and some of them too. Alright. Well, some of these work really well. Others are a little too intense. Like this one is probably the, the one I dislike the most. Um, I think it's just it's too much contrast. I think that's what it is. Um, It's aggressive, you know, it's like it's attacking my eyes. But to solve that, it's probably very simple. Let's reduce some of the, remove some of the saturation. And also, you know, the fact that it was so saturated, it kind of, uh, kind of hides the, the lines a bit. And so it becomes harder to see the lines and see what's going on in the back. Just reduce that a bit. Like, oh, now the lines kind of show up properly. A little bit more at least they're more visible and the stream is having problems what is that just you or, uh, or is that the case for other people too yeah i think i've seen it like do something weird on my end too but i've only spotted it once anyways let me know um not much i can do about it anyways but we can pray to the gods of of IT. So yeah, for this one here, like overall, the background I think the saturated should be better, and then you can probably bring the saturation back onto this one here because he can be more saturated for sure. As a like as a simple you know simple color palette, simple, super simple way to to color that works well. You have the the bright warm area um, right there right in our face, and then the more subdued background color, cooler colors, 
there's no questions you know we look at that first very clear uh, there's nobody in the world that's gonna look at this area first that person's got got problems you can't rewind it what the hell? oh wait I can't either <laughs> Maybe it's just the because it's the mainstream. So if you try like uh, if you try to check it in this in the timeline, maybe that's different. Yeah, if you go in the timeline, it's a little different. I can I can scroll back and forth, but here in like the main window, I can't do that. Um, this one here. That one was cool. Pretty dramatic. Uh, but same same idea though. Like I would desaturate this a little bit. I love the I love the bleeding here of the color, like the warmth. Um, but I would make the blue a little bit lighter for the same reason, so that we can see the lines just a bit better. You want the skin in the skin color to be to be light enough in comparison to the to clearly like the black shirt. Uh, but love that colors like nice nice tomato red in the back, nice purple in the foreground, cool purple. Yeah, a little bit brighter. That that makes it work real nice. That's nothing to change here. That was that looks creepy. Creepy colors. Perfect for that that guy. <laughs> uh, by that I mean this. Dirty yellow. Dun, dun. It's made an appearance, but it's perfect for stuff that needs to be that to look gross. And here too we got the water uh, watermelon colors, color palette. Here maybe I would do the um I'll go the other way around with your gradients, you know, so like the top the top of the gradient here is like the, the cooler purple. The bottom of the gradient is the warmer, warmer pink. Uh, usually, you know, that always applies regardless, uh, regla regardless of the subject, but you'll want to have your your warmer colors, <coughs> not necessarily, but the uh, you want to guide the eyes towards towards the warmer area. And then right now, the gradient is kind of guiding us away from the face. So in that case, not working super well. I would do, yeah, like more pink towards the top and a little bit more purplish towards the bottom. Let's try. This way it feels like yeah like this side is in the shades and that side is being lit by the sun that's why the sun is a warmer color um, yeah, and then in here uh, I think it's just not clear what like the main problem here is that it's not clear which is the focal point which one's the most important like this one stands out a bit more, but they're all like they're all kind of all kind of busy. They all share similar values, similar like there's not one that really stands out. Like that one stands out a little bit, but then you know that guy's that guy's purple too. That guy here is close to being purple, like a dark dark blue. That one that one too is kind of close. This is yellowish, 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 bluish, bluish, bluish. Um, so maybe if it was a little, uh, if it were a little lighter, maybe that could that could help separate him from the rest, and uh, and 
certainly would help in the same sense that this helps to to, uh, to make the lines more visible. I think it'll make the structure of this character read better. No, no. You know, almost like the top of his head is a little bit brighter because he's the one that's coming out more than the other ones. Maybe that's not the case, but. Or or you leave that you leave that nah, yeah, it definitely needs to be brighter. Just so that the lines the lines are more visible. But in addition to that, maybe you could just um, like darken the edges of everything else with a blue tint so that even the yellow ones don't look too yellow, too warm. Like uh something like that just to kind of knock them down a bit in in uh importance they're warm but not that warm the main guy here is in the middle that's the one you should pay attention to uh, back in time a little bit Just improving the clarity just a bit. Oh, the house. Moving on, moving on, moving on, moving on. All right, Rachel. So I hope you're doing well. This week, I wanted to share some portraits I've been working on to practice consistency in art style. Uh, I find I'm drawn to a lot of artists who have a lot of detail in hair eyes and nose as well, having more simple mouth and skin. This is the style I've developed while studying such artists. For this critique, I'd like any feedback you have on these portraits, whether it's concerning their style, facial features, or any else, anything else that catches your eye. Um, anything that look, doesn't look cohesive to you, please let me know. Also, I added some half-finished outfits concepts for these guys. All right. Uh, more simple skin. I always prefer that. So that's a vote. That's a yes for me. Um, yeah, I would say maybe the... It looks really good. <laughs> so let's start with that. Looks really nice. I like that style too. It's very... Uh, Feels very mature. It's not easy to pull off because then it's it's really close to reality. A lot of this is quite accurate. Um, when it comes to the mouth, I think I would just add maybe a little bit more to uh, to the the volume of the lips. Not so not the colors. You know, you can leave it like that. But this here, I feel like it's like too featureless compared to the rest of the face. Like the face is still pretty simple, but that's maybe too much like if you had just a bit more definition in the lip like just that much i think would help already just define that that lower lip better so we're not playing with the colors we're not adding you know any red to the lips or anything like that it's just just defining the volume better like this guy too like that's just n not deep enough to from the side to have any impact on the on the profile and that would be kind of weird like I'm trying to imagine this guy from the side where his entire front of the face is just flat. He's got kind of like a line drawn on it. So similarly, like I would just, I would push that some more for him. But that is more defined, impacts the volume a bit more. It's 
still pretty subtle, but sculpting very subtly, but scul slightly sculpting the uh, the lower jaw a bit more. I don't think this one needs much more. Maybe a little bit. To isolate the chin, but but maybe not. Yeah. And like this one here, like when when there should be a shadow. And like I'm, I think it looks really good when you don't have colors for things. Like a different different style, definitely. But it's, it works, you know. Like how there's no no lip color, no nose color in particular, or like the the ears also the same skin color as everything else. But when there's when there should be shadows, that's when I'll, I'll still recommend that you add some. Like on the other uh, on this on this on the underside of the lip here. Um, you know, seen from the side view, that's going to be the upper lip, lower lip. So like that upper lip here, uh, like that underside of the upper, that underside of the upper lip is not ever going to get as much light as the rest. And so I would just like you add shadow under the nose, under the chin. I would add shadow here as well because it follows the same logic. So it's still pretty simple. So not much detail. Still looks pretty flat. But at least, you know, if you were to model this in 3D, it could actually work. It could actually look exactly like that. Damn it. Once again, not using a separate layer. It's like a condition. It's my secret hate for layers. Yeah, so it depends, you know, like this one really doesn't need much because uh, it's pretty simple. There's really not much going on here, but this one is smiling. So like that's deforming, that's activating a lot more muscles. I think it would some it would need a little, a little something more maybe not as much as this but a little bit more shadow just to make it more logical um maybe that guy let me try something. Maybe that's not gonna look good. But his eyes seem pretty close together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, makes no difference. <laughs> Looks like a douchebag though. Like you can imagine, it just looks you down. Is that what you're gonna wear? Excuse me, sir. Oh, nice outfit. Hmm. <laughs> Is that that note? Is that death note fan art realistic version? The, the way that you treated the nose in this guy's uh, case, I like that better. I think we'll do that more here. So I have kind of a, a longer slope for the side of the nose, like this part here, like the, just the thickness of the nose. Um, maybe it's more, more subtle highlights. Mm -hmm. I think maybe something around here, like this suggests that he's like a little drunk, you know, he's, gonna, he's kind of flushed a bit. I have no subtlety in my in my vocabulary. Literally, I don't. So I do what the words I do with 
I do what I can with the words that I have. <laughs> but yeah, so like that slope here. And like that one line there. That's... Should not be. It should just be a nice continuous slope until it touches the cheeks. And then the cheeks themselves, you know, right here, like you can maybe see around my... Like the highlight, highlight, highlights, all the way to the nostril. So like that, that thing here. Making that a little more defined, better defined. So instead of having kind of like more like this tube-like nose, it's more like more like this guy here. Pretty solid. So I'm not really nothing of the child the child the, the style is not changing much, I'm not changing at all. I like it a lot. Um, it's just something to. Just to uh, some tweaks, and uh, I think that should help. But it looks really good already. So, good stuff, Rachel. Take it easy, Fuad. Cheers for swinging by. All right. All right. What do we have? Are we going to be... Uh, yeah, we, we got enough time. No need to stress. I'm not stressed. You're stressed. Nathan, so these are my studies done over the past two weeks. I am focusing a bit more on drawing knights at the moment with the goal to design some of my own soon. The, uh, the Minotaur... Minotaur? 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 How do you say it? Minotaur? Minotaur. Minotaur. We'll never know. Uh, is a first attempt. I am looking for general feedback on my approach of doing studies. And again, as for the past few weeks on my head drawings, if this would be too much for one week, let me know. And I'll split it up next time with a multiple. Ah, shoot me whatever you have. Um, I'm not gonna duplicate the time that I that I that I take to um, to give feedback to this. But uh, if you shoot me a lot of stuff, I'll spend a little bit of time on everything. Peace out, Ryan. Sweet dreams, Mr. Larna. Right on, yeah, so, uh, that's, yeah, I think you're, you're on the right track here. So, you know, let's say, let's say you're working at a, at a studio and then you have a, a new project that comes, that lands on your desk and they're like, hey, so we're working on this new game and we need a bunch of, uh, Viking characters. And then you're like, I've never drawn Viking characters. Well, that's exactly what you would be doing. So you look at a bunch of references, you try to just understand what makes a viking outfit what looks viking what doesn't look viking and that's going through a lot of studies like this a lot of reference um finding like patterns between the outfits between the like the armor makers uh what they choose to do what they choose to to follow consistently so like finding patterns in uh, in the outfits how they use the belts how what they use the belts for uh, the kinds of materials that they use and in what in what proportion and so it's really just learning more about 
that culture and um, and that's exactly what you're doing right now so perfect you're you know slowly but surely building up your visual library of uh, of nights visual elements eventually you know once you have a once you have a bunch like a for your for your minotaur <laughs> minotaur monitor minotaur let's just let's just call it mr m for mr m here um you'll you'll just start to look at you know at these uh, at these ingredients and be like hmm, what can i use and then the ones that you use those are the ones that will more effectively kind of stick you know in your visual library when you do studies like this it's good but for you mostly to to look at later you know as a learning tool yes you'll learn stuff here as you're as you're drawing them you're like all right so ah so that that pad here does that huh excellent okay has a little bit of a flat metal down there okay interesting um also on the on the middle here of the arm you have kind of like this little pad here to protect the joints oh okay cool how is that attached oh, okay so that belt attach it attaches what and so you're, you're learning a little bit like that the logic but it's really when you start to draw it from from imagination and, and trying to come up with your own construction your own uh, not construction your own uh structure for the armor that's when you go back in here and like grab stuff like all right so i'm gonna use for this guy that outfit like that part of the outfit and then maybe that guy's boots and maybe that guy's shoulders um and those will stick really really well and so this is great to kind of uh dip yourself in the culture and, and start to understand more what this is all about like what knights are all about what's their distinct distinctive looks but uh but yeah doing this this kind of exercise really really good afterwards to to solidify that knowledge to solidify those observations because then the next time you go and draw a character it'll be the same thing you'll be like oh not last time what i did with the character i was using those breath those uh, those shoulder shoulder pads maybe i can use that again or maybe i can use the same but modify them a little bit maybe they're a different size now and then you know the more characters you do this way the more you go source from like real references the more you'll be able to to pick and choose what you want almost like you have like this big lego lego desk with a bunch of little lego pieces you know at the beginning when you start to uh to study like a different different subject like this like knights you have like three types of pieces that you can use all the same color and then the more that you learn the more the more different variety of pieces you have and then you can build cooler stuff out of it peace out Juan. take it easy But you look super cool so far. So yeah, nothing else to say here other than, uh, other than that. Really, really nice studies, all these. And like what I would study also, uh, something that maybe you're not doing as much here. Maybe early on it's not as, as valuable, but, but when like the shape language that knights use becomes a little bit more familiar, I start to, uh, to do studies of just individual parts of the body, not so much like the whole thing like how how that clip works you know how that that uh, elbow pad looks like where all the uh the sole like the, the where was it assembled like what are the different pieces that make up like are there patterns on it are there like i don't know like uh, straps attached to that and that would be the equivalent of learning the individual muscles after learning kind of like the group of muscles Man, these are these are nice. What up? These knights are quite quite advanced. Oh, uh, this is a website I want uh, I want to show you.
check this website it's sick so they actually like they're they're actual blacksmiths so they make they make armor they make all sorts of uh sorts of clothes um, but they're really nice and really really cool designs armor suits yeah yeah they have a lot of variety too like a lot of different styles um, it's an amazing website for, for inspiration. I look at this stuff a lot uh, when I do armors. Yeah, anyways, good one. Um, Armstreet.com. Check it out. I have nothing to do with them. I don't know who they are. They're just cool. Um, yeah, not, not so much the like the, the fitment on the body. It's more uh, Kevin. It's more the um, just learning about like an individual muscle. You know, like how it's how it's connected to the other muscles. Like where are the clips? It's just so that you get more familiar with because all of this stuff. It's like a uh, it's like robotics. You know, robotics might look complex when you look at it, but in reality, it's just a lot of the, si the similar a lot of similar pieces kind of just assembled together. And so if you do like a study of one and you really understand how they build it, then you can kind of extrapolate that to a lot of the, the rest of it too. So it's more in that sense. Um, but um, take a look quick at these head constructions. Yes. So yeah, that's perfect. You know, the kind of, uh, you really don't need more, more than that. Like that looks perfect. Position of the eyes, right on point. There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, these uh, these female female armor sets, armor suits. Ooh, that's hot. They're so well made too. Um, yeah, just be careful. Some of them are a little a little warped, like this one here. Like he's getting getting pressed this way. No, but. Most of these are really solid. Skull drawings here too. Like simplified skulls, really good to uh, really good to study from. Not study from, really good to study. Not all the all not all the details, but just like the overall shape, just so that when you draw a real face after that, you're like ah, oh, like you remember. Oh, there's a bone here. Oh yeah, that bone goes there. Oh, that's where it's connected to and. It just helps you piece the, you know, the, the anatomy puzzle together a bit, a bit better. Yeah, the more, the more um, normal, like neutral angles, you're you're crushing them. Uh, yeah, still struggling with some of the the more, uh, the more the more tricky angles, like like this one here. Probably just want to shave off a little bit of that. that eye you know that you can push that eye towards the center of the the volume a bit more because the nose goes back in so i'm like ignoring the nose ignoring this line here because the real symmetry line is more like this goes in and out again yeah that looks, that looks really good just like pushing the eye in a bit more and then the bottom here Bottom of the chin, going into the larynx. Could adjust the jaw maybe a bit more, like I was mentioning earlier in the stream. Uh, instead of having a straight line like this, maybe that one can tilt towards the front just a bit, just so that uh, you get like a better shape for your jaw this way. Slightly better shape. But overall, these are these are great. So, yeah, just make sure that your circles, your guidelines are on point, and then, uh, Milk was angry. Yeah, man. 
All right, moving on to Kevin, your turn. So, uh, 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 no worries, no worries. So, do you know? Let's go. Um, I have my image mode set to RBG and eight bits. I cannot save my files as JPEG, but I have my image mode set. Hmm. Let's see, JPEG. Did you paste something in here? I don't know, like, it's weird, and if it's a Photoshop document, it shouldn't matter. Yeah, like, share the link, I'll, 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 I'll look it up, I'm curious. Um, but, um, but, 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 um, so yeah, I'm not sure, but uh, we'll figure this out. So I'm practicing attaching form as I saw in the anatomy, anatomy intro for turn two. Then use grids uh, or measure tools since I want to get good at doing these kinds of things. Free hands also have time to do a mannequin on a torso, uh, torso sketch. Where can I improve? I hope by next week I'll have more anatomy gesture and practice and perspective <laughs> for you. The last thing I sent a message on QBrush to you. Do you still reply to those or is there another way to? Yeah, uh, it's just like if it's depends when it was. Uh, it's like Thursday, Friday when I work on YouTube. Usually I don't have much time to do anything else. But I catch up with this on Sunday. So I'll get back to you then for sure. So one thing I would recommend here, you know, for this, uh, when you draw, especially something that's as complex as a torso and like when it's twisted, always draw the symmetry line. And so like you kind of you have it here, but this one looking at like the abs, you know, like the abs here going in that direction, like the top, like the top of the torso is always going to stay in one piece. So like the abs, like the, fr the first two set of abs is always going to stay the same. Like this whole thing kind of moves as one solid piece and what stretches everything that's below that. And so straight line here for the, um, the symmetry line of the torso. And after that, then it twists a lot. And so I think that's the main issue here. Just having that go straight and then twist. Having the abs gonna follow that. But, uh, but it was good. So it's just like, I mean, this would look all right if you didn't have the reference. <laughs> it's just compared to the reference, not the same. But this looks like a good torso on its own. But new Jason. Very nice too. So, I mean, you could, you could push it a bit more. Like he's super stretched this way. Like huge line of action, almost horizontal. So in yours, he's just a little bit more relaxed. Maybe like right before he's about to take his swing. Or maybe right before he cranks it this, crank it, cranks it this much. He's like... He still got like this much to do before he before he throws it, but uh, yeah, the structure here works really really well. I uh, can clearly see what this guy's about to do. Um, yeah, to match it, to match this a little a little more, like the knee on the inside. I would have to drop a bit more, have the leg come out even more, and then really lean forward. Uh, almost as he's about to fall because uh yeah you look at this head here it's right above his knee so maybe i did it too much but yeah at least kind of like that just to make it more dynamic but uh but that's it structurally speaking very clear very well done very well constructed yeah let me know um Shoot me a link for that uh, that file if you can save it anyway. <laughs> uh, whatever format it's in right now, I try to link this up because I'm very curious. I don't think I've seen this in a long time, and uh, there's nothing I don't know about Photoshop, so it's bo it's bothering me that I don't know what's going on. Curtis, so I took your advice and tried some different things to mix it up a bit. Here are a bunch of studies I did this week. I don't do paintings very much, and a lot of the time I feel like I have no clue what I'm doing. You get the idea of starting from the big shapes and working your way to smaller details, but I have a hard time adding those smaller details without just making a mess of everything. Maybe it's just mileage, mileage thing. Uh, anyway, I'm looking for general feedback and wondering if I'm headed in the right direction. Yes, it is a mileage thing for sure, um, but also it's just it's you getting used to the tools that you have. So a lot of stuff with, uh, like a lot of cases where. Uh, with environments is just 
how you manage your brushes, you know, how you how you use certain brushes to get a lot of details in this area and how you might use the same brush, but to get very few details in another area that doesn't need it as much. Uh, this looks great though. Like you, you completely nailed the, the lighting in here. The colors are really, really nice. Yeah, just the right amount of detail back there. That's that's perfect. Um, I would probably recommend that you add a bit more in the foreground here, just to, to let you have that kind of transition from heavy detail, medium detail, almost no detail. Got it, Kevin. Same in Photoshop. Wow. Yeah, just send like a PSD, whatever. Or any of those. Whatever you're working in right now. So if, the, if it's a PDF, shoot me that. Let's investigate. Um, yeah, like the only thing that's missing here is the, just the black color. That's it, you know, like uh, everything else, just all the, it's so spot on. Uh, you're just missing these really dark black colors in uh, closer to the foreground. So you don't see that at all in the back there because atmosphere, atmosphere perspective. But, uh, but for these here, it would be interesting, important to, to have them just to reinforce the fact that this cliff there, those details, those little planes that are part of the beach here is closer, a lot closer in relation to, uh, to us than the background is. Because that kind of stuff in the back, it's like you say, mileage, but uh, it's smallage with your how, how comfortable you are using brushes, the brushes that you have in your environment. So, like I'm not an environment artist, so I I'm not that fast when it comes to uh, to to filling up like a, an environment piece. You know, like some guys that that do only environments will have like a bunch of shapes that they have like a, a library of shapes. Only have brushes, but. They have like a library of shapes that they that they bring in. They kind of distort the form, a bunch of a uh, bunch of textures, like a pre-made hills, maybe pre-made mountains, pre-made rocks, uh, and then just slap them on there, paint over it a little bit, and it looks good. Uh, it's just like you get so familiar with your inventory. It's like a, it's the same idea as a what what would you do at at, at somebody else's place that you're so used to doing at home. Uh, and suddenly you end up in a different environment like cooking, you know, let's say you're 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 really into cooking at home and you you know you have like a nice kitchen where everything is really well organized, your spices are over there, the, the pantry is well organized, you know exactly when you're cooking and like alright, what do I need next in the recipe? Milk this, 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 you know exactly where it is, you go get it, you're not wasting any time, right? That's the equivalent of what you will become eventually. Right now, you're the guy that goes to the um, to the friend's place. And is always asking, dude, where's your milk? Where's your, where's your, uh, where's your salt? Where did you put the potatoes? Where's your fridge? <laughs> uh, like you, you would be able to do it if you spend the time, because you have the skills. It's just it takes time to, like that process wastes a lot of time, right? So figuring out how to use something better, how to use that brush better to get quicker, better result with it. Just getting more familiarized, familiarized with your tools. You know that kind of stuff so it's not even not even spot on but like i'm getting a lot of details now it's, it's still pretty abstract uh but it's just a simple like a single brush stroke but you could do the same thing here with the grass get a lot of cool detail in the foreground and suddenly just make this this piece that feels pretty i mean it feels pretty rough still you know because it's you don't have all these smaller details and you could flip it over and like, just make it look finished pretty quickly with a bunch of uh 
a bunch of texture, a bunch of brush strokes. But uh, the foundation of it, uh, colors, lighting, looks beautiful. This looks like uh, 3D renders. Nothing to say here. Mm -hmm. um, and here, only thing I'll say is a uh, ambient occlusion, kind of missing overall. So like in the teeth here, no ambient occlusion, no light loss in the corners. But there's always light loss in between the fingers and the skin. Finger pressing against the cheek is going to result in a small concave area that's going to trap the light, not let it escape. Uh, same thing here, you know, gets a little darker. It's, it's pretty subtle, but it's like that stuff all over the place. So just adding that little bit of ambient occlusion is gonna really get rid of just that, that flatness that you can see maybe a little a little bit in some areas. I mean overall super well shaded. This area is super spot on. Yeah, like here, you know, it does get that gets pretty dark here in between the fingers. It's all stuff because the structure is great. Overall value is great. Just nitpicking here. Mm. Oh, that crystal looks nice. Need to add more sparkles. Very nice. Hell yeah, dude. And uh, once you have something like that, to make this fit into an environment where you're gonna, where it's gonna not look as perfect. Cause right now it looks like it, it just came out of the factory. You know, it's about to get painted. To go onto the movie set. Just add a little bit of a uh, little bit of noise in here, it's like some subtle noise in the texture. No, that's too much. Just a little bit of random randomness in the color. Nothing is perfect in nature. And uh, once again, here you're reinforcing your uh, the effect of ambient occlusion. So whenever you have a corner, just going a little bit darker in your corners. Lights getting lost, lights getting trapped. And then yeah, you can get something that looks pretty natural. But just a quick pass on it. Good stuff, man. Man, that was good. Those colors and like sick photo too. Beautiful reference. Hmm. Moving on to Robin here. So I tried to, to do the assignments, worked quite well for the front view, but I couldn't remember remember a few things on the back. So use reference for the left pose and I think it came out quite good. Please let me know what you're thinking. So no reference for the front? That's it. Those came out great. Uh... Yeah, so the front view. Um, it's not gonna be a whole lot, to be honest. Uh, you did really good. 
So maybe a little bit here in the, uh, the shoulder, like having that maybe overlap with the chest muscle a bit more because uh, that delt needs to reach reach in a bit more to the, the clavicle here, attach it a little closer to the center of the body. Maybe you can extend that a bit more here. Um, and then have that bicep kind of continue up a bit more. But it's a little thicker still at, the, at this level. It gets narrower down here. And actually, it gets, it gets pretty long. Yeah, that, that's about right. Uh, here you might be able to see maybe a little bit more of the lats from this angle. Not, not a big difference, but maybe a little bit more of it. Uh, and then the abs, I think you could, you could expand those, like just make them a little wider. So that the, the, uh, the obliques don't have to stretch so much and be so long, like that's a pretty long stretch. Obliques, they, they'll travel a lot, but not that much. So just make that, those abs here a little bit bulkier, a little wider. And, um, you know, to know how wide, usually it's gonna just continue the slope here of the chest muscle. So that's chest, 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 and then it transitions into the, uh, the, the, the sheath of the abs. Yeah, the, the hips here, um, you just want to make the hip, the hip bone in general just a little bit longer. Uh, right now, you know, if that's your hip bone and that's the, the bottom of the hip bone, <laughs> there's really not a whole lot of space for hips. That's the only thing, you know, if that was longer, I think you'd be, I think it'd look quite good. Just gotta give it a little bit more, extend that, uh, that crotch downwards a bit more. So now it's gonna speed up. The legs look really good. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Nice, dude. Very nice. And then the back here. Uh, yeah, so you want your your glutes. Um, that's the biceps femoris, right? So that. Gluteus maximus attaches here around uh, at the joints, of the leg. That's where it's gonna attach to. Um, that here, the hamstrings, it's all all slides underneath the glutes. So that's gonna go underneath here, underneath, underneath. And the glutes kind of just cover everything, like the umbrella. For all the hamstrings up here so you're gonna get your hips right about there um, so that's all going to be oblique muscles and then you have your gluteus medius up there tensor fascia lata here yep 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 butterfly shape of the glutes. Yeah, the rest of the back looks really good. Um, just proportion thing, you know, like the, this shoulder is a little higher, so we can make it have that shoulder stick out a bit more. So it's more, it's more even on both sides of his spine. the hell's from it. Very good. That's hard stuff. Peyton. Oh, snap. I finished the portrait and started working on my first coming this week. So I have the beginning inking uh, on the top left and the rough layout of the first four pages. I wanted to know if you have any tips for me on how to ink a comic, like the example below. 
It's a little self-explanatory, but I can't quite wrap my brain around how to do it. Like this here. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty tricky, you know? It's pretty advanced. Um, But yeah, the logic here, it's um, essentially cell shading, you know, just like anime, but the shadows are all pure black. That's basically it. And there's just a really heavy emphasis on muscle definition. So like all these, all these little dark areas, it all represents a part of the muscle or like, you know, something that happens in the anatomy. In the anatomy. Nothing here is random. Uh, it's really, really good drawing. Uh, but like the knee here, you have like all the structure of the knee, the, the, the kneecap here, the shadow underneath the kneecap, that's why it's all black. Here you have the the start of the, um, the, the, the vastus medialis on the inside, so that's going to be like this bump here, contoured by, again, the knee, uh, you know, the, the hamstring, not the hamstring, the, the uh, calves, and that's the bone here. Like everything here is just uh just to highlight like the way that they start you know they just they just draw the body normally and with all the muscles without uh, without the shadows so it's just gonna be hard to draw this over like he would start something don't have a whole lot of pixels So it's just very heavily focused on anatomy. You have to kind of draw all the muscles, know where everything is. Shoulder here, the chest muscle, back. And so, you know, you start like that. That just looks like a, a typical anatomy drawing. And after that, uh, when it comes to time to like shading it, you'll just shade it. Uh, a cell shading, so it's not gonna be it's like a soft, soft shading. It's the same logic, you know. The shadow is gonna be going in the same spot, except instead of having like a smooth transition, and probably you know this already, but uh, instead of having a smooth transition from highlight to shadows, like you would have, like you would in real life, or like if you were trying to to mimic real life, instead of having something like this, the comic books they go like, no, you get no transition. That's that's it no transition whatsoever so it just shoots from highlights to shadows directly uh, and then maybe in between they'll stylize the, the transition so maybe they'll go like maybe they'll go like this so it's not a straight line but maybe it has a little bit more texture or or uh, maybe only in like parts of the area or maybe cross hatching you know there's different ways to do it uh maybe it's just like, Dots, whatever, whatever technique you want to do, uh, want to use. What did this artist do? Yeah, in this case, it's not a whole lot of in between. It's pretty. I mean, you can see here the leg. It's a little bit of shading, just a little bit, but mostly not. Mostly it's just cell shading with a lot of black. So let's say you know you you look at this and you're like, all right. There's a little bit of shadow underneath here. So you, sh you can shade it normally, really. You know, shade it like you would anything else. Muscle, and the shoulder, and then underneath the chest here, gonna get a little bit more shadows. Underneath the, on the, on the armpits, you're gonna get a lot less light. And then it's just, now you get rid of all the shading. Select like this. Whenever it's a soft transition, you get rid of it. Keep it like a hard transition. And then everything that's left. Darken the poo-poo out of it so that it just turns to black. And 
then you know when you do it better <laughs> it looks cooler uh, but overall that's the logic that's the kind of approach right so done in two seconds not gonna be the best result obviously but um, but that's kind of how hopefully that explains it a little bit um, <laughs> Yay. Beginning, beginning, beginning inking on the top left. Like going through the clouds, right? Super cool, dude. Uh, yeah, like it's always been a weird concept to me, you know, to talk about inking when you're doing digital arts. I mean, there's no such thing as ink or, you know, it's just pixels, but Like maybe I don't know. Like a lot of uh, manga artists, artists for example, they'll they'll work in Photoshop directly, and their lines, you know, they'll have maybe like a, a super quick sketch initially for uh, for their characters, uh, you know, like super rough, just kind of what you did here, you know. And then on top of that, they're gonna go straight into the final line, so they'll just like sculpt the character and like erase, you know, if it's if they they mess up something, or it's like this. Continue, draw the eyes, the nose, and then that ends up being their their final. You can kind of go back here, sculpt your lines, erase the erase the messiness. I don't know, maybe that's what you're gonna do, but ah, I see. Cause yeah, like that kind of stuff, it's hard. It's just like for it to look good, you just gotta really, I mean, you have to be able to shade almost perfectly first, you know, without any style to your shading. Um, so that's the equivalent of stylizing anatomy. You know, like you can do that once you're, once you have a really, really good understanding of anatomy and you, you know how much you can push it, you know what still looks good, you know what doesn't work. Um, that's the same, but when it comes to shading, it's like a, a style layer on top of your shading but if the shading is not that good then the you know that style on top of it still not gonna not gonna save it so like the all the final stuff like that i don't know maybe i'd keep, I'd keep it for like the end the very end once you're done with your comic how are you gonna style this the the shading and that kind of stuff because that's like that's that's like the sprinkles on top of everything you know it's like the it's like the seasoning it comes last and it's hard and some people do that for a living only inking that's all they do so if that's the goal i mean you know i would have a hard time hitting that consistently all the time too so it's a big goal. <laughs> so focus on what matters first. That's what I would recommend. Uh, you can practice this, on, practice this on the side, right? Not on your comic just yet. Practice this on the side because it's going to take a lot of practice to get it right. Uh, a lot of shading practice, a lot of shading in that style. Um, see what works, what doesn't work. Is it too much black? Is it not enough black? Is it? Are you highlighting the right stuff? Is the lighting consistent? Uh, is that making sense? Because that that considers the lighting as well. You know, like the leg here is a lot more bright than the underside of the arm. It, there's a light in the scene. It's just maybe not as obvious. Uh, but yeah, this is really high level stuff. Really, really high. Um, so yeah, focus on your story, on your your characters, your proportions, your designs, all that all that cool stuff. Um, and then once you're all done with that, then I would look into like how you're gonna finish the lines. You know, that's that's the same way the, the um, 
they work for Real Comics too. You do all the pages first, and then you do any adjustments that needs to be done. And after that, pencil everything in. Um, and after that, you pass it on. You pass it on to the anchor, and then they yeah they do their thing. And then the colorist picks it up after that. Yeah, super cool. And then that turned out really good. The hair that way, it's like subtle. But it works nice. The only thing I would, I would uh, maybe change with uh, with her face is like the highlights. And how right now it feels like her face is all flat. Uh, just because the highlight is flat. And so normally, you know, like that would probably follow the contour of the face a bit more. Following all the subtleties, all the change of planes in here. And maybe continue on her neck? Maybe not. Maybe it just stops there. Yeah, just a little bit more curve so that it follows a bit more like the overall contour of the face rather than being completely flat. But other than that, man, this drawing came out sick. Like, really, really nice. Really good stuff, Hayden. Hope that was all this. Hope that helps. Moving on to Jade. After that, let's take a really, really short break. Just uh, kind of loosen up, walk around. Been sitting down too long. But we're nearing the end. Um, so, uh, uh, bonsoir, Jade. I'm doing great. I hope you're well too. Uh, I, I hope you're having a good, good night of sleep. I reworked this portrait thanks to your expert eyes. Uh, added contrast, fixed the golden leaves, and chest less flat. These brought more. Uh, these brought much more depth. But I hope I didn't get too. I hope I didn't get too hard on the darkest parts. Got it, Peyton. Really cool stuff. Um, I also reworked the embroidery part of the clothing and added a little bit of a red, a little bit of red for the skin, as she is a doll. Ah, I see. So she is a doll. I still want to keep that dead-ish skin looking. Oh, well, I didn't know that, so that's good to know. Um, right on. Oh, yes, look at that gold. That's way better. Oh, the hair too. Sick. Oh, he did it for the ear as well. Mm -hmm. All the yeses. Oh, snap. All those details now. That's, uh, that's impressive. Yeah, uh, that looks really good. She's made out of, she's just, okay, she's a doll. So good. Uh, all right, and then two more things that I'll I'll point out. But I mean, super nitpicking at this point. Um, beautiful drawing, beautiful portrait. All those details. I mean, it looks like a little, it's a little stylized still, but that in a good way. Uh, but that looks like real gold, you know, real gold details. It's almost like this was the unfinished version, and then there we go. Bam! Well, the, with the depth added. Oh, that was so good. All right, so two things that I can think of. Mm. Stuff in the hair here. Oh, that adds so much. So good. Um, so number one is um. 
maybe the green here. The green's a little even, a little too even maybe throughout. And like the, the line here, it, like my, my beef is with the fabric, the green fabric. So I'm picking a fight with it. And like this transition here makes it seem like the, it's almost like a shiny surface. Maybe it is. Maybe it's like a, yeah, like a more shiny, silkier material. Maybe, maybe that's the case. But if not, you know, if it's meant, if it's meant to be just like a regular cotton or something like that. Uh, then it's uh, a little too abrupt of a transition. Like you would, you would expect something a little bit more diffused. might look more natural like it would make it look more a little bit more 3d yeah the stream just died for a second no, it's back. Um, so I mean the same the same thing would apply here on this side too just a little bit more a little bit more fuzziness to the colors um, Maybe adding a little bit of uh, a little bit of extra light so that the fabric itself doesn't look too flat because it's kind of the same the same green everywhere, you know. So you have like a little flap here on top of like this other portion of the the outfit. Maybe you could have like a, a clear shadow there. I uh, you know you like you have a clear shadow at the neck, uh, the face. Like reinforcing those shadows, I think it might be nice on the outfit, on the green. Mm. I mean, it's slightly warmer. So here, like this part of the chest, catches more light, sticking out a bit more. I can be a little brighter on the inside here as well. With the lights coming from up there, in the top right corner of the screen. Maybe those parts catch a little bit more. Now they feel like they have more volume. Uh, same thing here, maybe that part here can be a little brighter. It's more directly facing the sun, or the light source, whatever the light source is. Uh, maybe a little bit of shadow casting. That flap casting shadow on the chest area. Uh, and then maybe on that side, maybe the front gets a little bit of light, but since it's the opposite side, uh, not so much. Maybe, maybe that little flap here casts a little bit of shadow. This part of the neck thing. in the corners of the skin feel it like it's floating above the skin maybe a little bit more could be cool give it more depth even especially um here at the the clavicles because that's not going to be uh trying to stretch it get like a good angle mm. where's my clavicle here Can't really see, but like the the shirt itself, kind of casting a shadow. Like that's what I'm trying to get. Uh, anyways, let's not take my shirt off right now. But all of this to say that this is not like a smooth line, right? It's not like a smooth surface. It's gonna be more like doing doing, and then the neck. So it's uh, it's reflecting that into the shadow essentially. Like that part here is gonna be a little closer because it sticks out more, but that part here dips a bit more, so I have a bit more shadow there. And the same thing here. The, the 
thickness of the shadow essentially is how far the, the fabric is from the skin. The further it is, the more, the longer of a shadow it casts. Uh, seems pretty flush though. Maybe not too long. Um, and, and, and the second thing that I want to point out about the gold a little bit. So, you know, you're, you don't have as much light here on the shoulder. So I think I would just do the same thing with the, with the gold itself. Just have it lose a bit of light. It's a little darker. Um, but it feels like it's also transitioning into a shadowy area for emerging on the other side. Maybe it's meant to be all shiny. If that's the case, uh, yeah, if that's the case, then it's not so bad. I think maybe I'll just make it brighter. And have a little bit of glare, so like a little bit of that light bleeding into the rest. Just so that it's not the same green everywhere, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure of the material that this should be. But maybe something like this. I mean, yeah, super nitpicking, like I said. Uh, this looks sick. Jad, I mean, really, really pretty. Um, a huge improvement from last time. Even though it's such small details, it makes a big, big difference. Uh, yeah. It's a nice face. The house. Zip. So I worked on portraits, hands and two point perspective over the last couple of weeks. Is there any question I missed? All right. Ooh, nice hands, dude. Um, so my main problem is with perspective. I want to create a bar scene. I sketched it on paper. I'll refine and fix it digitally. But before I do, I want to ask you what I can add, how I can add small details like bottles and glass on shelves, or how I can make sure the bar chairs and lamps look the same size and shape. <laughs> uh, look, one can really struggle with small details like that. Right on. Happy to help with this. Um, you know, when you're struggling with struggling with different items um, that need to be the same size, but they're not, they end up being different sizes. Start from one big block. You know, it's always like a always easier when you start with a, with a big chunk and you chop it up. So like in butter, you know, if you're trying to to get a bunch of equal equals equally sized block of butters, you know, you start with like a big bar and then you chop it like this, boop 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 boop, and then you know that they're all the same width, the same same length, uh, the the same height, the same width. Um, because they come from the same piece. So I would do exactly the same thing here. It's a lot easier in my opinion to start with like a big shape that it's just like the bar, you know, something that curves maybe like this, following the same lines as the bar, same perspective lines same vanishing lines, same everything. It's like a big volume, except three. I'm just like winging it right now, but let's say it looks like that. Not super accurate, but. Uh, and then from here, you would just chop that up into pieces. So that's one right there. That is another part right here. And you got another one over there. You kind of wrap them up. I should have done that on a separate layer. I need to have like a shirt or something. That reminds me of, reminds me to pop new layers because God damn, I suck at this. It's basically a joke at this point. Uh, right, and then uh, once you have something like that, then yeah, you can start to clean up. Boom, 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 
boom. And then they're all on the same level. They're all the same heights. They're all the same thickness. Um, Cause they come from the same block. They look a little wonky still, cause my shape was kind of wonky, but but that's how I would recommend that you, that you build it. So build just a nice strong shape, just one, and then chop chop. Same thing with the legs, you know, have it go all the way down to the, all the way down to the ground, that shape. And then maybe, just like what we did at the top. So instead of just stopping here, just have it all the way, all the way down. Um, if you have like something here in the middle, like a bar that you want to have, just chop chop again at the bottom here at the base. So you know that, all right, you're gonna have a bar here, another bar here, another bar there. And just build that up as it's one, one big chunk. And done, and then go and slice it up. And I'll say the exact same thing with bottles. So, you know, you could measure individual bottles, but ain't nobody got time for that. So start with a box, like a, a case of bottles from the same angles as everything else. You can measure it, you know, if you want it to be super accurate. But uh, I'm just going off of what you have here, approximately. Let's say that's my bottle, that's my box of empty bottles or a box of, I don't know, like alcohol or whatever. Uh, and then in here, you can just figure out where the, uh, where like the neck of the bottle is going to start. So maybe it's at that line right here, something like that. And then you have good reference points to start drawing your bottles. There's one right here, one right there, you know that. The start of the neck should be around that line, around that line, and then tip gets smaller and smaller, touches the top, and then you cork it. And then, uh, yeah, so if you draw like a big box like this, all you want to do is have like a container box, just as if you bought it online and you got it at home. Um, and then you start with that container box, and then you use that container box to measure kind of like the important the important um, reference points that you need. Um, and then, yeah, and then you apply the same on all the individual components on the inside. So always start big and chop. Those drawings, though. <laughs> he's not as much, he's not as polished, but still really good. But this one, ooh. And. That looks good. <laughs> really good. Ooh. Yeah, got nothing to say about that. Other than, well, those hands look really nice too. Maybe that one has like too short of a palm. Like I think it might be able to go a little lower. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's about it. Maybe that one here for shorten those sections a bit more. So that you have a little bit more overlap in between the, the different fingers. Like this one's in front. The ring fingers in front of the middle finger, that's in front of the index. That one's hiding behind, so you can't see like the bottom of the line here because it's kind of hidden. I don't know, maybe the reference was uh, the fingers were a little, were not as chunky, I don't know. It just seemed like that middle finger it feels a little small, like a little skinny towards, uh, con compared to the other ones. So that's why, but um, yeah, well, that helps the net. Sick work, dude. Very impressed. Uh, Montas, Montas. I've been great. Oh, whoa. All right. So it's been a. It's been a while. I couldn't really upload last week and haven't made uh, haven't made too much progress, but managed to do something. Anyways, I really need some tips with that chess piece metal plate, um, a chess piece slash metal plate. 
uh, been struggling for a while. And how are those pants? But I also would like some critique about the whole painting. You got it. Mantas, Mantas, Mantas. Not Mantas, 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 Mantas. Damn it, now I forgot how I said it. Ugh. Mantas. Bro, that looks much better. Completely different. That is an aesthetic drawing. The only thing that's not aesthetic is that purple in the back here. The purple has nothing to do with that 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 composition, that color palette. Get out of here. Who do you think you are? Coming and ruining the party of red and blue. Uh, I'm joking. It's not that bad, but um, it looks like spawn almost. Spawn. That green color. I feel like a cooler color might work better, but because uh, this shares a lot of the a lot of, a lot of values with with your character already, you know like this here about the same value as that right so it doesn't go up or down it just kind of stays on the same line purple and that red here so try to avoid that you know try to have similar values kind of fighting so i personally would do something like this with the background against the it's the bright red from a distance too like it, it pops a lot more this way like right now it's kind of like oh okay it's, oh, the, oh the silhouette now it's very clear so that's number one uh i mean it doesn't have to be this color it's just that color that value in particular is a little, a little too close little too close to some of the values on your character so uh metal chest piece oh uh, all of that is metallic interesting yeah so what looks metallic you know is uh usually the result of just all the reflections on the surface so the you can imagine you could try to imagine like what's in your scene is it is it just more blue is she just on like a field or in your case it wasn't even blue but is it more of that purple color uh, is she like in the studio or does it matter because if if it's just that color if it's just like the color uh, the color of the <clears throat> of the background drink drink Then you can just have that reflect somewhere in here. You kind of follow the the silhouette. So every corner of this little thing here, everything that bumps catches the light. You add that that color here. So it's the white no, color of the background. So that kind of stuff, you know, will make it pretty shiny. Uh, it's every corner you can find. You just really emphasize it with a bright color. In this case, it's going to be a reflection. So the reflection of the environment. So, you know, if she was at the beach, maybe you would have, like, instead of the, the blue there, she would have you know, like sand, sand color towards the bottom here. And then maybe... Maybe the ocean, you know, and that would be kind of reflected in her, in her chest plate. 
Um, so it's whatever the environment is. You know, keep it simple probably in the beginning. <laughs> it was just like one tone. Uh, whatever the environment color is. And so, yeah. That's a corner too. Can emphasize that. Uh, back here, what do we have in the back? Oh, okay. Uh, maybe a little bit of red here. The red reflecting on part of that chest plate. Maybe on part of that side here. Uh, yeah, with metals, you just gotta look at the surroundings and have those colors reflect on it. This case, you know, like the light from back there would come, you bounce, and then right in our eyes. And so all that that silhouette here, like you'll get a nice rim light. Um, yeah, and it's just adding more and more and more reflections. Like you did a really, really good job down here with uh, with all of this stuff here. So it's kind of like that, but just even more. So this looks like a... I mean, I don't know if it's meant to be the same kind of metal. This looks more like, like a brushed metal, you know, something that has more texture, so it's not as reflective. Mine is super shiny. Obviously, you know, you can kind of blur out some of these, these transitions to make it less shiny and just not as intense too. Depending. Peace out, Kevin. Thanks for chilling. It's been real, bro. <laughs> yeah, reflections. Metal's all about reflections, so hopefully that helps with that a little bit, at least. Uh, at the bottom here, ooh. You did a great job here. Although I would brighten this up a bit so we can see. No, we can't see. We can't see that much. You're hiding. I want to be able to see down down here a lot more Those details are awesome so maybe it's just a matter of adding more reflections uh, kind of same here either way I think uh, yeah a little bit brighter would would be nice because you have such nice details such cool cool shape language down here you already have a good base uh, I would try to, to punch that out more. Give it a little kick. Um, yeah, it kind of goes with the theme of, you know, just reflecting the environment. I'm not using any random color. I'm using the color of the background here for that. It's all that secondary lights bouncing around everywhere and therefore it will light up everywhere um, I'm add it on the hair too a little bit and the, another reason why I chose blue you know for the background you don't have to once again but the reason I did is uh, because all those secondary lights like those secondary hits of light here that's what I'm sourcing. I'm sourcing a cooler color. So, you know, you have a lot of reds already. So that's a way to kill the red. Kind of the same as you did here on the inside. Except it's a natural way. It's an organic way to do it. <laughs> it's just, it's part of the scene. So it's, it makes more sense. That's the color that would tone down your saturation. Overall, it looks awesome. Um, I think a big part of this is going to be the lighting. So there's a lot of details here. And one thing that just helps organize all details is just strong lighting. So, I mean, it could just be a light from the top. Um, strong sunlight's coming from above. Like hitting. 
clean all these all these top surfaces. But, but mostly just a lot of rendering, <laughs> so... Yeah, I think overall just, yeah, add more of that secondary light, kind of overall... Um, more reflections for anything that's metallic and shiny. Maybe that's not the look that you want, but personally, I would have yeah a little bit more blue creeping into the into the shading to to balance out that that bright red. And maybe some of the red here. I don't know. Sometimes it looks nice too when it's des desaturated a bit. Sometimes for like the the intensity of it, it doesn't need to be this bright. It be just a little bright. Anyways, um, a few ideas, but it's coming along. All right, all right. Ryan, the is the is the, the traveling Ryan? Is this the the learning the learning Ryan? Traveling right now. Um, so my Rocket Girl piece was in an opinion a failure. Also, it is it is 21 year old Ryan, and I can't handle um, that you know trying my hand at a full illustration is still a bit. I can't handle that you know trying my hand at a full illustration is still a bit beyond my level. So to get to my momentum and moral back up, I did some small things which would be irrelevant to my. So one thing I want to say about about that one, you know, it was. Like I saw myself uh, a couple of years back, you know, like when trying something that's very ambitious and then you kind of just like you run out of tools at some point, like, ah, just feel like this was maybe a little too much. And I think the like the foreshortening is probably what killed you just because you had such a dynamic pose. So they like, go for something that's more neutral. You know, like just a character standing. So in a cool, relaxed pose and focus on the design, a cool design, cool armor, cool render, um, cool colors, maybe a little bit of a background, like something simple just to, to make it like a whole piece. Um, and that, just that, I mean, I say just that, but that can look sick, you know, that could be a portfolio piece that gets you hired. And so it doesn't need to be super dynamic or anything like that. Uh, that just increases the, the difficulty. Maybe if you want to tell a story, you'll be able to, to do that better with, with like more action action shots, action pieces. But um, yeah, like often it's just you get your, your morale just takes, you know, takes a hit because you were overly ambitious when you really didn't need to like. And I, I totally relate, you know, I, I used to think the exact same way. I would be like, ah, oh, man, this professional artists do do a lot of uh, a lot of foreshortening. I need to do that too. It needs to be super dynamic, otherwise it's not worthy. But then, but then you can look at a bunch of other artists that are professionals that post only like characters in portrait mode, like super static, and they get thousands and thousands of likes and thousands of favorites, and there's really no difference in the uh, in how people receive it. And so, 
you know, it just makes you think, well, do I really need to take all that extra time, you know, that potential hit on my morale when I can just do something else and just get get a lot better results as a, as, as I do something that's a little simpler, a little less ambitious, not to say it's not ambitious, any character is ambitious, but, uh, but yeah, yours was particularly ambitious. Like I would have had a, a good amount of uh, struggles going through that. So and I've been doing this my entire life. So, <laughs> so, you know, I, I wouldn't worry about that too much. Not at all. Uh, but I would draw her again in like a, a, a more static pose. It's just like she's chi she's chilling, you know, like she's about to, I don't know, like go get her nails done or she's about to, she's waiting in line to get some, some money at the ATM, whatever. You know, just a pose that's just chill. Or maybe she's like heroic pose, like, ah, yeah, look at me. But still no foreshortening, just, just good control over the basics. That alone can be very impressive. If you did well. Uh, and here I am, chit chatting away. Once again, uh, how much time we have? 15 minutes left. Yeah, yeah, we should be fine. That'll be fine. So, to get my momentum and morale back, I did some small things which would be relevant to my uni portfolio. We want specifically good fundamental knowledge and life drawing skills, so I figured folds would be a good start for life drawing. Let me know what you think and what can be improved. Yeah, so for university, uh, like anything that's super classical is what they want. You know, anything that looks too digital art, universities, they don't, they don't, they don't know what to handle. They don't know what to do with that. Uh, just because university programs are all super outdated. It's very rare that they get updated because it takes a crap ton of money and a lot of time, a lot of red tape to go through. I know because I looked into it. <laughs> and so I, I was thinking, you know, what if I could make art school like a full, like a real thing, like a, that you can get credits for. And I really looked into it for like a long time, really, really dug deep. And it's, uh, it's a nightmare. And like, now I have a better understanding of why they charge so much. They charge way too much, but like, uh, I would have to charge like close to 20 times more than what I charge now, just to justify all this extra work, all the, the revisions that you need to go through, all the, and it's all BS, you know, like those people are, why would they be more qualified than me to, to create a good program, uh, but it's just it has to do with with guidelines that come from the government, that comes from all these these big entities. Anyways, ton of red tape, ton of it, and so they don't update it. They just you know they do it once at the beginning, like I don't know how long ago it was for most schools, but probably over a decade. Most schools, uh, most schools' art program probably longer. Um, and to update anything, you have to go through the same the, the same steps, and so it's a nightmare. Nobody does it. it costs a lot of money too. So, so yeah. Uh, all this to say, just stick with the old, old, uh, good old school, you know, studies of, yeah, of drapery, of, of, uh, of portraits and, uh, don't, you know, nothing too sci-fi, nothing too fantasy, uh, just classic stuff, classic fine arts and you'll be good. You want to play it safe. Yeah, like this. You can, you can bet that person at the university that's judging the portfolios, they look at this and like, oh, oh, this kid, he's perfect. We need him. That's a really good study. <laughs> it's really, really good. Uh, nice control of your brushes too. Like I would, I would understand. Like from my point of view, if I have to do, you know, if I talking uh, talking to you, Leslie, uh, if I, you know, if I if I wanted to keep um, updating something like this, and it costs so much money, and there's, there's just a limit to what I can do as like a single person, even somebody with like a tiny team. But uh, but imagine like a big school that that charge so much, they they have so much money, so much money. 
they could totally revamp their classes and their courses every year and they would still be very profitable, very profitable. It's just that they, they get lazy, they get greedy, they don't do it. Because they, they still get the students and they're like, Pff, why update? They're still coming. It's just at some point they'll be left with like, well, now we're so irrelevant <laughs> that we're not getting any students. Uh, hopefully that time will come. And then they'll learn their lesson. <clears throat> All right, so calm down, Mark. Get back. <sighs> right. So, Ryan, Ryan, Ryan. Um, this one, not as good. Uh, wh 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 why? It's good though, it's very good. Just not as good as this one. This one is like professional, good, really good. I think this one in here, like you don't use the brush strokes as well, maybe. Um, it's like a lot of the more subtle stuff that you're not, you don't have in here, like, uh, you know, that, that color, kind of like a light blue uh, in between the highlights and the darker, the darker shadow, like this light, light blue, light purple color, <laughs> excuse me. Um, and that, that kills a little bit of the white, you know, it makes it less, less luminous. Uh, but it has, it has, it, it indicates the presence of the sky, so it's an important one to have in here. Um, and it's going to be like the intensity of, uh, of like the sun here, it feels really bright, really intense because it's next to something that's quite dark. And in your case, just not as much. So the contrast is not as much. So here's a little darker. So essentially, you know, whenever you want something to, to really pop, you have to darken everything else. So if you can't go any brighter, can't really go any brighter than white, then how do you make that white pop more? You can't set your screen on fire. That's not gonna help. So darken the stuff that's around it. Like this thing here. Darker. If down here is a little darker. And then when you need to have a lot of crisp detail, like this is your focal point right here, like the fold there, you want that to have the most detail, to be the most crisp. It's nice clean black lines against the white lines super well defined that's gonna pop a lot more now i did it terribly but oh and there's like this little warmth also to the color around the around the light source which you don't really have that does look quite good very subtle but um yeah that, that kind of stuff um those transitions and like these these big folds there's they're cylinders except like right now if you look at them um it's darker in the middle and lighter on the outside that's strange shouldn't be like that. Should be darker on the sides and lighter in the middle and uh yeah just like when when those kinds of things uh, are a little looser all around, then all around it looks a little looser. So yeah, just make sure that everything that looks like a cylinder feels like a cylinder, that you shade it like a cylinder. Um, and here, nothing to say, that one's sick. Here, yeah, just a little bit more color, a little bit more warmth around the area here, more contrast. Uh, shoot down before and after once again. Jesus, bro. But you have the right idea, you know, this is the kind of stuff that they'll definitely want to want to see from you. Like if you do um, portrait studies of like old, you know, master sculptors, you'll do a lot of that in school too. <laughs> they love that stuff. Like the head of 
David or uh, those famous paintings. Nice noses. Very nice. Nice way to stylize them. Um, nice lines. That's all I got for you, Ryan. Really good stuff. Um, but yeah, like, but more than that, you know, if you can do um, like those sculptures that have a lot of drapery and a lot of just just bare skin, where you get that that contrast between the two. I mean, that's a, that's a good one to to have, but. Uh, yeah, if you want to push it some more, something that's a little bit more impressive, I think you could totally handle it too. And they'll be a lot more impressed by that too. Like, uh, you know, you know like characters like this, ooh. Doing something like sitting on the, on the rock and then drapery all over. That's impressive. get to you don't you worry still have time 40 minutes left <clears throat> wait is that right oh, oh no how much longer do i have i've been talking too much today yeah 40 40 left yeah we're good we're good all right <laughs> What's up, Jordan? I saw your foreshortening video, and yes, I did pay the fee. Well, you guys don't need to pay the fee, you're my student. Anyway, you already paid the fees. Anyways, I thought I would practice on mine using the tips you gave. Just looking for feedback on these and any areas I should focus on. Uh, all of these, let's use a reference. Uh, the, the the proportions feel correct, even though she's in perspective. Really good, very nicely done. Uh, that little snaky thing too. Oh yeah. Yeah, like what I look the, I pay the closer the closest attention to here. Uh, this is gonna be the the roundness of the cylinders. You know, as long as they keep, as long as they they remain round, depending on how how you, you rotate them in space, then you have a good understanding, you have a good visual representation of what those simpler, simpler volumes look like, which you do, so that's good to see. Um, that arm looks great. All of these look really good. Uh, 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 uh. The only thing, the only one maybe I could Point two as being a little bit more off would be maybe this one here. And the torso is a little short. But that's it, you know, it's not really even a perspective issue. It's more like an anatomy issue. Just wanna make sure that uh, there's enough room here for the rib cage. For some of the abdomen. For the leg here, maybe that's a little too short. Depends, I don't know, maybe it depends on the, the perspective. Nah, it feels too short. Yeah, so maybe something more like that would be better. Feels like you have enough length now. I'm going to the knee. But yeah, but the size of everything, like the, the size of the feet, the size of the, the torso in comparison. 
Oh, and this one here. Uh, that leg there, I think we just need to come a little closer to the other one. It's transparent. Knees right there. Like it wouldn't stick out this much, I think. Just a bit. <laughs> so simple, and like just a few brush strokes, but it looks really clean, real nice, very effective. Good looking hand, like maybe those fingers here you could like make thicker, not longer or anything, just make them a little thicker, but they match the rest. Net picking, yes. Yeah, overall. Nice. Yeah, that's all I got. Very nicely done. Uh, moving on to the. Uh, out a thumbnails for the painting of a grade we talked about last time leaning, leaning towards number three let me know which one is your favorite and what can be fixed or combined from other ones well you uh look pretty invested thumbnails it certainly gives a good idea though tricky not not one of them like stands out it's been clearly better they're all very similar level high levels <laughs> that's good I was gonna say this one is probably the one I would not go <laughs> if I had to cross one out right now it'd probably be this one um, why is that I think it's just like it's maybe I'm maybe it's just me speaking but it seems too ambitious like if I were to, to tackle this it's just there's so many ways that you can screw this up <laughs> it's a good challenge but uh like just just the legs and perspective like this going into the torso like this i mean yes you could use a great reference and just completely crush it but also like i'm not a fan of when the um when the head is too small compared to the rest of the body like because the face is so important and just communicating emotions and so if it's smaller, you just have less of a tool to do that. Um, also the crop is a little a little strange, like you would either need to crop it way more or like show or expand it so that we can see kind of what's happening here. Just so that she's not like touching the, the edge of the canvas. I mean, it's, it... Mm. Also like you don't see the other, like the robot as much this way. 
the robot is pretty cool. Like maybe it doesn't feel as intimate. It's like those two and the view, you know, whereas like all of these other shots, it's like, well, that one too, I guess. But uh, this shot, number one, number four, it's like, it's those two. The view is just, that's just the background stuff. It's about those two. Ah, uh, so tricky. Why you do this to me? <laughs> like that one will make like a great poster. You know, like to sell a to sell a product, like a good cover, like a good um, magazine cover or something like that. Look into the future. But between the two, uh, like the story would, would take more of a like a backseat um, position maybe. So I'm hesitating between one and four just because it's more intimate. And I am not a fan of like having this here kind of just fits so so snug in the the corner of the of the canvas i like the umbrella though so i don't know maybe she's got it more like Why doesn't she? Why doesn't she have one? Where's yours? Wait, is it? Oh, so it's just it's like floating. Ah. So it can be anywhere. I see. Like I feel like I don't know. I feel like there's more there's more possibilities with this one. It's like you can focus a little bit more maybe on the render on the. On the, the the love story between those two, for sure it's a love story, uh, and and still have like a lot of space left to to show off like this crazy epic scene in the background, uh, and it's close enough that yeah we'll be able to see her face quite nicely, um, a lot of like nice folds here, so a lot of like material differences, like this could be killer. I mean they could all be nice, but I feel like. That one would be like the most straightforward. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> the power of love. <laughs> it's powerful. I mean, what else could it be? Let's be honest. But that's what I would go for. But that's just my opinion. Maybe the other dudes have something completely else and completely different in mind. Maybe they have strong preferences. So yeah, I would I would survey more people, but um, that's kind of that's kind of my take on it. And uh, but yeah, so far the colors, the composition, the, mm, mm. they're all nice. It's just that some of them are a little scarier. Like the, the what's next, what's coming up next beyond beyond just the. The thumbnail, like all the rendering, all just like making that work. Ugh, it's stressing me out a little bit. Number one, not so much. So my vote is number one. <laughs> there you go. That's what I think. Coco sleeping snoozing away so this is my entry for the eurovision art challenge literally i finished the splash art before a few minutes um i want to update the background i want to update the background before publishing it on art station can you advise me what background will suit it best i want to make it more detailed because it's my first original character my first splash art uh-oh uh -oh.
Um, so, what background will suit it best? I want to make it more detailed because it's my first original character in my first flash cards. What in the background? Oh, that's cool. That's a cool reference. Yeah, I like these colors. Very nice. Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? That you can't that you can't handle it because it's too hard? I'm sure you can handle it, but my way is that, you know, if you can, if you can lower the difficulty and get a render that's like 10% better as a result, because the challenge was a little bit less for everything else, and you're able to put in like that, just that extra polish that makes it look from like really, really like solid amateur stuff to professional level. I would always go for that. If that means that the, the, the scope needs to be, needs to be a little bit uh, scaled down, always go for that your maximum power. <laughs> Am I on mute? No, I'm not on mute. You're on mute. All right, Coco. Um, well, that looks, uh, that looks pretty damn good. Very colorful um, for the background. Hmm. Yeah, like her pose re works really well. Let's say maybe the like the length of that left leg. I'm just going by the. I'm just gonna have a joint here. Calves, uh, calves. I think the, 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 the glutes, her squat muscles, uh, and then the knee. Got that much distance here. Yeah, I feel like maybe the knee here should be going a little lower. Yeah, maybe not. Yeah, now nah, disregard that. I'm talking crazy. What is it then? Is it... Maybe this should be a little thicker then. Because, you know, it's starting to get close to like the glutes territory. Maybe it already is. That's gonna have to curve up at some point. wider ah uh, no wait a minute no I see the problem yeah I think the leg is just a little too low that's what it is I'm just gonna attach a little closer to the um the, the pelvis to the pelvis so now Oh, so that's probably like a piece of armor, right? I thought it was like the glutes for some reason. Yeah, and even then it feels like, even then it feels like her torso is a little long. I'll try to Frankenstein her a bit here. doing some uh, some surgeries right now Hold on. Uh, so that breast here is a little too a little too much to the to the left a little to the left so we're gonna bring that forward a bit so we can see both uh, center of the body not perfect but I think that makes a little bit more sense of course of course, I don't have a separate layer for it. 
that's just how I roll. I prefer to waste time to go back. Scroll up, copy paste. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Photoshop is starting to have a hard time. All right, before, after, before, after. Uh, yeah, a little better. I think. Good night, Maria. Uh, Yeah, so that's the main issue with this uh, this image. I think it's just the the proportions a little bit, like just shuffling stuff around, slight surgery, and now now she feels pretty pretty nice. The rest though, like the the hand here. Oh man, he did a really good job with that hand. Whatever reference he used, well done. Um, I like the face, the head position too. That works with the rest. Right on. So the. The question now, what to do with the background? Hmm. Right now it looks like she's, uh, she just like stole all the power from all the unicorns and she just can't contain it. The rainbow is just overflowing. Really curious to see what it looks like without all these colors. Uh, God, this is not the best way to select this one. So I, I'm not sure. Like, what is she supposed to be in? Techno girl. Like, what could we have in the background? Not sure what you had in mind here, but um. Well, let's try. Start start from scratch. So maybe I mean she's jumping. So probably some sky behind. It's almost like anything you add, you'll have to probably adjust the lighting. Because yours worked, you know, without without uh, worked really well without a strong um, strong light source, just because the background didn't have really any any direction to its lighting. There's no, it was just a gradient, um, and the character herself doesn't have really in this like a, a directional light. Really, it's more more just kind of ambient shading. So if you add, if I add like a real background, then we'll have to add real light. Otherwise, there's going to be a disconnect between the two. So, so probably nothing too, too complex, like maybe more like another gradient, something simpler, but just to make her, to feature her better, maybe like, uh, I'm just trying things. I have no idea what I'm doing right now. Trial and error at this point. When in doubt. Add glow. And then like you could stylize that stuff. Too invasive. 
particles that match her 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 personality so maybe it's like just like super sharp stuff like she's a little edgy or maybe it's uh yeah something more bubbly something more like smoky uh, i don't know maybe it's something like that just something that's not a rainbow you know like i'm trying to definitely like tone it down a lot so so that you have some contrast with the main character and then maybe you know when the background is darker you can introduce a little bit more glow more glow always better It's kind of glowing a little bit. Mm. Trying to push the depth, push the contrast, uh, tone down the rainbow power, and, uh, and yeah, adjust the, um, the anatomy a little bit. That is going to be it for today, for this week. So we're uh, <laughs> talked way too much. We're almost at eight hours. Oh Jesus! But uh, I had a good time. So a lot of really cool art, um, a lot of progress, and uh, good company. So thanks to you guys for uh, for hanging out, uh, however long you did. If you've gone the whole thing, you're an MVP. I appreciate. It. And uh, I hope that was helpful. Even if you didn't submit something, I hope some of this will still apply to you. And if you're watching this a little bit later on YouTube and you're, um, you're, you know, you're still here. <laughs> well done. That's impressive. And also, uh, if you want to learn more about the art school program, you can find more in the description below. If you want to get your art review like this every single week. So I hope uh, you guys are going to have a good rest of your weekend. And uh, good creative week ahead of you. I'll try to as well. And uh, I hope to see you guys next week. Peace out. I'll go eat something and relax and probably have a, have a drink or something. Get hammered or something. Something like that. So uh, see you guys later. I love you. <laughs>